Where did he take him from? That's a starting point. Where were you at when he took him? Home. Okay, so yesterday it was a bike accident in the in. I already told you the bike accident. You are you already talked about. Fine, but I'm saying yesterday he was taken from Douglas County. Today he's taken from El Paso County at six six two seven. Right, but then you change it, then you brought it back, then you change it, brought it back. I said that to you because you just want me to say whatever they got you thinking. I'm thinking what I'm thinking, okay? Nobody, th th these freaking police have not told me a damn thing other than my son is missing and that they're supposedly looking for him. You're the only one telling me anything about their situation. Yes. Get towards gun. I couldn't do anything. You talk about how you have to live with that. Do you know how I have to sit here and be like, oh my God, what could I have done to protect him better? Because Albert's going to turn it and say that I'm a horrible person. Do you think I want to lose my entire life because I couldn't protect someone but 100%? Well, do you know it was? Do you know if Gannon is alive, or was he alive when he took him? Was he hurt? I don't know. I was out of it. Do you not understand this? You so you were out. So you blacked out, right? And, you, and he took him while you were blacked out. No, I just said I was in and out of it from from struggle. I hit my head. I'm in and out of it. Okay. He put my arm to title. You would not listen to me on that. You know what you should have done. That's my husband. You should have said, oh my God, this fucker not only hurt my wife, took my son. Okay, so. You should be saying. I'm trying to, I'm trying to believe you, okay, but that when, when I got home Tuesday, you had no sign of anything, no marks on your head, no marks on your arms. Oh, that's you okay. You want to know why? Because it's all on social media where I have band-aids on my hand around my arms on it, so that's a fucking lie. Okay, all right, fair enough. I it's on that. social media. Okay, it's well, on social media, why all kinds of everything? Well, it's on social media. It's on social media that you killed him. So you want me to believe everything I hear on social media? No, because you're Albert. Why no. in the world would you think that? I'm not thinking that. You just told me to believe social media. Social media says you're a killer. It's on there, meaning they saw it. Okay, they so saw a picture of me. That's all I meant. They so, didn't see a picture of me doing it. Social so media is so, social media says you're a killer and that Lane is the Lane is the hero. Do you want me to believe that? If you believe that, you're dumb. Want to know why? Because you know better than that. Okay. Well, I mean, you. I mean, you treat her like she's a hero. Exactly what you're doing. It's kind of being with your wife. You've been with your ex-wife. No, I haven't been with nobody. I told you, you I've been with my family. Supposed to be you can you can attack me all you want to okay, but it really doesn't matter. Jeez. Yes, that's an attack. Business, you should be with your wife. Okay, well, what's what's with all this crap you're sending her now? You're trying, you're telling her, you're telling the world how much of a piece of shit she is, but now you're trying to. Anything, my shit has been hacked. I can't, don't fight, believe nothing unless it's my gag on Yahoo. People have created a fake profile under my name. They screened them the profiles, everything. People are in. No, the only thing I have secured is because I contacted Yahoo. It's my Yahoo account. Okay. You can listen to anything from anything else. Okay, fine. But you sent her a message that said the same thing you tried to say to me initially about this ransom and these phone calls from D.C. So, yes, I do believe that you sent her that. That's what you told me. From D.C.? That's what you told me. <laughs> That's what you told me. Oh, uh, do you know why that done that? That's because he sent it from a, a stupid messenger thing. And when I switched out to do my phone thing, I was trying to write back from, I was like, I'm going to send Landon this too. I was going to copy both y'all in it because I couldn't get you. And then I hit draft. So if it went through, then I didn't talk. No, to no, 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 one thing. no. You or Landon didn't send anything from D.C. You said that the messages came from a D.C. number or something. That's what you said. It said, like Washington, Seattle. Oh, Washington, Seattle. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I did tell you that. I said Washington. I said Roy Elementary. Okay. I, I didn't know. I haven't said another word to her. Did you read the emails I sent her when she wrote me? I told her, fuck her. She ain't done goddamn thing for those kids. Don't be fucking playing hero. Read them. I, she was sitting right beside her. They went to Texas. I ain't reading shit. I just, I just saw what she forwarded me. 
She forwarded me something about ransom. See, see, Steve wrote you. As, I mean, you wrote me that night. As soon as I said something to you about her saying bingo, you had to be sitting right beside her. You had to tell her that. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. No. You talking about the, when she replied to you after that one email you sent when you said fuck her? I was... No, you were... No, I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm, no, she did it. Okay, I'm going to tell you what happened. I was sitting there in in the room. They had another hotel room. I was. It was at that time of night when Lena was going to bed. And every night I put Lena to bed. And the email came through. And she read it. And that's when she messaged you back. And that's that's the absolute truth. And, you know, you can question it all you want to. But that's what happened. I don't show them shit. Okay? Well, because all I... All, I defended you, and I defended myself, and said, you ain't done most fucking things. Don't be coming up to my house. You shouldn't be here. Did she tell you I said all that? I, listen, I don't get into nothing she's saying. I'm a, and that's the God's honest truth. She's freaking out every single day, and it's driving me nuts. So I'm glad they went to Texas. Okay? Yeah. Because it drives me, between her and Veronica, it drives me freaking nuts. But why do you have to be around them? I'm not around them, okay? We're looking for our sons. We have a shared child in it's common. It's stressed on you if you are listening to them drive nuts. And guess what? You know me well enough to know that I'm going to get myself out of stressful situations that are not productive, and you know that. I know that. So is this why you wouldn't, You don't want me and Harley to be with you? I never or said that. Keep doing that. I never said that. I've agreed to do everything you've asked. I've asked you, told you, whatever. I've agreed to testify. Okay? I've agreed to help find him. I've agreed to do everything. I'm tired of being portrayed as the killer of a child that I love. If you want to know something, I have a better relationship with Dan and then I even do Lena. Dan and I are still with the wife. This is why it's killing me. It's killing me because it's portrayed wrong. Okay, so let's 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 pump the brakes here. Okay, I'm seriously let's pump the brakes. If you give me the truth, and I hate to say it like this, but the whole truth and nothing but the truth, and you just lay it on the line for me, no matter what the truth is. Okay, the absolute truth. I don't want no more Quincy lied on the road, Quincy bike accident, Quincy hiding in the house. Okay, Quincy's secret messages. Ransom, I don't want no more of that, okay? This is driving me freaking nuts, okay? I just want the truth, and then I... No, you... Hey, listen to me for a second. I want the truth right now, and then I'll be willing to meet you. Maybe? Meet me. Like, just meet that, That's how... That's all I get is meet you? The, you listen. Hello? Listen, I'm sitting right here. I'm trying to work with you, okay? That's a start, Okay? That's a start. We. I told you yesterday. I told you yesterday. My family. I told you yesterday. The biggest thing in between us right now is the truth, and we have a big gap between us and the truth right now. Okay. All right. I'm not promising you. Listen. Plan of me. I'm not. I'm not promising you anything. Okay. I want the truth, and I will promise you. I promise you a meeting. I, you could, yes, you're my wife, okay? I'm not promising you anything today other than a meeting. You give me the truth, you get your meeting. You get your face to face. You get to see me. All this wonderful things you send me on email about how much you want, I want me. To with you. Okay, you get to meet with me I today. Do. That's what you get. You left, and I'm offering you a meeting. What is it? Just, is this a meeting? I left? I left, or I was taken away? No, you left. I got against me about me. Like, no, 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 no. You brought your ex-wife to our home, and that was wrong. I didn't bring nobody. Somebody, she got her ass on a plane and came, and the messages show that you told her that you would support her when she got here. So we're not playing this game. She is irrelevant in this okay. conversation. I asked Albert, and then what did I do? I got on the phone with you, and I said, I don't agree with this. Okay, fine. I don't, I, you know what? My son's missing. I don't care about stupid, petty, you think I'm hooking up with her. It's about Gannon. So you give me the truth, and I'll meet. It's not about hooking up with her. It's about you. you but that's you all you said. Tisha, stop. Put the brakes. Be on TV hugging your ex-wife. Actually, I should, because she's the mother of my son, and I'm not playing this game with you, okay? Do you want to meet? Do you, you want to meet or not? Do you want to know what? Do you want to meet or not? You, you, you want to know something? I, you should. But then guess what? This wife of yours has 
have done everything that that sorry ass motherfucking mother hasn't done. Okay, I'm not arguing so, with so, you about that. I'm not arguing got, anything. Do you think I got a hug from you? At you, you got plenty of hugs. You got plenty of hugs until you decided to bounce and come and get your shit and bounce. I asked for Valentine's Day. I said, hey, let us come stay. Do you think you gave me anything? But you can give her conversations every day. You can talk to her every day. Listen, you've been begging me. Le listen. You tell the shit to the kids. Let me tell you something. Listen. You you're not making your you're me. you're not making yourself believable to me. You offered the truth, okay? You offered lie detector test. I don't even believe you're anywhere close to here. That's why you're 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 dodging this meeting, okay? That's the that's the God's honest. Dodging a meeting. Yeah, you are. For yeah, you are. You're dodging this shit. From your hotel, you won't even tell me where you're staying. Well, I asked you the same question, and you won't even tell me where. You, you tell me. I gave it to you. Yeah, you said the North End. The place I was saying. You said the North End. Bullshit. Bullshit. Say America. Yes, I did. Bullshit. You go look at your email. I, I know. And it's bullshit. You don't think I didn't drive around there just like I drove around looking for other shit? I drive around there? I don't have a car. All right. Find me. Screenshot me a receipt right now. Send me the receipt from your email because I know you got it because you always get them. Okay, so don't play me, homie. All right, send me the shit and then I'll believe you. Second, do you think for a second that I pay for this? Do you think that? All right, I, all right. So, all right, fine, fine. All right, back up. Back up. You give me the truth and I'll drive to freaking Extended Stay America right now. Give me the truth. I gave you the truth. I walked you through what happened. No, you walked me through 27 versions of a fake bullshit lie, okay? All right, tell me the truth right now. So now you're free. You want the nope. truth and you just told me it was a lie. No. You're not trying to be on my side. I am. Person. I'm trying to meet you. You literally just told me it was a fake bullshit of a lie. You just told me none of it was true. Tisha, I got to ask you every day. You just told if, me that. I got to ask you every day, like yesterday, it was the bike accident. That was the first time I heard that one after three weeks. Okay, now today I call you back, willing to work with you for lie detector tests, and that's a bullshit story. Okay? I already said I would do a lie detector test. Uh, <laughs> I already told you I would do a lie detector test. That's completely irrelevant. What's relevant is the truth. You get you, you get me at Extended Stay America. That's what it is. Listen, you get me at Extended Stay America. You can do whatever you want to with me, okay? I just want the truth, and that's what you get. With you, okay? Like, yeah, like you're really going to let that happen. Listen, you give me the truth that we find my son? You, if you wanted me, you would not be apart from me. Tisha, watch your interview. You said you what? left because of Landon. You said that, not me. I didn't say Tisha leave. I said, everybody come together, be a team, let's find Gannon. That's what I said. And that's what I've said from day one. And you bounced on me. Left from the house because you had her there in our home. It sure did. And I'll tell, I'll tell every judge, I'll tell every judge jury in this country that I had my ex-wife, my mom, my two sisters, my uncle, Aunt Veronica, two other freaking women, uh, Landon's brother. I had a team of like 15 people. Supporting the family, working as a team to do everything we could to find Gannon. That's the truth. Okay. I'm sorry if it sounds selfish, but I hate that bitch. Okay. okay. But guess what? Guess what? Listen sorry. to what I just said. Listen to what I just said. I had everybody in the house, but you know who wasn't there? My wife and my daughter. They bounced on me. Okay. They bounced on me, but me being a good person, I'm still here willing to listen to you. You told me, Mom, we had to turn the keys into you. I told that you can come get your stuff after you said you didn't want to be there anymore. Okay, you left. You and Harley got in a Harley's car, packed suitcases, supposedly going to the police station, and you never showed up until like the next day or some shit like that. Okay, so if you would have done what you were supposed, to, if you no, you listen to me. If you would have done what you're supposed to do, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Okay, so don't turn this on me. I've been a team player this whole time for the entire team. Would be together right now is what you're saying. If you would have, you would. If you would have never left, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You got your shit and you bounced. Okay. What we need now is the truth. So you're saying if I would have never left, we'd be together right now. I'm saying you bounced. Okay. You bounced. Okay. See. See, that's your point. You, you don't have any. You don't want to be with me. That's not what I'm saying. I, it's not about our relationship. It's about Gannon.
And you're stu- you're dodging me when I keep asking you for the truth, saying I'm going to drive to you at Extended Stay America. She's hung up. Special Agent Cronin back up on the stand. Agent Cronin, if you would resume your seat on the witness stand, I remind you, ma'am, that you're still under oath. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Good morning, sir. Uh, <clears throat> what we hear in this particular phone call and then the prior phone calls that we heard while Mr. Stauk was on the, on the uh, stand, were you present for all those phone calls as well? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> fairly consistent uh, approach from Al in trying to get information from the defendant in those phone calls? Yes. Trying to um, get details about where Gannon may be? Yes. Uh, was it fairly consistent through all of these phone calls um, for the defendant to then distract away and cause a tangent discussion? Yes. Um, is that what we hear when Al starts pushing her to give the truth, and then it turns into a discussion about ex-wife. Yes. At the time of um, this particular phone call, uh, there's some discussion about extended stay America. Is that the hotel that the defendant was staying at um, right after Gannon's disappearance with family members? Yes, I believe so. Is that on the north side of Colorado Springs? Yes. Um, was Did you know at that particular time of this phone call, so February 15th of 2020, uh, where the defendant actually was located, in, whether in the city or anywhere? Yes, we know. Where did, you, where did you know her to be at that time? South Carolina. How did you know that information? Uh, we had tracked her purchases and then got video of her crossing the country. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so when she's agreeing to um, potentially meet if information is given, um, was she implying that she was still here in the city? Yes, she was. Uh, in your opinion, was that a distraction attempt by her? Yes. Throughout the course of your involvement in the investigation and what you observed, uh, was it fairly common for the defendant to try to manipulate the investigation the way we just heard in this phone call? Yes. Was there any indication that um, Quincy Brown was involved in Gannon and Stock's disappearance? No. Did you have a chance to look up who Quincy Brown was? Yes. And who did that turn out to be? He was a sexual offender that was on the most wanted list that week of offenders or fugitives in the Colorado Springs area. Is that commonly published in this area by the media outlets, including the Gazette and I think KKTV and those types of outlets? Yes. And he was listed on that? Yes. Okay. Um, did you learn um, based on uh, your knowledge of uh, investigation that he was not even in the country anymore? Yes. Okay. I want to next jump to uh, another phone call that occurs on February 15, 2020 at 12, 10 p.m. Um, were you present for that call as well? Yes. Uh, again, same process that you described yesterday about um, passing notes to Al and suggesting questions and coaching him up? Correct. All right. Your Honor, at this time, I'm, I would uh, request permission to publish uh, People's Exhibit number 52. This one is longer. It's uh, an hour and four minutes long. All right. We should be able to finish that, and then we'll take our break. Yep. Okay. Okay. And agent, you can step down if you would like to do so. Hello? Hey. Hey, can you hear me? So, so I just got off the phone with that Amber lady, and I don't know, I kind of feel stupid now, because she's like, no, I ain't heard from nobody, about nothing like that. Yes, so, I sent her a message. I, 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 I'm, I'm just telling you what she said to me. I sent it to the number you gave me, so if there's a landline, maybe she didn't get it, but it's a cell phone, and then she got it. Okay, I'm I'm just telling you what the lady told me. I don't know. Like I told you, I mean, I don't know what the hell is going on. Is it a cell phone or a landline? I don't know. She, I called and she answered. That's all I know. I mean, you want to hang up okay. and try to call her? She's telling me it's got to be a cell phone. Do you want to hang up and try to call her? I mean, I'm just so sick of this. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, listen. Things were great. I'm just saying 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the call to no, you don't have to. I'm just saying, do you want to hang up and try to call her instead of message her? What I'm trying to say is, like, I just want things to go back like they were, like, Christmas. Like, right when we got the two puppies, all the kids were there. Everybody was so happy. Kids were playing their Switch. We were playing with the puppies. And it's just, life was just, like, happy as could be. And then, like, and then here we are. I just want to go back to that, Tisha. Why can't we just get back to that place in our life? Over. What? For a second, that is not on my mind every single day, and that's not what I want. I, I put in so much effort in Christmas, and what you're saying, how much effort I put in the Christmas and holidays for everyone, and you think for a second that's not what I want? I go out my way for all of our children. I have tons and tons of clothing, so everything I saw that the one that has online, who do you think bought it? Who do you think did all that? Do you want, don't you think I love doing that? Want that? And I pray every day that that day I wake up every morning looking for you. Then realize I'm not beside you. Then realize I'm not helping the kids get ready for school. Do you think I don't know that and want that? I didn't, like, I wasn't going through some turmoil where, oh, God, you know, I don't love my life. I hate myself. That, no. We had a great house. We have a great family. Like, really? So, so don't bring up Christmas and how you want the dogs. You think it's going to bother me that I don't get to be like, oh, God, you know? This year with this, guess what? 17th, I always tell you happy anniversary. 17th, month by month by month. Think that's not coming up? Think I don't want to do that? You think the kids? Think I don't think about that every time? Oh, because you know why? Landon pops up and gets to be the saint. This is the 100th day of school. I got the kids in the school. I kept them in school. I homeschooled them. You think I don't want all that? Come on now. Well, how? how I'm looking forward to like doing all these different things when Gannon finally gets to middle school. Because maybe, just maybe, the whole point of us selling our equipment was for him to get called to hockey. I'm so excited. Seemingly, like, you know, he might be interested in a sport that I can be at the schoolhouse and be a part of. You think all this and want it? Well, how do we get it back? How do we get back to just a month and a half ago? That's what I would. That's what I want to know. Because a month and a half, a month and a half ago, there was five people and two dogs. Now it's just me. So how do we get back there, Albert? Like I don't even have. Uh, you, listen, I don't even have Lena. She's in Texas right now. I, I'm freaking. Hey, that is your fault. Let me just go ahead and tell you. Because this, you think you're allowing that to happen? You think that was irresponsible on your part? Okay. And you can think that I am longer for whatever reason you want to. I don't agree with that because at the end of the fucking day, she's still a drug. She still don't take care of her kids. And she still don't have a place to live. I want to let my child mess with her. So that's on you. That's not me. I didn't make that decision. and would have never made that decision. So, so, but she's coming back. Don't get me wrong. She's coming back. I'm just talking about this weekend. Okay. She's down there with them. But even then... How do I? How do we get back to the five of us? The five of us: me, you, Harley, Gannon, and Lena. How do we get back to that point? How do we have a family and two dogs and a two-story house and all the things that we had and three cars and you know the, the American dream? Right now, I'm living the American nightmare. How do I get back to the American dream? I need you to help me get there. Albert, the first step is we figure out. What the people in this world are cruel, okay? They are. People are cruel. Okay? You, in your mind, know better than us. That American dream you just talked about, we would have never had it if any of those five people in our home would have been cruel. If any of those five people would have been out to hurt people or do bad things to people, okay? So that's the first step that you need to realize. Is that this is not me against you. Yeah, of course, people always, in, in marriages, 
you're going to have disagreements. But you know, you know well, we literally just got off a cruise for our anniversary. I made sure that the children were in the best care possible with someone staying there, not only with Harley, okay, someone in the adult that could make sure that they had everything they needed. Not a worry in the world. You know I've always done that. I had always security systems installed. Check the ring out. Check, check the alarm. You know me as that person. So until you put that in your mind, that's the first step. Because you can't be against your wife on this. And you can't be thinking what these people are thinking online that I'm this step Because that's not true. Without me, without me and God, the children would not be in our home. And without you and God, the children would not be in our home. Because they were horrible situations. So in order to get back the way it is, we need to figure out who, who, who can help us. Who can help us figure out the best way to get in. Whether, whether whatever it is. Do you want me to give them my leg? Do you want me to give them my no, 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 no. Listen, I'm telling you, I told you this yesterday. I feel like this is all going to be my fault in the end, okay? Because I was gone when this happened. So no, don't, don't sit there and offer your legs and arms up when it's my fault. I'm not going to let you say that. Here's why. Okay? Let me tell you here's why. Because when you were in Oklahoma for five months, I had to be the one cleaning and checking to make sure the kids were okay. I had to be the one driving, making sure hey, this, that, saving people, barely get time with them. I had to do that for you. I had to drive through the night to Atlanta, to Orlando, to get planes, to a hurricane to get them to you in Oklahoma. Right? But, so, but you got to understand, let, let me tell you how I feel. Let me tell you my feelings. One of the, what is one of the most important things to me that I always say? Protection, right? And I failed in that because I couldn't protect my son. And I couldn't protect you from getting your head smashed and, and all these other things, okay? So that's how I'm feeling right now. But how, I mean, okay. how do we get back to what we were with our, our five people in our family? We were. We are that. So why are we saying get back, boy? That's what we are. No, because I'm I'm one person. Gannon's unknown. You, you and Harley bounced. Lane is with Landon, okay? That's not five people. That's... That's that's four people somewhere and one person unknown. So how do we get okay. Gannon, how do we get Gannon so back, number me, one? Let me ask you a question, okay? We're gonna sit for a second here and we're gonna say, All right, we're gonna focus on two separate things here. The first thing is we're gonna come back to getting uh, Gannon back and all that. But let me ask you what you just said. Let me answer to what you just said. You you can't think in your mind that that's what you wanna get back. If A, you, you now, let me let me back up and say this. Heath and Harley didn't leave. This is what happened. Heath and Harley came back after they took absolutely everything from me. I went in. You were laying on the sofa, and I tried to talk to you. I said, come to the bedroom. Let me talk to you. Okay? I tried. The next day, you helped them. You did. Instead of just calling to say, hey, listen, they want to take Harley's car. And they want to take her. You didn't never say that. Okay? You could have been trusting and said that to me. You know good and well. I have a lot that I've worked hard for to throw away. From you, you could have called me. You could have said that. Instead, they chased us down. And your child that you're saying you want back in your life and you want was put, was put in handcuffs like he's buying underwear. Listen, you're right. Hold on. I'll stop you right there. All that's my fault. You're right. I could have stopped it. I could have said, no, leave the girls alone. You're right. Okay. Keep, keep, keep going. Tell me the rest of it. So, when I come back, okay, after all this, we had the most important thing that you knew I needed. The most important thing. That means the world to me and all of that was our items, specifically my diamond ring, were in that car. I tried to reach out to you to say, can you please at least ask them, can we have those things? You wanted nothing to talk to me. Because that means the world to me to have my rings on because I took my vows for everything to you. And I tried reaching out for you. Hey, they have my rings. They have my ID. I don't even have money because they have my card. 
you wouldn't even talk to me. So then, then, do you wonder why? I said, if my husband would not even talk to me, he would not even warn me that my child was a father could put in and me because I was yelling at Harley not to move. And I was trying to tell them from shooting right there. Well, that, listen, listen, I'm sorry. That's my fault, too. Okay. No, I want you to know all that. I'm telling you, all this is my fault. Okay. I want to, I'm acknowledging that. Keep going. I'm just trying to try to be a team here. But then you tell everybody I leave. But when the proof is, you didn't step up in any of that space. Hey, babe. Okay, all right, Ty, no, I'm gonna stop you. I'm gonna stop you there. You told the world on camera you left. I didn't. So let's clarify that and then you you can go on. Okay, go go ahead. Go ahead. Why I wasn't they asked why I was not out there. Okay. Listen to me. In the situation, I'm sitting here getting my things taken and I and people think I don't have feelings. Why well, this stupid girl was sitting up in her house when she you see what he put out your kids. He didn't even complain on her birthday, which was four days before. Do you think I were angry? Do you think I was sitting there mad, thinking you don't give a fuck about them? Yes. Call me good. I'll take the blame for that. I'll take the blame for being stupid if you would let that bitch be here in your house the way she did our children. So I talked in. After those times, that she came to our house drunk and I had to let her stay at 4697 Farm Lake Drive and you fucked me out about it and told me I was on her team because she was drunk and I wasn't letting her go high or whatever and I was letting her leave with those kids? That's why. Because that weren't, that was, I don't care what the situation was. You could have been a fucking ass in a hotel if you didn't give anything to our children. I don't care what the time were because that didn't do anything but put a wedge between us. So, yes, when I came back that night, I had no other choice but to get clothing. I had no intentions of getting but a few things of clothing. So then when I see this bitch or in all the people, I'm not going to name any names, but you told me who are not, with my motherfucking clothes on, and then I see people, you can, you can say what you want to, and a time like this, you should worry about that. I'm not worried about the material things. It's the principle in my home, because I don't disrespect people's homes. They disrespected me like that. There's no telling what they did to you or what they did to our children. That is why I was angry. So be mad at me and what you want because I took clothes from there because I didn't want them burned. I had our, when I walked in that house the first first time, that shit had been moved. That's good. That's happened, Albert. You should have let that bitch Veronica walk around and move like shit. That was wrong. What was this bitch at when we needed help? When I needed somebody to help sometimes, where was she at, Albert? Where was she at when we needed help sometimes? When you would be working, we needed a babysitter. Where the fuck was she at? And you let her walk around and boost her shit? And then you let her go downstairs and do what she did to Harley? Oh, that was it. Who did what to Harley? Who, no, I don't know. Who did what to Harley? Oh, well, why don't you ask Miss Veronica why she walked downstairs and got shit to Harley? And then we were, and my mother wasn't even able to say a word for her because she wanted to make sure we got our thing. You ask her that. No, I'm asking you. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. No. And you ask, you ask somebody what that man. You let that woman follow that child downstairs that didn't even step in to see that fucking hurt. Follow her downstairs? Wait, anyways, I don't know what happened. Harley can tell me later. I, I don't know. Yeah. So, so my point is, so you, you can tell me I left and wasn't trying to be a part. You did not step in to help me to see any of the odds sit there and try to talk to people to try to remember anything else to try to go through the steps of it. I immediately had to go into a defense mode hiding for myself with nothing. Nothing. I was told. I was watched in a bath of the freaking piss in my own clothes. And you wonder why I was like, well, why am I going to be here for? You you, you had no business even let my brother even put his hand on one of our handguns. You had no business with that. I, uh, you, hey, you better, hey, you better stop right there because, hey, no, I was in total control of those weapons the whole time. You will not do that to me. Go ahead. 
You might have been in total control. But you but he had no business doing that. Okay? Who gives, like who gives a crap that. about that? Come on now. Point is, Albert, you let these people come in during that time, the first few few the first few days, and you let them control things. And you can say you didn't and maybe you were hurt, maybe you were upset, maybe your focus was on one thing. And I understand that. And I try to do nothing but say, okay, thinking about that in my mind, and I still want my husband, and I still know that, that he was not in his right mind there. But if it kept continuing, you still stepped in and said, right then, if you are not, a, or you are not related to me by blood, me, your, I know your sisters are, I know your mom is, if you are not a spouse and you're not related to me by blood, you need to leave this house. Okay, all right, all right. Teachers, no, stop, stop. Listen, I'll tell you. Put all that on me. I don't care, okay? Uh, we, we can fight about all that for the rest of our lives. You're right. I let people come into the house that ain't got no blood relation to me. You're absolutely right, okay? But the bigger issue here, and I've let you go on, so I, I try to be respectful and let you talk and talk and talk, but all this is about you and your damn stuff, not a damn thing about Gannon. Yes, it is. No, yes, it is. No, I, you asked me how. I said we're going to talk about two separate things. That's, oh. that's what I told you. So that's the first thing. Now, the most important thing is Gannon. Because you asked me the question, how to have everything back, American Dream, like you said, in December. Because you just realized well, where your actions could have been different. You realized where my actions could have been different. So until we have tried to put those actions back together and bring it back together as one, as one, Albert, as one. You didn't marry me, or I didn't marry you, in order to turn our back to each other in tough time. That's not how it works in life. You know me better. I know you better. You, you know, you, you've had to live with a past of the things that your father's done. I've never once said to you, I don't trust you with my child, and I feel like you're, you're bad around them. Never once. Actually, you have said that. Actually, you have said that, which is bullshit, but go ahead. I'll listen to you. No, I did not. That was, you were talking about something Landon was trying to get me to turn on. Okay, all right. In our, I'm talking about in our home. You know good and well, if I went somewhere and Harley was there, I was never worried for a second. All right, so stop. You're not... Okay, stop, stop. Let me, let me interject, okay, because this is supposed to be about Gan in this part. Part one was... No, listen, please listen. So, oh. so we can go get in. Okay, the problem is here, you said until we have trust. The problem is we're not there yet, okay? We're, because a few minutes ago, oh, no, 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 listen, listen, I'm going to tell you why right now, okay? I've given, no, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why and then I'll let you talk, okay? Please listen, I'm going to tell you why. Because, okay, I've taken the blame for everything that I'm responsible for in this situation, Probably more than I should have, but I'll take the blame for all of it, okay? Quincy Brown's got the boy, okay? But the part that I still don't have trust about is when I brought up the fact that there was a puddle of blood in the house, you mentioned a head wound. You didn't even say a damn thing about that. Not a peep, Tisha. You blew right past it. So fill in the, talking about fill in the blanks for me. No, 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 no. What are you talking about a head wound? I never said to you about any kind of head wound. Now, see, this is where you... No, you did. You said in the, you said in the bicycle incident, which you later told me was not true, but you... I already told you I made that up because you would never believe anything I said. Okay, so how did the puddle, how did, how did the puddle of blood get there? Because it wasn't there before we moved in. So, okay, tell me about the puddle of blood in the corner. No, you said the wall. You said there was something on the wall. Who cares what it was? You cleaned it. I don't know anything about that other than what you said. We cleaned everything from when Gannon... Okay. Yeah, and the... No, I'm... No, no, you didn't because we haven't talked about this. There was a puddle of blood the size of, like, one of those paper dinner platter plates. I mean, it was... I mean, it's significant. And that was on the concrete, which means it had to be significantly bigger and more thicker... More thicker, whatever. I can't hear you. Hello? I can't hear you. You're talking about something. I'm talking about something. No, it was not already there. Okay, that blood was not already there. How did the blood get there? 
Okay, it was a significant amount of blood. How did it get there in the corner of Gannon's room under his bed, which you told me the beds were pushed together? So how did the blood get there? Are you done yelling at me? I'm not yelling. I'm not yelling. How did the blood get there? You can, you can tell all your little police people that are listening. Did Tracy Brown bang Gannon's head up against the wall or something? Did he bust Gannon's head open? Did he hit him with a two by four? What did Quincy do to Gannon? That caused, what did he do to Gannon that put blood on the floor? Because you are, I'm not stupid. I know you have police there. I know you have people there. You can, believe, you can believe whatever you want, obviously, because I've had so many freaking stories that you believed that were true to tell me, and then you always back off of them, okay? So you can believe whatever the hell you want to believe. All I believe is what I saw. All I believe is what I saw, blood on the floor in my son's room, and my son is missing, okay? That's the two things I know. Gannon was hurt in my house. I don't know. How many times do I have to say this to you? I don't no. You don't know how he got hurt, okay? You asked me 15 times the same as that question, and I'm giving you the same as that answer, same as that answer. I don't know. Then you try to turn it, and you try to ask me another way, and then you try to turn it off, and you try to say something nice and sweet like you really care, and then you come back and ask me the same question again. And I've given you the same answer. If you're so concerned about... You, but you had... No, stop, because you haven't... You haven't given me the same answer. It's been a different story every time. Sure aren't your ass... You sure aren't your ass to go find him to see what he did to Gannon. You are too busy worrying about something that you think you can solve. I'm still waiting on the address. You were supposed to give me the address. You were supposed to give me the address from your lawyer's people. Me? Yes, because you, you said they had it. You know, now you're changing your story. You're changing your story. You called the police, not me. I wasn't there. I'll take the blame for not being there, for not protecting you. You called the police. Why did you call the police? I am. You call? Actually, no. I, right? Stop right there. You called the police and told him he ran away. Not that Quincy Brown took him. What the fuck, Tisha? Answer that for me. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, Quincy Brown, and I believe you, Quincy Brown has my son, this motherfucker from somewhere up north of here, okay? But you called the police and said he ran away. Don't tell me you were freaking out. Okay, no. Don't give me some bullshit. Don't give me some bullshit story, Tisha. Tell me the goddamn truth right now. If you're not going to listen to my answer, then why are you talking? I'm listening. This is it. This is the, this is the line in the sand. Quincy Brown... Got my son, and you told the police he ran away, and there's blood in his room. If I was guilty, why would I call the police? I said Quincy Brown was guilty. I didn't say you. I said Quincy Brown. Why are you talking about yourself? Why did you say if you were guilty? You told me you weren't the whole time. Why did you say if you were guilty? You said Quincy Brown, and I said Quincy Brown. You keep bringing it back to you, not me. There's No, I said there's blood in the room. Quincy Brown took him. You called the police and said he ran away. Explain all those things to me right now. Albert? What? You calm down. I'm going to answer your question. Oh, I'm, I'm calm. I'm as calm oh, as I can be. I'm calm as a king. Yeah. I'm not stupid either. You fucking lied to me and you fucking lied to the police. I'm not stupid either. So get, you better get right. I told the police when I got there what happened. Man, you told them he ran away and, they, and the whole neighborhood was looking for a runaway for days and days and days. You're lying. <laughs> you are now lying. And, I, and I'm calling you out. You're lying. That is not true. That is not what happened. They... When they interviewed me, I told them exactly what happened. But that's not, okay, uh, I don't give a fuck what you said. You told me he was a runaway. So I called and called and I cursed the lady out on the on, on the recorded line, told her to get there for my my runaway son. Okay, you never once told me Quincy Brown had the boy and there was blood in his room. So you better get it straight right now. When you stop yelling at me. When you start telling the truth. Tell the truth and I'll stop getting upset. 
You lying. I told you the truth. You are lying, Tisha. You call me back. Go ahead and hang up with you. You call me back when you got the truth. You're fucking lying. Are you done yelling and cursing at me? I'm done. Go ahead. So, for a second, for a minute, I need you to just breathe. Because you're yelling at me. And I can't even answer a question when you're screaming. And every time I go to open my mouth, you're screaming and yelling at me. Every time there's a lie, I'm going to call you out. So let's go. Let's see. There's nothing for there to be a lie. Okay, I'm just going to warn you. I'm firing a warning shot right now. You lie, I'm going to tell you you lie. Go ahead. Very, look, I, I haven't even said that. You're still burning your yap. All right. You're still running your yap. All right, I'm shutting my yap. Go ahead. Still running your yap. If there was blood in Gannon's room, that would have been already from when he cut his foot. I've already told you that, okay? I told you that his arm from him getting burned was bleeding some because that was his foot. I've already told you that. Okay, you're lying. You're lying. Stop. That's a lie. Change it again because that's a lie. Here's the game we're going to play. Every time you lie, I'm going to call you out. You can't bleed that much from a burn. You can't bleed that much from a burn. You can't bleed that much from a cut on your foot from a two-by-four. I'm not stupid. You're lying. Go ahead. Change it again. You're lying. You said a plate side. A plate? A dinner plate? That Okay, that's what seeped through, Tisha. That means there was a puddle of blood on the damn carpet to seep through the carpet, an inch of carpet pad, and onto the concrete pad where it looked like it had been sitting there for days, Okay. All right, that's what I that's what I saw. So tell the fucking truth. Maybe you should ask the people who were there living because I never was there and it contaminated the crime scene. Maybe you should ask them. Tisha, guess what? Guess what? Get your fucking asses on the contamination. All right, good. Who did that? You so, who did it? All right, nice. Guess what? Guess what? You just tell it on yourself now. You're worried about you. You're you're worried about a damn loophole. You're trying to find a loophole. Okay. Oh. Okay. There's another loophole. All right. There's another loophole. All right. There's three loopholes already. All right. It sounds funny to me that they left for Texas with a child missing. Maybe they contaminated. That's fine. Okay. Fine. All right. Go there. So that's that's. I like it when I'm talking. Landon, Lena, Veronica, and me. That's four loopholes right there. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Quit lying. You You're just, funny. you just told on, hey, between, between me and you, you just told on yourself, because you just said I, they, they contaminated a crime scene is what you said. No, I said you, I said y'all contaminated me, y'all put it in there then. Oh, we put it in there? Not that, do you? Okay. Do you? All right, so you see, here you go. Here you go with the spin game. Oh, you were all, you, hey, your brother did. you were on the cut foot and the burnt arm. Now it's a spin game, okay? All right, keep going with your spin. You the one said you know the answer, so, I mean, so if you know the fucking answer, well, I, I, I was going to talk you about the bullshit you said to me. Yeah, that's freaking, uh, it's freaking, I know what that's, the answer is. It's freaking Gannon's blood. It's Gannon's blood from a head injury. Now, how did he get a head injury? How did he get a head injury over there? In the corner. I mean, you freaking told on yourself saying you pushed the beds together. You pushed the beds together. We've never pushed the beds together. You're lying. I've done it. Let me tell you something, Albert. If you went in somewhere where there was blood and you were allowed to walk in there, maybe you did it. Oh, maybe I did it, huh? He not allowed anywhere to see this. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you just said you walked in somewhere to see it. Did you do it? Because you should, and if that was the case, what you're telling me is you shouldn't even have been allowed in there. Oh, 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 oh. I was in Oklahoma. That's what I got to say. That's my loophole. Okay? You want to try to pin it on me? Go ahead. You walked in there the other day. Yeah, I walked in there and saw it after. Hey, you told on yourself because you, hey. Then you, then you, maybe you put it in the air because you know why? All right, all right. Let's, hey, let's calm down. Let's calm down. Let's calm down. Let's calm down, okay? You put in there then. Hey. You put the United States and you should have walked in the supposed time thing. Listen, calm down. Did you walk out? Did you walk in the room, huh? 
what do you think is gonna happen? Well, hey, what do, you, what do you think is gonna happen when they solve this crime? Okay, what do you think? What do you think? I, I don't know who I. Me and accuse me. You said you went somewhere. So who the fuck done it? Did she do it? Just tell. Hey. That if this was a crime scene, y'all were fucking allowed to be in there. So, Tisha, okay. Tell me, tell me better than this. Just I know you're pretty smart. Tell me better than this. So you admitted to me that you were allowed to walk in the crime scene. No, I said I saw it. Don't twist my words. I saw it. I saw it. Who, who else went in there? Come I, okay. Well, you, hey, you, you want to know? Uh, you want to know who else walked in there? You, Gannon with a head injury, Quincy Brown, and a puddle of blood walked in there. That's who walked in there. So, what do you think is going to happen? What do you What do you think is going to happen when they find that boy and put all these pieces together? Okay. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think is going to happen? What you think you can say whatever you want you can say whatever you want okay maybe this was a freaking accident maybe we can fix it okay but the <laughs> but the truth but the truth don't the truth don't lie accuse me accuse me no, no. i didn't accuse you i accused quincy brown and and maybe there's a story a part of this that's an accident okay by the Son head injury to gannon jacob south i don't know about it or i didn't do it or, why is it an or? Why is it an or? Okay, you just, I mean, that, that that's why I don't trust you. Do it. What? No, you didn't say and. Say you said or. You're going to do this to me. Listen, it, listen, all of this stuff doesn't matter because by the time I saw a puddle of blood on the floor, Gannon was already gone, okay? He was already walking sluggish to the truck, okay? And he's, he's God knows where he is if, he, if he's even alive. And that's what matters. Okay, what I'm just plug it to the truck. Yeah, absolutely, Please. absolutely. Please. I'm sure he was. Why did you? Anyways, to the truck, really? Why would he be walking? Why would he be walking sluggish to the truck? He never does that when he has a, a tummy. Some sluggish. Tummy accident. How the hell can you determine sluggish for a video? The same way you can determine a shadow means somebody's getting out of a truck. Okay, the same bullshit. Okay. Any different than walking? You can you listen. You you claim you claim a shadow you claim a shadow means Gannon got out the truck we never saw him we saw him we saw him walk into the truck we saw him walk into the truck. I against Quincy Brown and he okay okay good I was walking sluggish when I cut my finger Gannon was walking sluggish after he had a significant head wound with puddle of blood on the floor. Okay, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, he was walking sluggish because he was hurt, and there was a puddle of blood on the floor, and it's probably his blood. I haven't seen no freaking evidence, but I guarantee you it's his blood because it all adds up, Tisha. And he was walking sluggish because of that, just like I was walking sluggish when I cut my finger off. You hit the nail on the head, honey. I don't even understand. Like, you're talking. See, this is what's not making any sense. You're trying to say that he got hurt, but. Yeah. I don't even know that he got hurt at Oh, why? Oh, you, I'm glad you caught yourself. So you're saying he, he got hurt Monday morning? I'm glad you caught yourself. Yep, I'm glad you caught yourself, though. Hey, listen, let's stop, okay, because this is going nowhere. We can we can fix this. No, I want Gannon. I don't want you in trouble. I, I, I'm I blaming Quincy Brown, okay? I'm blaming freaking Quincy Brown. I want my son. Just fail to tell me how, how, how we were supposed to be backed away in our American dreams. And you started screaming no. in the middle of the wall. Because of my son. It's my son's blood all over the freaking house. Okay? My son's blood. If it was if it was Harley's blood, you'd be screaming too. You're screaming and it's not even your son. You call this blood and it's Gannon. I'm assuming. Who else's blood would be on the floor? It, okay, good. Yeah, you got me. I'm assuming. I'm making a serious, legitimate assumption, putting all the pieces together. That is my son's blood. Layla, hey, is let. Is Lena cut up? Are you cut up? Is Harley cut up? No, Gannon's the only one missing and we don't know. So yes, I'm assuming. Okay? I'm not cut up. I wasn't even there. I'm going to tell you this, Albert. You can tell me whatever you want to. We Now is the time when we fix this. Right now. Okay? Okay, and I'm telling you right now. You, you, you start coming for 30 seconds and listen. All right. And yelling back at me. All right. Gannon Stout was not plugging other 
other than if his stomach might have hurt and his foot. There was nothing wrong with Gannon on Monday morning. He had his switch and was playing his switch, and there was nothing wrong with him. Okay, fine. Maybe he was a little tired because the boy said tonight when his stomach hurting was I message you about. Okay, fine. Maybe he was a little tired for that part of it, but you can't assume that someone's sluggish and hurt. On Monday morning, that is not true, okay? Daniel was under my care and was fine. If he'd been sluggish and hurt getting in your truck, there would have been blood in your truck. You can't do that. People are all online talking about he was looking like he was drugged. Really? Daniel, drugged. I mean, he only takes it. He takes his medicine. One, okay, his stomach was hurting. Okay, he had a lot of beer lax in his system trying to lean him out. So you did get, say, wait, wait, I, I want to stop you because you said you didn't give him anything. Now you say you did give him something. This whole time you didn't give him anything. No, you're a fucking liar because I told you I gave it to him on Saturday night. Okay, maybe. I don't remember that, but now you say you basically you say you doped him up on mirror lights. I already told you this, so don't try to correct me and tell me I'm lying when I, I know for a fact. Okay? He was probably very tired. If you go back and look at your phone, I messaged you up until 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. Because we didn't sleep. I'm sure Lena went to school completely exhausted. So if he walked out maybe a little bit tired, and you saw that, then blame me. Because you know why? We didn't go to sleep. So now he is tired and sluggish, and a minute ago he wasn't tired and sluggish. If you think that, then that's why. Okay, alright, I'm just trying to clarify, because you said he wasn't, now he is, okay? It would it, it, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I said if he would have had his head injury that you're talking about, okay, he would have had blood in your truck. Okay, he would have. There would have had to been something done to him. This, this supposed head injury you're talking about would have just stopped. Would have just stopped. I agree. Okay? I agree with you. Didn't know it had been born all over your truck, okay? That's just how it would have been. It, it, it's like, I understand as a father, you are freaked out, okay? I understand at this point, you're going to cut out the world because it's about your child. I understand that. When I thought Harley was lost on that freaking cruise boat, I'm going to set that thumb sticks out. I understand what you're saying when it comes to mode, attack mode, protect mode, attack mode. Okay? But you want to know how do we get back to that? Then you have to believe that when Gannon South left that house that day, he was not in any shape or form, had been bleeding, hurt, nothing, other than him hurting his foot, okay? His stomach hurting. And you know what? I was going to leave him at home. Wait, what about the burns? You already knew this. Okay, well, you said, you said, I'm just clarifying, because you said in any way, shape, or form, and he had burns on his arms, okay? This is my baby boy now we're talking about. Yes, you said his head. I'm trying to clarify his All right, so, did, so all right, so I, I got you. All right, I got you. He didn't, he didn't leave the house with, no, no, he didn't leave the house with a head injury, all right? So, did you bring him back, and then he got a head injury, or did you bring him back with a head injury? Okay, then he ran away. Did he run away? Or did Quincy, Quincy Brown take him with a head injury? Okay, what what version of that is the truth? Because the boy was bleeding in the house. So how? where did the blood come from? Albert, I'm going to tell you once again. All right. You can say all you want to with these assumptions that you have. Okay. Gannon. I've already been bleeding from his foot. Okay? That, I had already cleaned it up. Did, he, did, he, did he bleed in that court? Did he bleed in the corner of the room? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I talk? 
Okay, go ahead. He had already been bleeding from his foot. We just, at that point in time, fixed the room. The only reason I put the room, cleaned it up, or whatever, was because later on, I did that before you got there. So you cleaned up the room before I got there? Okay, okay. Look and listen to me. As far as putting, making the thing back up, fixing his legos back right, I did that. Cleaning the wall, right? Cleaning the wall, right? That was part of the cleanup? Cleaning the wall? You said? I did not have already done that. Okay, I'm just trying to put the timeline together. You're, you're talking about cleaning something prior like, it was prior to what you were even talking about. Okay. Except you're not understanding. Well, I'm trying to understand because you told me you cleaned up the rape scene in his room initially, and now, you know... Yes, my clothing, and I've already told you that. Okay. Okay? I've already told you this, Albert. What about the corner where the blood was? Did you clean that up, too? Okay, was that part of the cleanup? And that's fine if that was part of the rape cleanup. I mean, but was that part of the cleanup? Okay, okay, now you're trying to go off. No, I'm trying to understand all of this. You never told me the rape wasn't true and the bang in your head wasn't true. You told me the bicycle wasn't true. You didn't tell me this part wasn't true. So did you clean up the corner too? Was that part of the cleanup? Because that's where the blood was. And if, I mean, if that's, I mean, like I said, that all adds up to an accident to me and that you, Quincy Brown is responsible, okay? And that you just got scared and freaked out. Or was it your blood from when you banged your head? I mean, what happened? How did the... I mean, what happened in that... Well, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm assuming it's his, but if you banged your head that hard to pass out, you probably were bleeding too. Maybe you fell into the corner because the beds were pushed together. I don't know. All right, I'm just trying to understand. And then you cleaned it up, and that was part of the cleanup that you talked about. Just explain to me what's going on here. It is embarrassing to explain to you, Albert. It's embarrassing. It's me. Okay? It, it, it should be embarrassing to me, babe. We. we I, not, but don't call me babe because you don't really want me as a babe. You're not trying to be loving to me. I'm trying to find out what happened to my son. All that, all everything else, come. Uh, is, is is part of the situation after we find Gannon, it, whatever we decide at that point. Blood. In the corner? No, one of it would have been on the roof. Okay, keep going. I, I just, I, I'm going to shut up because this is freaking, this is freaking me out. Don't even start with all freaking me out like you care. I care if it's, I don't want nobody to bleed. What are you talking about? So you cleaned up your blood and Gannon's blood in the corner? Why did you tell me that? I, I did. You just said I told you about the cleaning part and what happened about it. I mean, you're just like, it doesn't matter what I told you. You it, think it's funny. You just want to laugh at me. That's what you want to do. I don't want to laugh. I don't want to no. know. I want to know where my son is and what happened. How did the blood, how did your blood get there and how did Gannon's blood get there? Uh, listen to okay, me. I'm listening. I've already told, I've already told investigators that. Okay. okay. All right. Well, tell me because I don't know. You went on this no, 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 no. They let you in on this supposed crime scene that you shouldn't have even been on if it was a crime scene. Then they probably let you in on everything. Okay, or, or, they did things illegally, whatever they did. My point is, it is embarrassing to tell you that. Okay? Embarrassing. Okay? Because you know why? You're not going to take my side, so what does it matter? I am going to take your you side. I'm... Trying to put me on trial. Have you been in the car to go find this dude? Or have you put me on trial? I used to. You, listen, you told me you were getting the address or the phone number or something from the attorney's assistant. Okay? Listen, the reporter's got to do a whole report on it. Okay, so why can't I have the address and go there and. Turn to be on the TV in a minute. Okay, so I got now I can't I can't do anything because I gotta wait for the TV report, the breaking news story, when you have the information. Come on. Come on. You don't gotta wait for the breaking news report.
listen, listen. Hey, hey, back up. Just talk with Amber. She's protecting you. No, I, I, all I know is from a voice on the phone. Listen, what I want is what I told you I wanted initially. I want our five people in our family, two dogs, Christmas presents. Yes, that's what I want, okay? And if this was, I'm just talking about that's the last time we were all together, happy, enjoying and that I could think of that was great. Walk a pickup? I'm just talking about good times in our life. I said, I said that's the last thing I can think of presents. What? That starts with you. That starts with you saying, I want my wife and my daughter here and, and Lena here. And we're going to sit down and we're going to all find Dan. Right. It, and we can fix this. Yes, our family can fix this. All five of us. Okay. Maybe it was an accident. I don't know. Okay, all five of us can fix this. Talk to Lena. That's how sorry that shit was. Sorry. That's how sorry that shit was. You could have, you could right now fix this. You could right now say, listen, my wife, my cow, and my cow, we're all going to be in this one location because our home has been taken over. And we're going to write it down. If we have to wake up every morning and write down any new detail as we are pursuing this person. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to do. do with you. And that's what I'm doing with you. I'm writing down every detail. This adds up to an accident, a Quincy Brown. No. Not about your about No, your you family. no, you said we can get together and write down every TV detail. We're on the phone together, Tisha. We can write down okay. these details. Tell me what you want to do it, right? I offered you a meeting. I offered you a meeting. A meeting? Yes. Okay, you, okay, make up your mind. One minute you offer me a meeting. Next minute you said, how do we have our lives back away? All right, and I also told you it starts with the truth, okay? You still haven't told me. <laughs> oh, yes, okay. How did the blood get in the corner? Your blood and Gannon's blood. How did it get there? That's the truth that we need, okay? How did it get there? It doesn't matter what I tell you. You're going to call me a liar. No, just tell me what the truth is. That, that It does matter. I tell you, you're going to call me a liar. Tell me the truth, and I won't call you a liar. I told you. Okay. You're going to call me a liar. I can tell you that I freaking got hit with a baseball bat, and you would still be like, no lie. And it'd be true. It, listen. I you that somebody, I can tell you that somebody was trying to stick something in my asshole. And get this asshole. And you would tell me I was telling a lie. You wouldn't care. Actually, I would. If you told me the truth, I would. Absolutely care. Because if you you got hit with a baseball bat, we wouldn't be talking right now. Okay? So, that's why I just need the truth of how did the blood get there. Now we've established it's Gannon's well, blood. Just a bit. I think I just told you, didn't I? Tell me again. You didn't tell me, you said if I told you this or if I told you that. You didn't tell me anything. If you are all over the place that you are that blind, if you're that blind to it, then that's on you. So somebody hit Gannon with a baseball bat. Somebody hit Gannon with no. a baseball bat and then molested both of no. y'all. So somebody, no. so it's blood from his butt? Talk with a baseball bat, like use it as an example how you wouldn't believe nothing I said. So somebody, okay. somebody raped and molested both of y'all. And that's blood from his butt is what you're telling me. And blood from your butt. I'm telling you anything because I'm not going to relive it. Well, Gannon's out there hopefully reliving it every day. I hope he's out there living. That he's not because you know why? You're hoping he's not living? You're hoping he's not living? I said I, I, said I hope he's out there living. Living every day. Oh my God. You just see? No. You see what you did? Yeah, I saw what I did. I took what you said. He's not, I said, I hope he's not living it every day. Like, as in living through someone hurting him. And you took that as me saying something different. You why? But, but why are you so worried? Somebody did something to you and Gannon, this Quincy Brown guy. You're not going to be in trouble. You're not going to be in trouble. But you're talking about c contaminated crime scenes. And that, But I'm not telling you you're going to be in trouble. I don't even know. Okay? You're worried about all this stuff. Please. No. You're worried about immunity. You're worried about contaminated crime scenes, but you didn't do anything. 
that. I'm telling you, you didn't like that I came back with you when you said something like that. No, you can come back with whatever you want. Okay, it's not a competition. It's not a competition. It's a co actually, it is a competition to find that boy. I can't hear you. What constitution? I can't hear you. It's the law. If someone deems something a crime scene, there's not a person is allowed to be in there breathing, walking, anything. But why are you worried about that? Why are you worried about that? Uh, you're not on trial here. No, you're not on trial here. No, the truth is, well, how did the blood get there? Tell me, okay? Oh, you're asking me again. How did the blood get there? I'm not saying it's your fault. Listen. Because you won't tell me. So I want you to acknowledge for me that if if you what you're saying is true, I don't know the Constitution like you do, okay? You went to law school and all that stuff, right? So if the police allowed somebody to go in there, that's the police's fault. Okay, that's not my okay. fault. That's not your fault. No. Do you ever let people talk and answer you? Yes. This is you yep. should have been. Like, uh, this is what I told you all the time. You should have been a lawyer. Right, okay. You ask the book. He's like, get me now. And I get it when I'm trying to tell him. You would not let someone answer you for, for nothing. Like, you would sit there at work and let people dog your ass. But you would talk shit to me. No, I'm not talking shit. I'm asking you for the truth. It doesn't even make any sense to me. You won't even, like, protect us in freaking Burger King. But you'll talk shit to me. I'm not talking shit. I want my family. I want my son. He was bleeding when he left the house. You told me that. You told me he was bleeding. You told me... You told me he was bleeding when he left the house. You just told me that. There's blood all over the floor, and he left with Quincy Brown. Wit. I didn't ask you that. I know that I'm getting messages. I know that I'm getting whatever saying something about money. I sent it to you. You didn't acknowledge that, did you? I did acknowledge that. You're talking to me. But if but you you gotta understand. That's no fun. Okay, fine. You believed a hundred percent. Believed a hundred percent that I did not hurt in and south. You would not be interrogating me by your police officer. Okay, I'm not. Okay, but I here's I'm gonna go over you exactly what I know from what you told me. To I'm going over it. Please. You called nine one one. You reported a missing child. Okay. Then when I got home, what? when I got home, no, you called. Uh, let me let me rephrase that because you said he was a runaway. You said he left, and the cameras prove he didn't. No, I didn't say that. Okay. The you said that. You told me he went to a friend's house. You told me that. Okay. He went that he went to a friend's house and didn't come home. All right. You Are told you me that. Okay. Then you changed the story to the cops and to no. me and everybody. I he was okay. Fast forward. Then I see blood. Now you've confirmed you also saw blood. Okay, and then I ask you to tell me the truth over and over and over again, and you don't. Then I even offer I can help you fix it. I, we, it could be an accident. Chrissy Brown could be at fault. I could be at fault. Okay, but you just keep going down this road. And now, and how do you expect me? How do you expect me not to blame myself because my son's missing and nobody can find the truth and it's in my household? Okay, how do you expect me to tell you like? What, what, what do you want me to tell you? Where the blood came from and how it got there. That's what I want to know. You did not. You keep saying it at 15 times. You didn't say how it got, or you didn't say how it got there? You, if you bleed. Come on. What? Say what? If you get hurt, you bleed. Okay, how, you got hurt? Common sense. You got hurt and you bled and you and Gannon bled in the same puddle? There was one no. puddle, not two. There was one puddle. So you sat back to back and bled together? Is that what happened? No, that's not what happened. Well, then, that's, that's where you go again about interrogating. I'm not. I'm trying to put together what happened to my son and my wife. So tell me, where's the, where's the second puddle of blood if you were both hurt equally? And you remember all of that now. Really? Okay. No, I'm sitting back here as you try to put words in my mouth. I'm not. I'm I trying to understand. I'm trying to understand. Well, tell me what happened then. Tell me where the blood came from. How it got there. Tell me. I 
can only go on what I heard. Okay. Tell me what you heard then. I told you I am not. Until you guys can stop trying to make me to be the criminal when I'm not. I'm not. I told you I'm taking blame for it. I'm no, 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 let's clarify. I let's clarify. You got mad and let's clarify. You'll be asking to clear your name. Let's clarify. Be stupid enough to clarify to you. Cause I'm not blaming you. Just I'm not a criminal. I did Okay, you're right. You're not a criminal for hearing things. Nobody is. So what did you hear? Testify. What did you hear? Testify, Testify to your husband about this our son. It's uh, our son is missing. You can't just say that. You won't even let your wife and daughter and your other daughter be with you right now. Because you won't tell me the truth. You worried about family? Just tell me what you heard, please. Yeah, but, but you better believe Lena was with you. But yeah, Harley's supposed to be your daughter too, right? You took Harley. Play, right? I want my family. You chose. You and Harley chose to leave, and I never asked you to leave. Okay, I want it. Family? I wanted it the whole time. And she was trying to worry about you. you she was about you wanting to pay her car payment. You changed clothes on her. Why? Because I had to do that because I'm responsible for it. Yes, okay, yes, okay, but that doesn't matter right now. You you can make the car payment all you want to. That doesn't matter right now. Listen, listen. But you want your family, right? I can't hear you. I said you want your family. Right? Yes, I do. You want your family? I do. Okay, and I worked my ass off to be able to finance the car for her, okay? But you need to tell me what you heard. Because that... But then you could have gave her the option to get it back herself and finance it. She could get it back whenever they release it. She could get it back whenever they release it. Alright, you said earlier... Listen. And I would have treated her in that situation. Yes, exactly. And a, fa and a father, hey, don't tell me how a father is supposed to feel. You're talking about what you said is most important to you, which is things. You said that. Items, okay? I'm talking about what's most important to me. What's most important to a father is his son. His The most important thing to a father is his children. I want my son back, and you have the information, and you won't give it to me. You won't tell me what you freaking heard when he was bleeding to death. I call you. You said the most important thing to you is your son. And my son, my children. I said that. My children. My son is missing right now. Right? My two daughters are not missing. My two daughters are not missing. Talk to her and said, listen. Lena is safe and sound. Harley is safe and sound. They need love and care. Okay. So said you put Lena to bed last night. Right. Where's Harley at? You wouldn't let us come. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you. You won't tell me where she's at to protect her and keep her safe. She wouldn't tell me that. Tell me, tell me what you heard. Albert, can I not come say? Listen, listen. You're worried about you now. You're worried about you. This is about Gannon. Gannon's, Gannon's bleeding to death, and you heard it. Gannon's missing, and you want to do something. No, Gannon's... with the motherfucking FBI. But you ain't. Yeah, I'm on the phone with you. You want togetherness. I'm giving you that. Okay? You said Gannon's bleeding. You said Gannon's bleeding. And Make this a priority then. You want your family? And you mean that? You're not trying to be a guy to throw me under the bus? Alright, you want to get, hey, you want to get the FBI on the phone and tell them what you heard? I'll call that lady right now. I'll call that lady right now and tell them you have the key piece of evidence. Amber, I'll call that Amber lady. And tell her you have the key piece of evidence that they're missing. What? Call her on that three-way then. Call her on three-way? Alright, I, let me, I gotta go to my message and look up the number. Well, you can, you can read the number to me. Hold on. What? What did she say when you called her? She said that you hadn't... That... I don't know, okay? The late, no, I am telling you. She reached out to me and said, I'm with the FBI. How can I help you? That's what she said. 
we're to the point now where the FBI is involved, so if somebody's saying they can help me, then they can help me, and that's what I want. So I reached back out to her. You didn't message her. You lied to me. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna add her in the call right now. You ready? And you better tell her what you goddamn heard, Tisha, about that boy bleeding to death. All right, I'm in the call. Hold on, right now. Seven, one, nine, two, four, zero, two, five. One six. All right, three ways starting. Don't go nowhere. This is Amber. Amber, hey, this is Al again. Um, I got Tisha on the other line. Can I merge you in? Tisha, are you there? Tisha, are you there? Tisha. Amber, are you there? I'm here. This is Amber. Okay. Amber, T Tisha, tell Amber whatever it is you got to say about what you heard when Gannon was bleeding to death. Because that's what you've been telling me. I, I did tell you, because Quincy was beating him up and hurting him. Can you hear me? Yeah, you said Quincy was beating, up, beating him up and hurting him? Yes. And uh -huh. I was just telling, I've been telling everybody this for days. Mm-hmm. So maybe, uh, you know, because obviously I am FBI and not uh, El Paso County, uh, I'd like for you to kind of go through this story with me. I know it's awkward. I know it's weird. I know it's hard to talk to strangers, telling strangers things like this. But, um, I mean, it, every detail helps us. That's why we try to ask you as many questions as we possibly can. So but I'm sorry that you're going to have to go through it. Many times talk to different people and no one has ever tried to help me. So right. I haven't tried to not tell you anything in the FBI mm -hmm. because there were three people already called. Okay. Well, and I'm sorry that, you know, here I am. I'm another person. I'm talking to you. I, I, and I'm making you relive, live something again. And I, I know it's a very personal situation, but I do want to, I want to get as much information as I can from you because every detail does matter and it counts. So, I mean, it, I'd like you. Let me just, let me just call you back. Is that, can I call you back? I don't have a phone. So I'm going to walk and get someone's phone. Because I would like credit to offer one thing so that if it's going to be a long conversation. Okay. okay well, is it that thing you're going to text that 719 number that he gave me? Well, the, the 719 240 2516 that you guys just called me on is a cell phone. So, and I didn't receive any text messages. Okay. Because so, I'm on this like uh, text app because they took my phone. Just give me a minute. I'm going to walk and grab another phone. I'll call you right back, okay? Okay. Are we, we going to do a three-way again or what? Hello? Tisha. Okay, she hung up. That's a good time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our uh, morning recess. If I can have everyone uh, return at uh, 1045, we should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss case among yourselves. Don't discuss case with anyone else. Um, with that, we'll see you back at 1045. All rise for the jury, please. <laughs> Thinking may all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Uh, Mr. Allen, I just want a housekeeping matter. Yep. Um, yesterday, you referenced four phone calls, uh, Exhibit 51, 52, which was just played. Right. Um, and 53, I thought you also referenced another one. Yeah, that one's not admitted yet. Okay. Because it's only a call between the defendant and uh, Special Agent Cronin. Okay. That, that's what I wanted to check. On. Yep. Okay. And that is Exhibit 333, Judge. And as far as timing, these uh, last two phone calls are just short of 30 minutes each. 
Um, so some questions in between them and then those two recordings. So just to give you an idea on time. Okay. Um, when we come back, I take it then that you will have Agent Cronin back on the stand for a few minutes to, are you going to play 333 next? Or I don't know what the timing is. Yeah, 333 is actually next. So I need to get her back on the stand, ask her some questions as it relates to that last call, then do a foundation for 333 and, and then okay. play it. All right. And that should, let's see. Probably put us mostly towards the noon hour. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Quarter be in recess then. All rise.
Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury's not present in the courtroom. Is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? They are. All right. Uh, defense, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. And Agent Cronin, I just remind you that you're still under oath. Yes, sir. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. you. May all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stock. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Uh, when we took our break, we were in the midst of the testimony of uh, Agent Cronin. That's where we will resume. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Arm. Um, as it relates to uh, that last call that we just heard, um, is it fairly consistent through all the different phone calls? Um, seems like she's more focused on herself than on trying to help find Gannon. Yes. Was it consistent that um, there would sometimes be nuggets of truth that she would give wrapped in things that were untrue or distracting points? Yes, it seemed that at times when she'd be specifically talking about Gannon, she may... <clears throat> tell you something to explain away evidence that we that was advertised that we've found or maybe hadn't been publicized that we had found so when you say hadn't been publicized so um pieces of evidence that only somebody involved would know about yes like the talking about the blood in gannon's room okay that was never put out in any social media or um, in the media at all Correct. The blood on the wall or the blood on the floor. Okay. <clears throat> and yet, um, was she then exhibiting some pretty strong knowledge of that blood being in existence in these phone calls? Yes. She was providing explanations for why the blood might be there. Okay. Was that, cons was that similar to um, the board that was found up on the S-curve in Southern Douglas County? Correct. Talking about the board... It was in the news media that there that we were searching in that area, and that's when the discussion of the Craigslist looking for a bicycle story was came about. So another way of trying to explain away why she would be in that area and explain why maybe GPS is showing her there. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> I noticed in that phone call, uh, and want to have you comment on it, that. In, in the portion of the phone call, the vast majority of it's just her now, correct? Yes. And then at the end, it sounds like there's a three-way call where you're actually uh, brought into the call? Yes. When they were talking about bringing me into the call, I stepped out of the room so that way I could take the call. Um, seems like demeanor changed um, quite a bit. She's getting very confrontational with Al uh, throughout that phone call. And then when you get on, very calm. What was your take on that? 
Uh, and Your Honor, I'm a judge to speculation. No. no. I understood the question you were asking the witness what her understanding of it was. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Overruled. Uh, the significant pause in her speaking when they hooked up the three-way call gave me the impression she might have been reluctant to speak with me. Okay. <clears throat> Do you um, ever notice in your experience as a um, special agent with the FBI that uh, when you're having interactions with people, when they find out you're an FBI agent, that they treat you differently? Yes. Is that sort of what happened there? Yes. I put on the desk <clears throat> in front of you People's Exhibit 333. Do you recognize that? I do. What is 333? It's a recor recorded phone call that I had with the defendant. Uh, have you had a chance to listen to the contents of that disc? Yes. Is it a fair and accurate recording of that phone call? Yes. Um, and did that phone call occur on February 15th, 2020 at one seventeen p.m.? Yes. And at this time, I'd move for admission of People's Exhibit 333. Uh, defense? No objection, Your Honor. Exhibit 333 will be admitted. Go ahead. And permission to publish, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> who's going to play it? Yes. Okay. And this one is the 27 minutes and 44 seconds. Go ahead. And judge, just before we start playing it, <clears throat> you can step down. Uh, as far as volume, uh, I'm wondering if you want to inquire with the jury, is it too loud or too, I doubt it's too quiet, but I want to make sure that it's not too loud. Um, that's probably a good question to ask because uh, the speaker is right next to me and there are parts of it that are really loud uh, for me, but, oh, all right. You guys can hear it from over there. I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, is it loud enough? Let me ask. Is it too loud for anyone? No. Yeah, um, yes. It's a, uh, maybe we can turn it down a little bit. Or maybe I can turn it down a little bit. Okay, give it a shot. This is Amber. Hello? Hi, I'm calling you back. I had to, I had to get someone's call. Sure. All right, Tito. Well, um, like I said, I know that this is an awkward thing for you to have to keep going through this over and over again. But um, I would like you just to kind of start me at the beginning of this whole thing and try to walk me through it as to what happened. So, oh, I mean, I imagine it's supposed to start from Monday because I've already went through the whole everything else 15 times. And, and Monday is when, you know, the last thing. So, is that where you want me to start from? Yeah, sure. Start there. I mean, honestly, like I said, you know, we're, we're in the detail business. So, it's always every little detail you can think of, it may be a help. Okay. So on Monday, we were going to go get a bike. Our agenda was to get a bike. Okay. And, they, and I'm going to be one of these annoying people that I'm going to, you know, try to get as much detail from you as possible. Because like I said, so Monday, you're going to go get a bike. Who are, are, is this, did you get the bike from somebody? Were you talking to somebody? Where were you going to get the bike? You know, details about stuff like that. I was going to get to that. <laughs> okay, sorry. I was just going to tell you our. I was just going to tell you our agenda before we left all that off. Okay. The agenda was to get a bike that day. We were going to trade in some sport equipment and then uh, just you know go shopping a few times, a few places here and there, and then come back home. Mm -hmm. But then we set up the day that I was going to leave Gannon at home because he stays at home sometimes by himself or whatever. Uh, like if we're at work. And yada yada yada, but he wasn't feeling well because he had already like hurt his foot. He had some burns from the carpet from the fire that he accidentally set, and so I didn't feel comfortable leaving him by himself. Mm -hmm. Typically, he does, but I didn't feel comfortable because I didn't want to get so sad about him being home, you know, by himself. But BD is someone, yada yada yada. Sure. So I told him, I said, "Hey, you have to ride with me." I decided to stay home with him that day because Albert was out of town. And I said, you have to ride with me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay, can I take my switch? He wasn't feeling that well. 
um, as far as, like, he was not complaining with any kind of pain or, like, sickness or anything like that. He just kind of felt, like, you know, down just because he had, he had stayed up the prior night on Sunday, um, probably to about 3 or 4 a.m. because he has a lot of problems using the bathroom when he, like, takes his medicine and it, then don't take it and he takes five in. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes his stomach could get, like, really backed up right. and it had already gotten that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so we stayed up a lot that night, um, after I had put the fire out okay. and he was in now the bathroom. So he's kind of tired, exhausted, a little bit, whatever. Um, but I was like, Hey, you want to just ride with me? So we did, but I think it was about like maybe 10 o'clock ish or so when I set the alarm, uh, to leave. So I think we went to Dunkin' Donuts first. We went somewhere to get coffee. I'm not real sure. We got gas because there was no gas in the truck. I don't remember exactly where I got gas because they looked it up on my credit card, but I wanted the Exxon, but I don't remember exactly. Um, so then we got gas, you know. Then we just went on our little way, and we went to um, Petco, which was on Nevada. Um, I think it was, I don't know the exit. I'm not real familiar to give you that. And is it easier for you to just kind of run through the whole story and then I can go back for the details or is it easier for if, you know, in trying to think about it, if you can give me the details on the way? Because obviously uh, we want to get, we want to hit all of these points. Like you said, you went to Dunkin' Donuts, so I'd want to know where that was to get gas, where you stopped there. I mean, yeah, I can, I mean, I don't, I don't have access to give you like exactly. Because, no, like, and you don't have to give me the exact address because obviously I can look that up. Like the Dunkin' Donuts, right. which one was it? Do you know what the street was? Fountain. That you said? It, was in, it was in Fountain, like the one near the house. Okay, so Fountain near the house is the Dunkin' Donuts. And uh, what street right. was that on? Or do you know? I think it's like Mesa Ridge. Mesa Ridge? Or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So you guys get up. I want to say that. I want to say that the gas store was right across the street, too. It was one of the gas stores that was in the area right there. I feel like it was the one across from Dunkin'. Okay. So the Dunkin' Donuts near your house on Mesa Ridge, then the Costco across the street. Then you guys hit Petco. No, no, not, not, I didn't say a Costco. I said the gas Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I said, I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> my bad. That's okay. Yeah. Um, and then we went to Petco. And uh, I went in Petco. He was going to go inside Petco with me, but he was like, can I stay in the car and play the Switch? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. And so I go in Petco, and when I was getting out the car, I was like, well, I probably should make him go in. But then I was like, mm -hmm. he probably don't want to shot with girls because he never, like, shot me with me. So I was like, yeah, okay, he'll be fine. Yeah. I don't ever worry about him in the car or anything, but because he wasn't feeling that well, I did yeah. going to go, like, look and check and make sure, like, he wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, looking for me or wanting to go to the bathroom, like, getting out or whatever. He sure. didn't have to but at the same time, you know, he's going to go somewhere and yeah. I might say I'm in one store and go to the next store to talk. Okay. So did he go in with you at, like, at Dunkin' Donuts, too, then? <laughs> We went through the drive through at Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. All right, so he stayed in the car at, there at Petco. Right. Okay. So then we had planned on going to look at some of these bikes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I have the information on my phone, so I don't know, like, they have my phone, so it's okay. in there. So but you said you were going to go look at these bikes. Was that, it, were you going to a store? Were you going to meet, you know, a specific no. person? Or were you going to look at the bikes? Right. There was, that's how I looked up a bunch of things online. So I had the, the people's information where they said they had emailed back and said just um, when you get close. You can come by and look at it. Okay. So what all, so where all did you search online? Were you looking at, again, was it like stores or you're looking at, was it Craigslist or what was it? Yeah, it was local Craigslist in Colorado Springs. Okay. I just Google Craigslist or whatever. Okay. So you were looking up for Craigslist. Did you find, you know, was it a lot of them, just a couple of them? 
I, I, I didn't, I didn't never make, I didn't go to do it yet. That's why I hadn't got to that part to tell you that part. Okay. So you're, you're looking up a bunch of places on Craigslist as to where you might do it. And then did you arrange to meet somebody? No. Okay. So uh, what happened next? You're, you looked on Craigslist? I didn't look on Craigslist that day. I had already looked prior. I was saying that the conversation back and forth was whenever you're in route close, you just call and someone could look at it. That's all. Okay. Well, and... Um, I want you to mistake it. Okay. No, I got gotcha. you. So you had already arranged with somebody to go, go meet them. Who did you arrange to meet? How were you in contact with them? I said that prior I had looked online on Craigslist to find some different bikes. On email, when you reply to Craigslist, you know how you have like yeah. emails? Okay. I had gotten their information. Okay. In my phone, I had message and they said when you get close, if you plan on coming up, as an up as a north okay. message whenever you wanted to come by. Okay, so you were emailing with them back and forth, and they tell you to call them when you get close, so they gave you your, their telephone number. But I never told them for certain what day I was coming. I just had it all, hey, we're going to go on Monday to me and Gannon. There was no specific person that I was like, this is not even relevant to anything. I well, just wanted to let you know that was on our agenda. Okay, well, and, and that's, it's just we're trying to re recreate every moment that we can because you never know what's important so so you were going to make this plan to go talk to somebody at craigslist you were going to you were emailing with them you're going to call if you get close what happens next so then we were going to run out of time because we had already been in town for a little bit and we had to make sure we were heading back to get lena okay because lena would get off the bus so i end up not um not meeting with anybody. I just thought I would go another day. So that's why I said it wasn't really relevant. Sure. Really not what I'm doing. Okay. Well, and, um, and the last thing you had told me was you were at Petco. So were you just like hanging out in the parking lot doing that? Or did you drive somewhere? Or no, what? I thought. I bought things in Petco. Well, yeah, yeah. It's just, as you were saying, you were kind of out and about. So I didn't know if you made another stop or what was going on there. No, I went to went to Petco twice. So by the time I went to Dunkin' Donuts, the store, Petco twice, and I don't even remember if I went in another shopping store. It's yeah. already been how many days. Well, what did you go to Petco twice for? I mean, did you like go to Petco and then have to head somewhere else and then come back? I mean, I always do that. Like, yeah. I go somewhere and I'm indecisive and I go back and I just enough. Sure, I get that. But um, so after you leave Petco, where'd you head there? Ma'am, I don't know exactly. I just was going to different. I mean, I don't even know if I even anything else. I feel like I went to the TJ Maxx, but I don't remember how to tell you where the TJ Maxx was at. Okay. Well, I mean, was it still in Colorado Springs? It's on the north side, or yeah. okay, I don't know. So I mean, there's only one. There's only stuff on the north side of us, so I, mean, I don't know. Okay. All right, so you you were at Petco. You went probably to somewhere else, maybe maybe TJ Maxx, and then back to Petco again? Yeah. Okay. And then you said you were you guys were, it was getting to the time. You're probably going to have to pick up Lena. Yeah, we were going to have to go home to get Lena. Uh, so we, start, we drove home. I remember I went inside the house. I get out. Um, I get in, walk inside the house. You know, walk inside the house. I was going to work out. So I had put, like, my headphones on. I was going to work out until Lena got there. I don't remember, like, if we ate or something in between there. Not really sure. Mm -hmm. what we did between there. Yeah. But it's yeah, the three of you there at the house? Or? No, Lena hadn't got, hadn't got there. Okay, she hadn't got home yet. Okay. Um, yeah, no. Um, Gannon went to his room. Um, he, 
was doing stuff and playing or whatever because he was having to have a sleepover, so he kept, you know, moving his room around or whatever because he's always going to have sleepovers. Mm-hmm. And then I had my ear, my headphones, like, they kind of, like, smashed your head a little bit. So I pulled them back a little bit and was, like, listening and doing my thing or whatever. And then I heard something really loud. It sounded like something fell over. But also, you have to remember, you know, it's upstairs, downstairs. Sometimes if you can, like, just walk loud, it'll echo and sound like it was so loud, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I the, one of the dogs started barking, so of course I walked up and had his door locked, and I knock on it. I'm like, "What you doing?" And I need to tell you everything word for word we said. Or, um, well, I'm just uh, trying to get whatever happened. So, I mean, if what was he saying to you? You guys are just trying to. Nothing. I have two boys too, so I totally get that. There, there's the doors locked. <laughs> yeah. So, so. I, he he was saying he was trying to keep Lane out, and I was like, Lane ain't even here yet. Like, yeah. he had this thing going where he's been trying to build this like memory box because I always told him I kept a memory box for my daughter uh-huh. from like elementary, and then I also had one for my you know growing up, and I gave it to my daughter as a box. So he's been doing everything with these boxes where I mean he even put pieces of paper and trash in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, say you got the Nintendo thing that's like the cardboard since you got boys, you know, like the cardboard box that it come in. Yep. He would put it in he would put it in. Huh? So he was like he was being all secretive about, you know, like the and I was just like, You're silly, I'm laughing or whatever. Um and then I come back upstairs and when I come back upstairs, so like we had I had the garage open uh, at that time, I think I might have closed it. I'm not really sure. Uh, at point in time, I went back upstairs again, and then I heard another loud noise. And I was like, oh, my God, Gannon, what is he doing again? Mm-hmm. You know, and Lena hadn't gotten there quite yet. Huh? And then when I go down, um, I realized that someone was in our house. Okay. And so they asked me, you know, what the person was so, um, at first, all I remembered, you know, was the what kind of what he looked like or whatever. So I'll get back to that later. So I'm just going to tell you that I thought I remembered at first. Um, when I initially called the police, I thought Gannon was hiding. Okay. Well, and we we've kind of skipped a lot right there. So. You th- heard somebody, or you found out somebody's in your house. Were you downstairs? Were you upstairs? I'm sorry. I, I think you're cutting out. I'm sorry. I might have said it and it was going out. It's just hard. I'm trying to get off the Wi Fi or whatever. Sure. So, yeah, so, it, um, the, so you were in your story and you basically had said the last thing I was hearing was this, you know, you're sitting there, you heard a, lo- lo- a loud noise downstairs, and then you realized somebody was in the house. So I realized somebody was in the house. How did okay. you realize somebody was in the house? Because it, it's like, if you're upstairs, I mean, you know that Gannon was downstairs. Did you go down there and I see him? Told you I, but I just... I just told you that. I said I went down there. And okay. Did Wait, you not hear me say that? No, I'm sorry. It's probably cutting out. So you went downstairs, and what did you see? Well, I went downstairs immediately, and I saw that this guy was standing at the storage room, which is in between Gannon's room and our downstairs basement. Okay. And as you're looking at this guy, what does he look like? He was dark skinned. I like Hispanic, maybe mixed. You know, I'm I'm not real sure. Like as far as to give you a nationality, more more darker skin. Okay, Texan, about five five seven, and about maybe about a hundred and eight pounds. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Did you say a hundred? You know, in my mind, I didn't. In my mind, I didn't just go over those. Yeah. You know, stats. Originally, I got. There, and then I just kind of yeah. Oh, I'm sure it's, it's terrifying. I mean, I can imagine it would be terrifying to see somebody in your house. So, um, 
So you had said he was about 5'7", 180 or 108? <laughs> Am I, did I mishear you? No, no, no. 100, 180. Okay, about 180. Yeah, I, say 100, I say 180 because my husband is like 200. Sure. Like smaller than him, so okay. that's why I would say 180. Okay, and um, do you remember anything else about him, like his hair color, what he was wearing? Yeah, he was uh, very, like, a like, close-cut beard. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a tattoo on his arm. I don't remember what it was. I just vaguely remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, what was he wearing? Um, I don't really remember. I've had so many, like, bad dreams okay. that I've pictured so many different things. Now, sure. I don't remember. Okay, and as you're looking at him, I mean, could you, t which arm was his tattoo on? I don't, I don't remember. Okay. I mean, was he facing you? Was he facing away from you? Right. So, he was coming out of our storage room, which I assume, I don't want to make any speculation, because that's where he was hiding at. Um, and now, so let me tell you what was weird about this so that you, before I finish, the, when I got there, the alarm was set the alarm away when I got there, uh -huh. I mean, when I left, but it was on arm stay, but it didn't, don't know me at the moment what arm stay meant that someone, there's no, uh, interior motion sensor. sensors. I know, I know what that means. I got gotcha. you. Like, it didn't dawn on me that I didn't have to put the alarm in when I walked in. So none of this runs through my mind that, you know, until in the moment, all this is running through my mind, like, this is why. Because I was thinking, you know, dogs, whatever. This is why. All this stuff happened in my mind. This is why the alarm didn't put the alarm away. Whatever. Yeah. So do you think so, that somebody reset your alarm? Is that what you're getting at? Do what now? I'm sorry. Were you, so were you thinking no, that somebody reset your alarm? Because you said your alarm's weird that it was a stay instead of away. No, you don't reset it. If you have, the way that ours was set up because of how that door didn't have a sensor on it. Like, say, for example, if I set it on arm away mm -hmm. and I left for the day, yeah. and the dog, I say one of them got out of their crate and moved, it would go to arm stay first. Okay. Because somebody was like, there was already motion in there. Okay. So when you when you left for the day, did you set it as stay or away? When you and Gannon left at ten. Sure, I said it. I'm pretty sure I said it as arm away because this is something I had to like show later on. So mm -hmm. were, we were talking about that was just I'm not a positive if that's why. I'm just saying this was something later on that when we went through everything that was what we noticed that it went to arm stay. Okay. Um. Anyway, so. At this point in time, you know, I'm just, like, thinking he's going to, like, just completely rob us because he had one of our guns. So, at this point in time, I knew he had already been in our house somewhere, somehow, sometime, because in order for him to have obtained a handgun, he would have had to already, you know, be in the house. Okay. Did you guys normally lock your weapons up? No. Okay. Where do you normally store them? So they're all over the house. So, prior to this happening, my husband and I went on a cruise. Mm -hmm. And so, when we went on the cruise, we had hired a lady. And my daughter wouldn't have to stay at home with them. But we hired a lady to come stay as well mm -hmm. on Rover.com. Yep. And she just kind of stayed in the hopper. So, when she came, I could pull the handguns downstairs. I'm like, Albert, we were talking about making sure we weren't just leaving them around the house, you know, even though she had been like checked the rover and stuff like that. We don't want to sleep on. Sure. So I had took two of the handguns downstairs. So that was the only reason mm -hmm. the two, two of the guns would have been downstairs because um, we had just got back from our cruise and we had hid them down there in the storage room. Okay. So he came out of the storage room with one of the weapons that you had previously stored in there is what you're saying? Yeah, when I say hid, they weren't, like, put away somewhere. They were just in the storage room. Like, they were inside. Okay. And which weapon was it that he had had with him? Uh, one of the black ones. Okay. Like, was it a handgun, a long gun? Yeah, a handgun. The, long, the big guns were upstairs. Okay. So... I, 
first I was in shock thinking, whatever you want, and, and I'm not going to go through screaming what I said. I'm just going to tell you because you won't understand me if I get, like, you know. Of I've course. already done the phone, like, four different times telling people, so if I can't go through screaming and, and all that again. Yeah, know? and obviously you don't have to scream at me. I, I understand. Yeah, no, I, I just don't want you, like, to think I, you know, word for word verbatim to tell you what I said and this and that, you know. Um, so I immediately was, Gannon was in the room, like, about maybe, I don't know, maybe two feet from his door or whatever, and just yada, 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 doing his thing, whatever. Um, I'm sorry, he was, Gannon was in his room or Gannon was outside of his room, so he saw this guy out there, too? No, 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 Gannon was still in his room. Like, okay. I was just giving you a distance of how far, because Gannon's always open at this point. Okay, was Yes, okay, so you said his door is open, but you could see Gannon in his room? Yeah, yeah and I could see Gannon in his room. Mm -hmm. So, he, I don't remember exactly what the guy was saying to me. I just remember I was, like, yelling, and Gannon was yelling, and Gannon saw that I was, like, freaked out and scared, and I told him he could have whatever he wanted, all this. So, it went about one hour of us just sitting there, me and Gannon sitting in his room as this guy was asking questions. He was asking, do we own this? Do we own that? All I remember was about weapons and mm -hmm. do we know anything about these people? He said somebody named Terrence and I don't even know. I didn't know, have no clue who he was talking about, what he was talking about. My assumption was he had the wrong people that he was looking for because we haven't even lived there that long and I don't mm -hmm. even know these people. So, what what so, kind of possessions was he asking you about if you had? I mean, was he asking you about your possessions or somebody else's or what? Yes, he was asking, was there a safe? Like, like your typical theft, you know, like, theft, things that a theft would want. Did uh -huh. you have a safe? Was there any money in the house? And I, I swear to you, we don't keep any, like, I swear to God, we don't keep any money in the house. We uh -huh. barely keep our cards on, you know. Oh, oh crap, this is at 2%. Hold on one second. Need your car charger? Yeah, it says that's super safe. One second, I'm going to get the car charger. Sure. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you. Do I need to turn it on? Here. Thank you. Please. Remind you, ma'am, that you're still under oath, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> you, were you aware of what happened that with the way that phone call just ended abruptly, uh, where she's not talking any longer? Uh, yes, yeah, she had called back to Mr. Stouch again. So there's another call after that, right? Yes. Okay. So at the beginning of this call, um, that's where that discussion comes in about getting a bike, and this would be up in that um, southern Douglas County, northern El Paso County area? Correct. The where, the where that bloody board uh, was found? Correct. And you mentioned earlier, but is this uh, what you described as her explaining away why she would be in that area? Correct. Okay. Were you aware during the course of the investigation that her movements around town and essentially across the country were being would be tracked using different methods yes um, what methods were used to do that do you know uh there was the telematics on the vehicle and then there was also a gps placed on a rental vehicle that she had had um and we heard about that from other folks earlier in the trial 
Uh, what about phone records? Do those also give that information? Yes. Okay. You used a word that we haven't heard yet in this trial. Um, can you just tell us, just generally speaking, what telematics is? Not a not an expert description, just a general description. Basically, it's tracking your vehicle's movement, sort of GPS on your vehicle. Do new vehicles come with that sort of built into the software these days? Yes. Okay. Uh, in this particular phone call, we get a description of an intruder being in the house when she's describing going downstairs and there's some guy standing by um, the storage room. You yes, that? that's going back to her second story, which was the intruder in the house. Okay. How many different stories have we now heard um, in this investigation? Um, there were multiple. I couldn't probably give you a number because some were major differences, some were minor differences. This intruder um, version of the story, uh, was there any evidence to, su to support that some stranger had broken into the house and uh, attacked her? No. Was there any evidence to support that some stranger had broken into the house and kidnapped Gannon? No. Um, I want to next, Your Honor, um, we can have uh, Special Agent Cronin step down and play that last phone call. It would be People's Exhibit number 53, phone call of February 15, 2020 at one forty nine p.m., so roughly 30 minutes after that last call started. All right, Agent Cronin, you can step down. Thank you, ma'am. And this one's 29 minutes and 34 seconds. All right, go ahead. Hello. Hey. What is it? I'm freaking beat, teacher. What? I'm beat. What? What do you want? Uh, I'm just beat. I'm just telling you I'm tired. Go ahead. Whatever. Why are you tired? Because this is freaking stressful. My son's out there missing, and I don't know what the hell's going on. We have people who are looking for the guy now. Okay, the Quincy Brown guy. Why do you keep saying the Quincy Brown guy? Like it's a joke. I'm not, no, I'm just, uh, what did the FBI, what did the freaking FBI say? Are they looking for him now? Well, I gave her my information. Okay. I also got a call at the same time, which the attorney said he had just talked to El Paso, and he was like, you do not need to say another word to them, so you need to hang the phone up, because I've already clearly gave them this information, and at this point in time, he was like, if, we, if they're not reaching out to help you, then they're doing nothing to help the investigation. He said that he's getting back on the phone with El Paso, and El Paso is supposed to be doing the job because they're the lead agency, even though the FBI is taking over. Uh, I mean, FBI was working, they're not the lead agency. So he said to communicate with El Paso, and that's exactly what he did. So so the you, the lawyer is communicating with El Paso? Right. Okay, all right. I'm trying to keep it all straight. But you did talk to the lady? That's what you've been doing yes, the whole time? Okay. Okay, you talked to her? Right. I talked to her, and then the attorney was emailing me back and forth because the lady, this investigative reporter, went back out there to his house, and he told me, do not say another word. Okay. Because El Paso is a lead agency, and they could potentially be messing up the investigation. And at the same time, as much as, you know, he's going to be wanting to find in, and he's also making sure that no one else is interfering, because he said, if I'm, if I'm a head person, that's who needs to be doing it. He's already sent the information to them. Okay. He also already forwarded the polls and went out there to his house and everything. Nicole? That's the investigative reporter that we hired. Nicole. Her name's Nicole. Okay. You hired, so you hired an investigator for that? Hired investigative reporter. This is what whoever the attorney is in contact with. Investigative reporter, yes. 
I don't know if you hire them. I don't know if you pay them. I don't know what you do. I just know you should send that to report. Okay. Why do you keep talking to me like that? Like, okay. Like, like, I'm, like I'm going to travel with you. I'm just trying to listen to what you're saying. So they went to find this Quincy Brown. Did they find him? I don't know what they did. El Paso is in charge. They should be communicating with you, the father. There, I haven't heard anything from these people. Have you talked to El Paso okay. too, or just Amber? I I was instructed by the attorney that everything had been sent to El Paso, okay. who is the least we could see, and I did exactly what I said I was going to do. Okay. And I was on the phone with her, and he said, do not say another word, because I made for work, and he was on the other line when I called her, which is why I told her I'd call her back. Okay. All right. Um, did... So do not say another word. Okay. No reason. So you should be answering any questions that are not coming directly from El Paso. Okay, have you talked to anybody? But you said they you forwarded the information, but have you talked to anybody at the El Paso? Would I talk to if I have an attorney? Do you think I talk to them or my attorney talk? I, okay, fine. I, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to piece it all together here. You're talking to this lady. You're talking to that lady. You're talking to Bethel. You're talking to Kate. You're talking to Amber. It's the investigative order is for me. Like they are on my side. Okay. The attorney obviously is on my side. Okay. So that too, the information will go through. Okay, what, so... We reported it. Okay, now that you got people on your side, what can I do for you? What do you need me to do to help you get this information and, or, or whatever? To help me get what information? I'm going to that. Well, I I'm, I told you. Okay. Okay, I mean, what can I do to help you? What, can, what do you need me to do? Just in general, nothing specific. What do you need? You tell me. I need you to be with your family so that when Gannon comes home, we can all be together and stop putting me on a trial. That's what you can do for me in general. You can show me some love. You can show me everything that I'm showing you. I told you love. I, to I told you, hey, I missed you. I love you. Oh, my God. I want to be there to hold you. I want to hug you. I want to do all these things to you. That's what you can do in general. Is to treat me that same way back because I have done that to you. I haven't downed you, talked crap to you. Okay. I, I defended myself just like I told you. You know good or well. I. All right, so. I went through, I understand the pain. Right. I don't know what you feel at no time. But I tried to be here for you, and that's what I want to continue to do is be here for you. Okay, well. And also, let the attorney know that I would, because you have, you have to hire a private person. They said that police don't even do that because it's not even admissible. You can hire a private person to, to administer a lie detector test if I wanted to get those results to you. Okay. Um. So you, your attorney told you not to answer any more questions, but does that mean me? Because, I, I mean, what if I still have questions and we can just work through those like we've been working through? Does that include me? That no, you told me if I called the lady and if I reported everything, you told me that you you said I will have a meeting with you. And you, your exact words were that, that we would go from there okay. and we would start trying to find Janet. That's okay. exactly what you said to me. Okay. So fine. We will, we will move okay. We will move forward. Okay. And be looking for Gannon. That's what you told me. Okay. So, so what about the meeting? Okay. So here I am about the whole meeting. Okay. So you're in this with me, and I'm in this with you, or not? That's where I'm at with the meeting because I have done nothing wrong. I am not a criminal. I'm not a monster. I'm not someone that needs to be. Okay. All right. Well, all, all that being said, when when can we meet and where can we meet? The meeting will be 
meeting where we are staying at together to protect each other. Okay, I didn't say what the meeting was about. I said when and where, Tisha. The meeting. Okay, where are you staying? Why come we can't come stay with you? If you have a place to stay that you've already paid for, why are we sitting here having to be like, okay, well, let's stay at this person's house, let's go here, let's go to this hotel, why? Okay, all right, fair enough. Where are you at? I just need the honesty answer. I don't need any more. Bullshit, you talked about honesty and what you wanted from me, okay? So my honesty is for me. Okay. Right for me. All right. All right. Why come? We can't get our clothes. I know we can't bring them off because the rest are in storage, okay? Well, why can't we can't get together? We are close. We decide where our family is staying, okay? And then we get on the mission, whether we got to get in the car, whether we need to be out doing it ourselves, finding, whatever. That's the plan I expect to hear from my husband. Not just, hey, like I'm some side piece that you're going to meet. That's not who I am. No, I didn't say side piece and meet. I said meet up to talk about the truth. And actually, I mean, I told you initially, no. Please listen. Please listen. I'm not. I'm not putting you down. I'm not being mean to you. Okay. Initially, we talked about what the standard was, and you know how I am about you know my standards. The standard is the truth and a meeting. Okay. You in in. No, I, I'm not. Okay, that's why I said. What about the meeting? That's why I started this conversation. Let's talk about the meeting. But then there's a the truth. You just said the meeting to get the truth. No, I know. No, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm trying to clarify for you, okay? There's another there's a, another part of the truth that you haven't told me, like where you are. You're not in the north end of Colorado Springs, okay? We've established that. Okay, where are you? That's some truth that you okay. can let me know. This is, I will tell you. But if this gets out, I swear, it's because you told it. Okay. Told you where we at or where we were at. Okay. Fair enough. And, and I'll stand by that. Okay, fair enough. If if somebody finds out where you are, then you can blame me all day long and tell your lawyer that I'm some kind of criminal, okay? I'm not going to tell him that you're a criminal. I'm just, te I'm just saying, okay? I stayed in the Senate Stay America on the North End. Okay. Okay. We switched from one hotel. What did you say? I said, okay, okay. We switched from one hotel to the next hotel. Then at that point in time, I had no more money. Nothing. Okay. Nothing at all. I had people reach out to me on Instagram, and they were like, hey, why don't you come here? Why don't you come here? I don't have a car. I don't have anything. Why do you think people are missing you want to know where we're at? Because nobody fucking knows. There's no one near this. So, Michelle, she reached out to me on Facebook. She's a girl that I always talk about when we go up to Monument. And I would always pass by right up the street. I'd say, hey, my friend Michelle says that she sells cleaning products. Yeah, right. Remember. Okay. Michelle has a big ass house out here in Monument. And she has a building. That is a building. It's like an apartment. In her garage. And she let us come here two nights ago. Okay. That's why you're a dog. Because she has dogs and we have dogs. I can't stay here forever. I can't stay here long. So we can only stay here just basically for the time being because I've been trying to work this out with my husband. And you think like I, I mean, where do you think I got money at to like stay all these places? Like you act like I'm just like you know just living at large, staying in all these. Oh man, I'm okay. Hampton is Hilton, I mean. All right, listen. You haven't had anywhere? Hey, listen, I'll I'll get in my rental car and I'll come to Michelle's house and get you. Just send me an address. And where are you taking me? Because I know you. You'll try to play me. And you'll try to be like, well, you know, whatever. So am I coming to stay with you? Or are you coming to Michelle's house to stay with me? And I need the truth. My intent would probably be just to meet. I don't know if staying together is the right answer now because of all the unknowns, okay? Okay, well, if you don't want to stay with me, then that tells me that that's not in the... You, you don't want to be that picture perfect that you said back in December. Nope. That's not what no, you. don't tell me what I want. I am. Give, give, me, the, give me the damn real truth why you don't want me and Harley with you. Because I want my son. Because I want my son. 
because I want my son. The bottom line. And until we get him, you cannot do this. Why would you punish me? Why? Why would? Why is it an if? I, I don't want to do this. I want to do this. You t you did. You wouldn't tell me what you heard. You wouldn't tell me the whole truth for days and days for three weeks now. I'm willing to meet you to stick out the olive branch as a as an effort for peace. Okay. Okay, because, yes, peace, because you haven't given me the truth until today. You've gotten closer to the truth, okay? Or, or maybe you gave me the whole truth today. I don't know. We'll take it at that. But I'm offering you a moment of peace, a time to meet, a time to talk. We can hug or whatever, okay? But I don't want to stay together right now because then it's going to be constantly on my mind. It's going to be a fight, at least this way, we can meet and talk, and then we get time to cool down, think about it. That's what I've been doing every day, trying to t talk to you, and then cool down, and then answer you on the email if I can, if I feel like it, and then give it another shot the next day. That's exactly the same model I'm trying to teach you, I'm not teach you, try to do right now. Okay? So That's it. It doesn't bother you that, hey, you know, I should be providing somewhere for my wife, daughter, and my other daughter, and my son to live. While we're going through this. You're right. But my, we don't know where. We, it does. It does. It, there ain't no sugar coated. It does bother me that my family got ripped apart when my son was taken away. Okay? Yes, it absolutely bothers me. So if you know, okay, that this dude has gained it, still it. Why are you blaming me? Why are you? Why would I didn't blame you. Lay down beside your wife. Don't listen. Because the only reason, no, the only thing I blame you for, okay, the only proof I have right now to blame you for anything is you called in a runaway when you knew he wasn't a runaway. That's it. Okay, we can move past that. You were scared. You freaked out. What? I, I don't. I'm not putting words in your mouth. That's it. Oh. Right. But you called it. You called in a runaway. Fine. I understand. You were scared and freaking out. Okay? I'm just saying. You didn't hurt anybody. Right. And I didn't want to get lied to. Okay? But I did. So that's something we got to work through. And and that's what I'm saying. We meet. We talk. We, we hang out. We grab a bite to eat. I don't know. Something stupid. And then we take a breath. Okay? Just like we've done the past couple of days. We're working our way up to a meeting now. Like we've been talking, I didn't. We didn't talk for two weeks. Okay, it's baby steps here. You got to, you got to understand that my son is missing, and I've got to get through this little by little until he comes home. And that story, okay, the runaway story. The, the only thing that I know to blame you for right now, the only blame I point in your direction, okay, that caused a gap between us. And I've said that numerous times. There's a gap between us. And the only way to get back is baby steps, okay? And you've got to respect that. Okay? You have to also realize if someone's terrified, they have to do, they act in the moment, do what they think. Just get, get scared in it. I, I'm not this. Don't you have compassion for I that? I do. I have compassion for that. Listen, I have compassion. I rather sit in your room by yourself? And not comfort each other every night. You were about to that. And then when Landon comes back, you'll see her every day. And not your wife. But you got to have compassion for me. A little bit of empathy on my perspective, okay? Because of the runaway story, the cops, the neighborhood, everybody searching, spent days and days and days. And we lost valuable time trying to find Gannon because of that story. And now, okay, three weeks, no, now three weeks later, okay, I find out Quincy Brown, a sex offender, has my son, and the last story you told me was that somebody was trying to stick something up his butt, and now I got to think about a sex offender has my son, okay? So now you got to have some compassion for me. I do have compassion for you. That's why I want to just be with you to hold you. No, that's what you want. Okay? What? No, I just said that. Having compassion for me is not telling me what you want. Having compassion for me is respecting what I need. And I need baby steps right now. And the next baby step is to, I'm willing to meet you. Okay? I'm willing to meet. That's the baby step.
But, you know, you need to send me an address of where you're at, and I'll come to you, and we can meet. And if, if that's unacceptable, then... You kicked me off the insurance, and you got a car? Listen, I've talked about baby steps to get us closer to, to Gannon and to family, okay? Meeting me is that next baby step. If you can't send me an address where you and Harley are, or at least you're at... I told you I got a rental car. One of my family members helped me out with the rental car so I could search for Gannon and, and I could do what I have to do. Okay? But if you can't... Why is there a claim on insurance? Then? Why is there a claim? If you can't... We could talk about all that. That could be part of our meeting. Okay? But if you can't meet me, if you can't tell... She just tell me. Why is there two claims? Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I want a meeting. You keep changing the subject, so we're going to have to take a three or four steps backwards from this point, okay? No, I'm going to do the meeting. I just want to know, did you let them take a car? Who? Take, who, who take what car? Because there's two rental cars. I don't have two rental cars. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You got somebody You got somebody trying to PI me or something? What two rental cars are you talking about? No, I just, you, said, you said they had a rental car and you had a rental car. Who's they? You said Landon had a rental car. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, Landon. Okay, listen. I don't know what the hell Landon's got going on, but Aunt Veronica's got all that money, and they went to Texas. That's all I know, okay? Whether they still got a rental car or not, I don't know. That's all been from her Aunt Veronica. I had to get my family to help me out, okay? And that's all that matters here. So I'm giving you the truth. I'm ready for the truth about where you're at, the address of where you're at, so we can have the meeting. If not, like I said, we're taking some steps backwards, and we'll try again tomorrow. And that's that's kind of where I'm at right now in this moment. We would take steps backwards because if I just wanted to be with you, I that would be steps backwards when you just told me to have compassion. So I'm just sitting here trying to talk to you. Okay, listen. Tisha. Listen. Tisha, listen. Here we are. Backwards. What I'm just asking. Just tell me. Are you... Are you are you trying to be with somebody else? Just tell me. Am I trying to be with somebody else when my son's out there missing? So here we go. Change the subject. We change the subject back to Tisha now. All right? All right? No, I just want to know the truth because I won't. Well, I want to know the truth. You never answered my question about what you heard, okay? So I want to know the truth, too. But you know what? I've bent a little bit. I've bent a little bit more, and now I'm bending... Now, now I'm bending again. No, listen. Now I'm bending again and saying... Now I'm now I'm bending again and saying, listen, I know you're just not going to answer my question, so let's meet. But that's okay. I'll answer your question if you don't yell at me. Okay. Don't yell at me and what? don't scream at me. The question of what you heard. When you answer a question, you let me answer it and stop interjecting and and treating me like I'm on trial with. You. Absolutely, you got it. I go. What did you hear in the moment that there was bleeding and everything going on? What you heard. That was the question you didn't answer. I'm trying to finish. Okay. So the police had, the police had left. Okay. I put Harley and Lena upstairs in the room. Told them don't come out. Nothing terrible, bad, nothing had happened at that point in time. I was still terrified. If I mentioned to police, if I sent a note, if I said anything, I didn't know what was going to go on. I told you this 17 times. I told them this. You could ask me why didn't I do things differently. Fucking scared. Okay? Scared. Went back downstairs. Okay? I didn't have, we didn't have a safe. We didn't have money. Twerp and now we had a safe. Twerp and now we had money. Just saying, no, we don't have a safe, and I wasn't saying it in this tone, like, no, whatever. Just not going to be reliving all of it like that. No, we don't have a safe. No, we don't have this. I couldn't get your gun upstairs to work. I cried. There was no bullets for the shotgun, and I couldn't get the other gun to work, or I was going to run back downstairs and freaking light his ass up. That was my mind. But that was what I was going to do. Couldn't get it to work. Came back downstairs. Girls are upstairs. I knew I had two of our three children safe. 
And if I would tell you this, you'll be like, well, why was it two of them and not all of them? Or why was it not this one and not that one? People are not realizing that I didn't pick and choose. Okay? Come back in there. Plead again about I would do anything. Money, whatever it may be. Okay? We have this. Jury. I offered every single thing that there was. He kept saying we had a faith. And I kept saying we didn't have a faith. He grabbed me, pulled me back into the storage room. My hands were tied. I already told you this. 17 times again. My hands were tied. Completely. Hardly laying up upstairs, either sleeping, whatever they were. It was late night at this point in time. 11, 12, midnight, whatever it may have been. I left Harley a note on the counter that said, please recall police. They've heard the word that we always say is a code word. What is the word we always say that you won't be always picked up whenever there was trouble? Desperado. Right. I always pick with Harley about, if you ever hear that word, it's not being Albert had any trouble, right? She didn't catch on to what I was saying, which I can't blame her. She does, she, she, she's sometimes dizzy. Didn't catch on to what I was saying. Nothing. I called you back. Called you back with him sitting there. He didn't answer. Not your fault. So now I'm in my mind thinking, if I say to Albert, the good word, he might at least think something, anything. So no, you could have been on the phone. I don't know. All I hear is Gannon screaming. He's yelling at me to shut up. Kathy said it in the work waiting out. I did hear a loud noise. I did Gannon hit something. I'm screaming. I'm sitting there trying to, like, make noises because if they're above me, then maybe someone will hear it on the wood pieces. Nobody helped. Nothing came. No one. No one came for anything. When I came back from hitting my head, which was hit on that wood piece that's in our, in our storage room, Gannon was gone. I freaked out. I get in my car, which I'm sure that they probably seen on camera. Did I get in my car? Drive maybe once or twice around the neighborhood, thinking, you know, I what, what in the hell am I going to do now? Albert's going to fucking kill me. Everybody's going to kill me. That's all I kept thinking. And Gannon's gone. If I haven't slept in how many days reliving how if I could have done something. Am I going to fight somebody with a gun with a knife? Yeah. I don't know how they live. I don't know. And the only reason I would have known who it was is I told you about the badge. More and more, I can't remember, as I had nightmares every flipping night, who it was. Images in my mind, pictures, over and over and over and over and over again and again and again. Can I do anything about it? No. It didn't matter whether I said someone was something captain. It didn't matter what I said in that moment. My mind immediately went to, oh my God. You hear about this? I looked on the neighbor all the time. 
shit goes down and you don't, like, in your brain, you plan if something was to happen, what you're going to do? And then you can't. Your body don't let you. I'm not a person. I even remotely tried to be a badass with a gun. Just don't die. All of it runs in my mind. How am I going to go find it? How am I going to go do this? We got to get help, resources, and then if I say, hey, you know, the fucker was in our home. Oh, they're going to tell me that I'm fucking crazy. I need mental help. I need, I need to see a psychiatrist. Just some fucking shit. That's all that's going to be told to me. I went the very next day, so there was no wasted resources. I went the very next day, that morning, I mean that afternoon. When I talked to them, I explained to them exactly what I told you. Hey, Tisha. Tisha, Tisha, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, this is the worst fucking story yet, alright? I'm done with this shit. Agent Cronin, if you would resume your seat in the witness stand, I remind you, ma'am, that you're still under oath. I'm not sure as far as scheduling. We're pretty close to the noon hour, Judge, and I was wondering if you want to have uh, her come back. I'm not going to finish with uh, questions before that time. I'm sure defense is going to have cross. Counsel approach, please. Agent Cronin, you can go ahead and step down. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our uh, noon recess. If I can have everyone back in the jury room at, say, 120, we should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss case among yourselves. Don't discuss case with anyone else. Um, with that, we'll see you at 120. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left. The court. Is there anything else we need to take up uh, from prosecution? Not at this time, Judge. No, no, sir. Okay. All right. Court will be in recess. Thank you. All right.
And then when she says after the incident, she was driving around thinking, oh, my God, Al, Al's going to kill me. So when you talk about the gun part, the, the uh, quote, take a gun downstairs and light his butt up, she used a different word. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, do you know that there – or was there evidence that Gannon was actually shot in the basement? Yes. Um, do you remember when she described um, all she could hear is Gannon screaming? Yes. <clears throat> and then the next thing she remembers, according to her quote, is Gannon was gone. Yes. Uh, were you aware at that particular time where Gannon's, uh, whether he was alive or dead, first of all? At the particular time? Of this call? She, he was deceased at that point. But at that time, we, his body had not been recovered yet, correct? No. Um, so when you say that he was deceased at that time, when we go back to that actual call, had his body been recovered yet? No. Okay. Was that part of the reason for doing these calls was to gain evidence that would potentially lead to Gannon's location and discovery? Yes. You mentioned at the very beginning of your testimony yesterday, your experience, and you mentioned that you work with uh, Fremont Correctional. Um, I work with the, the Bureau of Prisons, so it's yep, the federal system. That, I said it wrong. The Federal um, Bureau of Prisons. Do you have occasion to interact with people that are dealing with um, mental health issues? Yes, there's some inmates that have mental health issues. Have you had experience dealing with people that have severe mental health issues? Yes. What does that look like from your perspective? Um, it's different. Uh, they may not have logical reasons for what they do. Did this particular defendant appear to have logical reasons for doing what she was doing during the pendency of this investigation? Yes. Uh, in, in your um, observations of her, did she, did you ever hear her say anything about having severe mental health disorders? No. Diseases? No. Did she have um, consistent personality traits throughout the time that you were able to observe her? Yes. Um, during your observation periods with her um, through these phone calls, uh, you mentioned also going to South Carolina uh, for her arrest. Did you have personal contact with her there? No. Okay. Did you see her, though? I did see her, okay. yes. Um, did you ever have occasion to hear her refer to herself by the name Taylor? No. Did you ever hear her refer to herself by the name Maria Sanchez? No. What about Jasmine? No. What about Harmony? No. Christina? No. Little Lucia? No. Did she ever talk with a Spanish accent? No. Um, what was, based on the time that you were with, not necessarily with her, but able to observe her, uh, what is your opinion as to her sanity? I'm going to object on Christian Medina. Well, I'm not going to allow it from this witness unless you can lay more foundation that she has personal interaction with the defendant. My understanding is that most of it was observed through a phone call and she's not had personal contact with the defendant. Well, I think that would be the basis of it, Judge. Um, she was present for all every single one of these individual phone calls, which is, I think, 16 total phone calls, some over an hour long, and then um, also observing her in South Carolina. I just don't think there's enough foundation laid for that. I'm not going to allow it from this witness. Okay. All right. And That's the good. other foundational questions, but I won't. Well, I've already asked those. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Cook, cross-examination. Just a few. Good. Good afternoon. How are you? Good, sir. Uh, should I refer to you as special agent? Is that, that your working point. title? Yes, sir. Okay. How long did you get to view Ms. Stout when you were in South Carolina, Special Agent? I, with her, I wasn't personally interacting with her. I just saw her after the interview that Mr. Grusing had with her. So just like walking down the hallway? Yes, and sir. Just for a few minutes? Yes, sir. Okay. 
And you were with Gannon's father in the room during these phone calls? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, Mr. Allen had stated earlier you were sliding him notes back and forth about what to say? Uh, periodically, we, he did the majority of the phone calls and he would have the conversations with her. It's just periodically if there was something we wanted to know, we would give him a note and ask him. Did what you were looking for as far as answers go uh, change uh, from the first phone call you recorded? to the last one is the investigation involved, I guess, so to speak? Our, our point was to try to find what happened to Gannon and get a story, get the straight story from her because it did keep changing. Okay. When did the warrant for the defendant's arrest go out? Uh, I couldn't probably tell you the exact day okay. as to when that happened. How long after the warrant for the defendant's arrest went out was it before she was apprehended and actually taken into custody? Uh, probably within the week, if I would imagine. Okay. Um, I'm, but that's just a guess. I really can't recall. We got the warrant and then a team of us had to travel to South Carolina to arrest her out there. By plane or car? We flew by plane. If you had a defendant on all these phone calls by, uh, I guess some of the phone calls we've heard were, I keep pointing there because that's, I'm used to looking at, but my speaker is, but if you had these phone calls from February 15th, 16th, 17th, mid-February, 2020, um, you've got a defendant who's telling a lot of different stories, admitting that she knew there was Gannon's blood, uh, admitting that something happened and Gannon was possibly dead. Um, why not make an arrest then, mid-February? It's not really our decision. It would be the decision of the district attorney to determine when we have enough to get an arrest warrant. Okay, so that was the call of the DA? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a second. Your Honor. All right. I don't have anything else. Thank you, Special Mr. Attorney. Allen? Do you remember if the arrest warrant was issued on February 28th, uh, 2020 at 1.26 p.m.? I don't remember the exact date, so I can't confirm that. Okay. Uh, what day did you travel to South Carolina to effectuate that arrest? Again, I'm sorry. I don't recall the exact date as to when we did. Okay. Was it early March? Yes. Which would short be very close in time to February 28th if the arrest warrant was issued that date? Yes, sir. It would okay. be. Okay. Uh, we've already gone over this with another witness, but from your perspective, um, what do you have to have before you can determine that somebody's able to be arrested? Well, we'd have to have probable cause that the person has been murdered. So without Gannon's body being found, we don't know that he actually was murdered at that time. The um, lack of a body, um, can that cause difficulties in both the investigation and then ultimately the prosecution effort. Yes, because if he'd actually been kidnapped, we wouldn't have it a homicide investigation, obviously. Um, have you been involved with other no-body homicide investigations? Yes. Um, are there inherent difficulties present because there's no body? Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. Do any of the jurors have any questions for Special Agent Cronin? No? All right. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Prosecution, call your next witness, please. We we'll call Johnny Grusing. And last name again? Grusing, sorry. G R U S I N G. <laughs> Mr. Grusing, if you would step forward and raise your right hand, please, sir. A little further. Do you swear from the testimony about to give this man will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Go ahead and have a seat in the witness stand. Please watch your step as you step into the stand.
Good afternoon, sir. Will you please introduce yourself to our jury and then spell your name for the record? My name is Jonathan Grusing. Last name is G-R-U-S-I-N-G. Mr. Grusing, what do you do currently for work? I am Director of Safety and Security for Douglas County School District. How long have you been doing that? Uh, not quite two years. What did you do before that? I was a special agent with the FBI in Denver. How long had you been with the FBI? Almost 25 years. What kind of training and education did you have that allowed you to do that job? I got an undergraduate degree in management, Texas Tech University, got a master's degree there as well in business. I worked in Dallas for four years while I was basically biding time to try to get into the FBI. What kind of experience uh, or positions, I should say, or roles did you play with the FBI? <clears throat> so I was a special agent the entire 25 years. For my first two years, I worked terrorism matters. And for my last 23, I was primarily violent crime matters. What kind of cases did you work on as far as violent crime investigations? Up until 2006, I primarily worked kidnappings, fugitives, bank robbers, some federal jurisdiction crimes, like if there was a homicide in the prison. Uh, it was mainly that until 2006. And in that year, I was assigned a serial killer case. Uh, it was an informant of ours who we didn't, the FBI did not know he was going around killing people and enjoying it. And I spent 15 years working that case uh, and that got me working closely with the profiling unit, which is called the Behavior Analysis Unit. I worked with them from 2006 until my retirement. What is the Behavioral Analysis Unit? It is a unit of supervisors with the FBI. They've also now incorporated uh, homicide detectives, uh, other federal agencies like ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and they are basically a consult of experts in different categories. Like we'll have uh, cybercrime is a new one, uh, terrorism or threats, crimes against children, and crimes against adults. How is, I guess, either that discipline or that unit, how, are, how is it used in criminal investigations? So... For my serial killer case, since I had never worked anything like that before, they consulted with me of how to approach someone like that, how someone like that functions, and how we might be able to find his victims, because we just had missing people at that time. So they, they taught me how behavior works. I went to a lot of their in-services. I eventually became the coordinator for Colorado uh, as an arm for the behavior analysis unit to... Uh, both assist local agencies in uh, some profiling type matters, but also to hook up local departments with the profiling unit. So I was basically an extension of them to Colorado. And following that case in 2006, I kept getting assigned other cases where I could utilize the profiling unit on whether it's uh, missing children, missing adults, uh, strange homicides, uh, serial rapists, those sorts of things. I guess, how do you use that um, behavior patterns or however you want to use the term um, in trying to determine or, or help you as you're interviewing people? So... Uh, and, and attending a lot of their in-services, but even more so in working uh, with people who did awful things, uh, took other people's lives, uh, the profiling unit had taught us that uh, people follow a certain pattern of behavior. And knowing that pattern assists us in how to approach them and possibly get them to talk to us. It's, it's a very, it's not an accusatory manner. It's more of a manner on where we try to think like the offender, someone who's done an awful thing and try to help that person wrestle with what they've done and even almost explain to them what they've done and assist them in moving forward. 
So it, it's looking at the crime as best we can from the offender's viewpoint and trying to understand that person. Does, does thinking like the offender um, work in a generalized sense, or is it better to know something about the investigation itself and things that that person may have been doing or saying while the investigation is unfolding? Yeah, it requires a lot of homework. Uh, that's what they taught me because when when we would send a case to the profiling unit, they would digest it completely. It's not some magic formula where they know how people think. They would read the entire case reports. They would ask a lot of questions of the investigator. And then they would just give the investigator some thoughts on how they might move forward. It's not, um, you know, they would never dictate this is what you should do. They would say, here are some considerations you might have in dealing with the person like you're dealing with today. Um, the, the transition for me uh, out of the FBI and really towards the school district was in 2013. Uh, this was after the Sandy Hook attack on the, the first graders. Uh, I started getting yearly training and it was more in depth on pathways of violence um, because we as the FBI were trying to prevent school attacks in particular. So every year we would do more in-depth study on behavior patterns and we as people how we go down a pathway of violence before we do something. And so that got me talking to a lot of school districts uh, for the next what, eight years or so, which eventually led to the job that I'm doing today. So when you're talking about pattern of behavior, not you're not talking then, it doesn't sound like a generalized pattern of a behavior. This would be a very specific pattern of behavior for a specific person in case. Yes, they, they call it the pathway of violence. And, and both the, the FBI and the Secret Service have studied that for years and years. What do, what do you mean when you say that? that phrase, pathway of violence? It means that we as human beings uh, exhibit uh, almost predictors before we do something we're going to regret later. Uh, it starts with a grievance. A grievance means something that you perceive is done wrong to you. And so then you have to wrestle with how you're going to deal with that. And you have an idea of how to deal with it. And that sometimes for us is not a healthy idea. Uh, if we have uh, stabilizers in our life, we'll go back and figure out a better way to deal with things. From there, we go to planning, and that's if you're going down an unhealthy or a violent pathway, you'll start planning what you're going to do. You take steps of preparation. Then you do what's called a breach. A breach is that you enter into almost a point of no turning back, and then you do an attack. And we studied that for years and years to try to prevent school attacks, and that's what I still do today with the school district. If we see a student or even an adult struggling with that pathway of violence, we try to find out what that grievance is and if they're on a pathway to harm themselves or other people. So in your experience, um, have you actually seen this pathway of violence um, go all the way through that pathway where it does lead to some violent act? Absolutely. <clears throat> How did you get involved in the investigation of um, Gannon Stout's disappearance? I had been assisting the Colorado Springs FBI resident agency. It's a smaller satellite down here from, I was stationed up in Denver on numerous cases if they involved uh, missing adults, missing children, just to come in and assist them with whatever help I could give the from the profiling unit and the supervisor john cronin had asked me to come assist with the gannon stout case what was your role in the investigation i didn't come in until about a little over two weeks later and the investigators both fbi and el paso sheriffs just asked me to listen to uh, one of Letitia's phone calls to i believe it was al and see if I can assist because uh, they had no idea where Gannon was and to see what we could do as far as where do we go from here because they believed that she was misdirecting the authorities and wasn't assisting in the investigation. So after listening to the phone call, um, 
I spoke with Al, the dad, and with the investigative team and said, I, I do believe if we don't accuse Leticia of killing Gannon, that she would continue to talk with us and maybe give us clues to what happened to him. So did that become a strategy for you um, as you proceeded to help out with this investigation to not accuse her directly? Yes. Why did you believe that if you avoided making an accusation that she would continue to speak? She had already shown a propensity to change her story to fit the facts of the case. And I had seen that in prior offenders as well. And I figured that if we could just keep approach, uh, just a second. I thought, yes, you may. So, um, Mr. Grusing, so we were talking about that uh, pathway of violence and how you used your experience to um, guide your strategy with this particular um, case. What about, um, this jury's heard a bunch of phone calls already, heard testimony that you were involved with um, both the planning and carrying out of these uh, consensually recorded phone calls. Um, was it also part of your strategy to get her to just keep talking because she would give information sort of on the margins? Yes, she was the last person to be with Gannon and she was our best source of information. But we had, we being the FBI had different teams looking at computers, uh, phones, cars, her, her travel, but our best source to find out what happened to Gannon was to maintain communication with Leticia. And that was my goal was just to have Al keep talking with her so we could find out what happened to him. On all of these uh, recorded consensual phone calls that involve Mr. Stauk and the defendant, um, is it fairly consistent that the defendant would show more concern or herself than helping find Gannon or what have, ha, might even have happened to Gannon. Yes, it was. Was the defendant at the center of her own universe in that regard? She was. Did you have, um, prior to the phone calls, had you ever had any interaction with her before? No. Um, during the phone calls, had, did you have any chance to see her? No. 
Did you eventually have a chance to see her? I did. What, what was that? It was once an arrest warrant was drafted and we, we being an investigative team with El Paso County Sheriff's Office and FBI on March 2nd, uh, arrested her and I spoke with her in South Carolina. Um, the person that you went there to arrest and then um, interview, is she here in the courtroom? She is. Will you identify her, please, by pointing to where she's sitting, describing what she's wearing? She's sitting at that table wearing a red shirt. Between the two defense attorneys? Correct. All right, at this time, I'd ask that the record reflects he's identified the defendant. The record will so reflect. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Grushing, was it also consistent that um, this defendant would mislead the investigation? Yes, that's correct. Give us um, what you mean by that. Well, in her conversations with Al, she was pretending to be in Colorado Springs when we knew she was in South Carolina. Um, her stories changed, and it really affected the law enforcement response for her to say, Gannon walked away to a friend's house versus being abducted or something that would cause a, a greater and more intense law enforcement response initially. And then, uh, as I'm sure the jury's aware, the, the stories kept changing. How does um, that dynamic where the last person to see uh, an 11 year old child alive um, is giving these sometimes very wildly divergent um, statements as to what happened? How does that affect the investigation? Well, it, it makes it difficult, but the someone like Leticia can't help but giving out facts in the case while she's making up these stories. The stories are to avoid punishment for her possibly being responsible for what happened and being found guilty. And uh, in my experience, that is what, uh, both in my experience as an interviewer with the FBI and what I learned from working with the Behavior Analysis Unit, that's what we as human beings do, is we fabricate and we misdirect to avoid punishment. Um, was it consistent in this case that uh, different times during these recorded phone calls that she would try to shift blame to other people? Yes. Did that include Al Stouck? It did. Did it include uh, Landon Hyatt, Gannon's mother? It did. Did it include Landon's ex-husband, Mike? Yes. Were there other people that she would try to shift blame to that were known entities, known people that were real? Yes. I want to jump into um, now, I'm sure everybody's very excited about this, but some more of these recorded phone calls. Um, we've previously had admitted and um, published a number of these phone calls through prior witnesses. Um, but before we jump into that, how were you involved in this specific process of preparing Mr. Stout for these calls? So I would meet with Al along with our team in the morning early before we knew the phone calls would happen. Uh, first of all, to check on how he's doing, see if he got any texts through the night, and then to prepare him mentally for what would be a very difficult day of uh, getting new stories of what happened to Gannon. And uh, to, to watch him was difficult on us as investigators because Leticia was describing a lot of trauma happening to Gannon through this. It's forms of blood gushing and injuries to face and knees. And, you know, it, it just would keep coming and it was difficult for him to take that in as Gannon's father, but he maintained uh, a very even keel and I think we were able to help him do that. It was, it was very difficult for him not to accuse Leticia, uh, but uh, Al was also able to refrain from doing that as well. Would you see physical reactions in Mr. Stouck as these descriptions are coming out? Yes. Um, was it important while you're doing this with Mr. Stouck um, to protect the uh, viability of the investigation, meaning instructing him that he couldn't talk to people outside the investigation about these calls? 
Yes, he knew that, and as far as I know, he adhered to that. Okay. So I want to jump into uh, people's exhibits. And hold on just a second. People's Exhibit Number Fifty Four, which was previously admitted through Mr. Stout's testimony, it's a pretext uh, or these consensual calls that was recorded on February Sixteenth, Twenty Twenty. You know, this one is uh, four minutes and twenty three seconds. All right. I think, you, I think the witness can stay in the stand for that. Yep. <laughs> and from the podium. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So I just got off the phone with your girl Nicole, and then I talked to the uh, investigative reporter. Um, do you know what I found out? Yeah. I uh, found out where Quincy is. So okay, we're ma we're making progress. Um, they his his family at the house believes he's been in Mexico for over two years and hasn't been back. Yeah, no, that's not true. How do you know? Oh, okay. 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 Whatever. If you're not going to listen to me. I did. I listened to you. Listen to thing and make up these stories. I li Really? No, I listened to you. I listened to your your contact of Nicole. I listened to her, the person she sent, okay, who was the investigative reporter that you were referencing. So all that was true. So thank you for telling the truth on that, okay? The part that's not true is Quincy Brown. He's been in Mexico for two years. Quincy Brown is not involved in this. Mexico? 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 That's what his family said, not... Yeah, that's what his family said. Oh, yeah. Okay, the family said Mexico? Yeah, because they've been looking for him too, believe it or not. Go figure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure. So why the mis why why the misinformation? Why why are you telling me not true? Okay, the news people said this was misinformation. That's why they're not running your story. Okay. I didn't give. Them yeah, you did. You gave him Quincy Brown. You gave him misinformation. You gave him a story. Okay. Give it any news story? Yeah, Nicole's a news person. You know that. You been you called her and did an interview with her or or, or statement or whatever. So yeah, you did give her misinformation. That's what they called it. That's what they called it, Tisha. Call them back and cuss them out. Don't talk to me like this. You gave them misinformation. Okay. That's who, that's who the ID said. That's who it is. Okay, that's who the ID said, and somebody's got his, took his ID from two years ago and is now... Maybe you need to figure that out because he's not hmm. So that's what I'm doing, trying to figure it out. Okay? And you're not working with me here. You, you said you want to be an involved parent. in Mexico. You, I, I'm just blown away because you say you want to be an involved parent. You sent me a picture of this dude. Okay, where'd you get the picture from? Nicole! I said yes! Okay, so Nicole sent you the picture. You've also got messages from this dude. Okay? And who, and he never says who he is. It, Somebody yeah. They I got it. I got it. But it never said, hey, this is Quincy. Send me my money. You know? I'm the guy. That's what he said. That's what he looks like. Okay. Then he has been in Mexico. For two years. That's what people do. Okay, but you said you said that he wasn't in Mexico. Now you're saying he's in Mexico. They said he was there for two years. People can't. I said people can go back and forth to Mexico. Well, that's the best. be an indicator to you right there. Yeah, but you know what? But you get check it out though. Check it out, though. He's been wanted for over two years. If he came back and forth across the border in the past month, they would have stopped him because he's a wanted man. Okay? No, they wouldn't. And you say, and you just said it's perfect that Gannon's in Mexico? That's one of the worst places on the world right now. For who? I, what's wrong is my son's missing and you keep lying to me. Okay? That's what's wrong, Tisha. That's what's wrong. 
Okay, fine. Give me my son back. Tell the truth. Give me my son back. Where's he at then? Who has him? You don't. You haven't answered not one of my questions. Do that. Well, guess what? I don't want you to call me back because you're not doing nothing but lying to me and sending me in a okay. different direction than what you know is the truth. Okay, whatever. Good for you. Thank you. Yep. All right. So, Mr. Grusing, um, just a couple of preliminary things. Um, there was a word of Nicole in this particular call. Were you aware of who Nicole was? Yes. Who is that? She was a local news reporter. Okay. And then Quincy, uh, we've had some prior testimony on this from other folks as well. Uh, but this is that Quincy Brown? Correct. Um, any indication that he was involved in this case? No. What is important from your perspective as an uh, investigator with your years of experience um, regarding this particular phone call? Uh, again, Leticia is not taking any responsibility for Gannon being missing. Uh, she actually, as, as Al was able to catch, was uh, almost relieved or pleased that he might be in Mexico, um, that that might even be a possibility. And you know, it, it's, we had already found out by this point that Quincy Brown was just, he was a fugitive on a wanted page. And uh, like I think you'd said prior testimony, it had already been vetted that he was in Mexico. Okay. It, 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 when when uh, we talk about misdirection, is this an example of that misdirection um, as applied to the investigation by the defendant herself? Yes. You know, next, I want to jump into People's Exhibit Number Fifty Five, another one of these recorded phone calls admitted previously under Mr. Stout's testimony. This is eighteen minutes and forty two seconds long, and uh, it's occurred on February sixteenth, twenty twenty, at two thirty four p.m. And you said 18 minutes? Yes, sir. Uh, a little over 18 minutes. All right. Mr. Grusing, you can go ahead and step down and uh, sit in the back. Yeah, this is played. Are you still playing it from there? February 16th. Are you still playing it from there, Mr. Allen? Yes, sir. Okay. I This is about that other. General. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do what? What? I'm uh just trying to help get to the bottom of this teacher, like you said in the message. Like I'm just trying to do this for Gannon. Yeah, but this whole time for three weeks, you've been just like all these people. So you know what? I'm gonna be just like you too. Full of speculation, full of lies, full of craziness. I'm gonna be fucking crazy as hell, just like this. So you're starting That's that now? The truth, huh? You're starting that now is what you're telling me? No, I'm telling you. No, that, that's just what, I mean, that's why you're treating me. So no, no. That I've been sitting there playing into your game and all the listening and people. You think, you think I'm not, you think I'm doing it? No, I'm, I'm just trying to like, like I said, I'm just trying to get to the truth and get to Gannon. I mean, you, 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 you think, no, you think I'm stupid. And you wanted to get to Gannon? Yeah. And you think I'm not going to fucking be a fucking crazy ass? You think that for a second? You think I'm not smart? No. no. Oh, I was invested a lot because, oh my God, I worked at the ground you walked on. Okay, but that being said, why would you give me Nicole's number? I don't okay. Me no. Anymore. Well, that's Great. fine. That's fine. We're 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 miles away from that, so. But for miles away from what? Miles, miles away, away from what? miles away from the truth. First of all, because this Quincy guy's been gone for two years. The news said that, not me. Okay, all right. The news said that they also got a confirmation from the sheriff. Okay, that this guy was not involved. Period. It's misinformation. If that's what they say. Then they have the answer. Okay. Well, but but between me and you, why can't we just move past Quincy? Okay. Because you're not trying to move forward in your life with your wife and your family. And as long as you treat me like that, act like that, I'm going to be the same damn way. Okay, but you, but but hear me out. Hear me out. 
me like shit. Okay, all right. You're... Do you think I'm supposed to come be your hero? Okay, listen. I am trying to get past that point because Quincy Quint being involved in this. You don't have anywhere to live in those pools? And you still been lay up in a hotel? Yeah, but you had me believe in Quincy until the news in the El Paso told me it wasn't true. No. You don't care. I do. I no. Matter to okay, so you've been telling me stories this whole time. Is that what you're telling me? You've been lying to me intentionally. No. Why not? So, the, the, but you got to no, know. You, I think you're freaking out because you know. I don't even have to tell you. You know that Quincy being not legit anymore no. is not good for you, and it's not good for Gannon. Okay. All right. So listen, I want to start over with this. Okay, I want to start over, and I, I'm. Uh, no, I got you. I got you, and I want you to... If you had me, you would have dated me for two weeks. Okay, but listen. When we started... Listen, when I started talking to you... When I started talking to you on the phone, the most honest you've been to me in this whole freaking process is when you asked me, and you showed me that you cared and love for me. You asked me, you said, Albert, do you love me? And then I answered, and I said yes. Right? No. You don't. No, but no, no. Listen to me. I said yes. Okay. I said yes, and you, what you said, okay, what you said. If this was an accident, will you stand by me? And I said yes. I said I will stand by you if this was an accident. Many people. Did you start texting and telling them that I lied? I just want to know because this, this is where I get where, where I don't. This is why I don't never were trusted through the whole two weeks. Who trusted? Did you I didn't get on the phone and text nobody about this. And I know you're surprised by that. You can be, okay? Whatever. You ain't told a soul about their names or nothing. The only person I've been talking about is the fact that Quincy Brown, with this whatever Nicole Fiaro told me, okay, that the El Paso County Sheriff told you, you said call... I did exactly what you said. I trusted in you. I got in touch with them. So you don't even want to talk about Gannon. You're not talking about Gannon. You're talking about you. Okay. No, this is not about Gannon. It is. It is about you. That's not true, Gannon. Because you're you're somewhere. You're you're healthy and talking to me. Gannon's not. That's why it's about Gannon. Okay. All right. Like I said, you, I want I want your honesty. The most honest you've been. Even understand any of it. If I try to tell you that your baby mama has something to do with it, you're not gonna believe me. But she did. Okay, then let's then let's prove it. Give me the proof. So you fucking laugh at all the tells with her? I'm not. I have that once. I told you that. I, I I don't care. You can accuse me all you want to, like you've done for five years. Okay. I don't have nothing to hide. You won't even tell me anything. You haven't had the decency to tell me anything about nothing. You start kicking me off, kicking me out of the curb. You saw that every day, though, did you? Not really, actually. No, because he's your children's mother, right? Yeah, yep, absolutely. And you have information that you're not telling me. And you have you have the chance to show that you're better than her, okay? If she's involved in this, if she's involved in it, let's take her down. If, she's... if you go make a statement that you are standing by your watch and then see what you did. Okay, if you sit right here, do that. Okay, if you sit right here. No, no, absolutely not. I'm not putting you down at all. You told me the closest we've been to the truth, I'm going to keep saying this, is when you asked me if I loved you, and I said yes, okay, and then you said, if this was an accident, and then you said, stand by me. Okay, so that I think that's the closest to the truth we've been, that it, something happened, it was an accident, and that's the most... It was an accident. Where the hell did I put Gannon? What you think? What the rest of the people think? You think it was an accident that I heard and then did away with it? Listen, hold on, hold on. And I'm going to tell you the truth right now. I'm not worried about Gannon right now. Okay, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about standing by you. The only way you're going yeah, to tell me what I want. I'm not telling you what, the, what you want to hear. The only way to move forward with this is that it was an accident, which I think is the truth, and that you freaked out. And I told you that over and over and over again. Accidents happen. People freak out with accidents. They will understand that. Okay, but the fact but the fact that you, you sent me on a three-day chase of Quincy Brown, which is misinformation and not true, okay, that's not good for you. What is good for you is that we can make it through this 
going down the road of an accident. No, I'm telling you the truth. Ten percent of people don't make it through. If I had the same skin as life in a fire, you'd still be treating me the same way. You saved his life from a fire? If I didn't, if I didn't, well, God knows because I couldn't figure out where the hell the fire was coming from. And then went downstairs, you haven't jumped on you for a second. That if that cow took on fire, then it would not be a vibe. Oh, no, I, I I said you that from day one that you you know that you did what you had to do there. But but how did you save his life? Okay, was what was it from the accident that of the candle that Gannon did or what? I, that's what. I, now, had I just laid back down because I had already cut the darn alarm off. Already cut the alarm off. Yeah, but you're a good person. You're a good mom. That's that's what good people do. Okay, so that no, that's never been in question. Okay, the fact that you're a good person, that's that just comes natural. Okay? The fact that what happened subsequent to that, what happened after that, was was just for like made the accident ten times it compounded it ten times, ten times, ten times, and now it's got way out of hand. But that's the only way we get out of this is to to figure out what the accident was and go from there. I can't hear you. Okay, all right. Yeah, I see. All right. Thanks. That's really great, right? Albert? Yeah, I'm here. I told you every single day. I woke up every single day and told you. I want to tell you. That I'm this bad person and something bad. I want to tell you all that. I, I do. Why? Because that is what you think. You have crashed me to everyone. I have not proved it. I have not trashed you to no one. I have not put anything out in the public intentionally so we could get to the bottom of this, me and you, okay? And here we are trying to get to the bottom of it. I'm sure you had your family thinking I'm a murderer. My family's not even here. I'm all alone again. I told you that. My family just wants to find their nephew, their grandson, their cousin. Okay? That's what they want. Their bro How about Lena, their brother? Lena's losing her mind because her brother's missing. You think I don't want to see Lena? I didn't say see Lena. I said Lena's freaking out because Gannon's missing. What are you talking about? No, I said I do want to see Lena. I didn't say you didn't want to see her. Why? Where did that come from? I said, Lena's, I said, Grandma's, my mom's worried about her grandson, okay? My siblings are worried about their nephew. Their children are worried about their cousin. And then I said, Lena's worried about her brother, and you said, you want to see Lena. I do. I well, everybody wants to see Gannon. Everybody. I know that, Albert. Okay, everybody wants to see Gannon. And if it was, I, I, and I'm trying to get you to understand that if this was just an accident, and it got out of hand, and you panicked, or, or whoever panicked, okay, that's something we can make it through, okay? You can make it through that. You're not going to believe that, because you're going to think. No, fine. Fine, Gannon panicked. No, no, I'm not blaming you. I said it was an accident. Accidents really have no one to blame. If an accident happens... Okay, I was trying to be a cool parent. I already told you that. We pushed the bed together. You were talking about... Sleep over. Okay. We were just acting crazy. Okay. I already told you that in the bill busted and whip in the road. That's where the blood came from. Don't be thinking there's some crime scene to kick everybody out of the house. When that's not even nothing happened to Gannon. Deadly hurtful anything like that in the home. I'm sick of it. I want to move the house people when people won't even move past that. I told you this morning. That was the accident I was talking about. Okay, so there was an accident with Gannon. Okay, that's the, that's what I'm trying to say. So what what next? What I mean, that's what I. Okay. No, okay. okay. He's feeling horrible. He's absolutely feeling feeling horrible because I we had a fire. We had to run out. He's thinking 
and, 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 and whatever you're going to say, you're going to be like, oh, uh, you know, whatever. You're not going to let me just tell you and be genuine unless you just be like, baby, how can you, like, even deal with this because I'm dealing with it hard and comfort each other. You're not going to do that. You think I'm not, it's not killing me? Do you think that for a second? No, I, I know it's killing you. I know how you are when, you know, you because you're a good mom and you're a good person and when things don't go perfect, I know how you are. Albert, do you love me? Yes. Okay. Well, the truth. Are you going, don't say I'm going to make you no promises, are you going to make this right stand by your wife? I told you that the other day. I will stand by you, yes. And I said, are you going to make this right? Yeah, we're going to make this whole situation right. I'm talking about with our family. Absolutely. That's what this is all about is our family. I said that from day one and every day. This is about our family. Okay. He, he's just shocked because all he kept thinking about was is how he was supposed. I don't know what somebody was supposed to be sending him from online on Amazon. I don't know what promises people had made. I don't know about any kind of promises that people made about coming in March. I don't know about any of that. I just know he was upset thinking, A, he was not going to get any of those promises. He was upset about the whole camera thing. And he kept saying to me that he messes up everything. Say that to me. And I kept saying, that he did. that's why he didn't let Gannon go to school. He felt horrible with himself. He felt really bad with himself. He was very upset. So we go on our same trip. We went on everything about the bike. We did all that. All that too. We did all that. We go to Petco. We did all that. Okay. Then we leave. We go. We're going to go meet somebody about the bike. Then end up when I realized that I did think somebody was following us. That's the God's line trick. Because when I got on, they got to do I got to turn, they got to Where God. I thought somebody was following us all the time. Anyway, so I realized that I didn't have phone or direction, so I turned around. Come back up to Petco. Go back into Petco again. He is still playing the glitch. He's still whatever. So back to up for a second. If you think for a second on some video, he might have been whatever, he, he had busted his nose and his mouth. Did you think I want to send him to school? Like that, honestly. Did you? I mean, obviously not. Okay. I did. And then I was just up feeling so sorry. He didn't have that first. It was very easy. They were a little bit bumpy, but but I, but I was able to jump on it and put it out. So then we go back to Petco and I said again, hey, we are going to have to hurry up get back and get Lena. Albert, when I got back, Gannon was not in the car. At all. I didn't even know that he was in the car. From when you left Petco? Still horrible because I feel like one of those people that didn't realize that they left their baby in the car. Do you realize how freaked out People want to know why I drove around everywhere, why my GPS went everywhere today, because I tried looking. Now I have to sit back and have people fuss at me and say, first of all, where's Gannon? I don't know. I, I told you this from the beginning. I don't know. I don't. You think it's not driving me insane? I don't know. You think I don't, I have to feel like, oh, whatever, you have to fight that's not the Bible. You see, I didn't even pay attention. He's always just so quiet, I wasn't even thinking. And then I go in the pants room. Thinking, surely he's going to be home. 
I'm here. I'm just listening. See? Now you're just listening. I give you what you want and you're just listening. Well, what do you want me to do? You want me to pick holes in it? I'm, I promised you I'd listen. You asked me to listen. I promise it. Oh, so now there's holes to pick in it? That's not... Yeah, I mean, I can if you want me to. Do you want to do that? There's no holes to pick in it. All right, listen. Listen, 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 listen. I'm done. Okay, because we, we started off talking about an accident, okay? Now, basically, we got another Quincy Brown. So, what's this guy's name, okay? When you come up with that, when you come up with the next person's name, you call me back, all right? Mr. Grusing, if you would resume your seat in the witness stand, I remind you, sir, that you're still under oath. One of the benefits of doing it this way is you get your steps in while you're still uh, testifying. Appreciate that. <clears throat> the uh, the whispering that we hear in the background, um, is that you and Al just conversing and you giving him tips on how to go forward? Yeah, one of us on the team. Okay. The uh, accident suggestion, do you remember that at the very beginning of this where Al suggests, was there some accident kind of thing? I do. What was the um, strategy behind um, suggesting an accident? Uh by now, we as a team had uh, been able to shoot down the Eduardo uh, story, and now the Quincy Brown story, uh, because we had put him in Mexico, uh, Leticia knew that that story wasn't going to uh, be able to move forward with Al. And, and as you can see, her she wants a relationship with Al, and uh, we decided to do uh, both uh, the accident scenario and remind Leticia that she's a good person and a good parent and see if she would give us something else as far as a clue we could move forward with. Is that essentially building an escape hatch for her to take that gives her some potentially some um, less exposure? Yes. Did she take advantage of that? She did. Okay. In what way? Well, she described again, more injuries to Gannon about, I believe it was busting a lip and I couldn't hear if it was a nose or something else that happened in the house and then that's why she would call him out of school she also uh, continued to blame him though as a victim of saying he was scared he wasn't acting rightly and you know a lot of a lot of those sorts of uh, uh, responsibilities landed on Gannon uh, and then she calls him out of school but uh, now she has him being abducted, it sounds like, from the Petco, from, and now we don't have a new suspect to chase. Is this um, a new development in her evolution of stories that now a, uh, an abduction kidnapping has occurred outside of the home? Yes. At Petco, I should say. Yes. Uh, because there had been the previous one of Quincy Brown up north, northern El Paso County, correct? Correct. All right. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, I would uh, like to jump into the next phone call previously admitted during Al Stouck's testimony. This is People's Exhibit 56. It's from February 17th, 2020 at 11.49 p.m., and it's 43 minutes long, so that may get us to a, a good break point after that one's done. That will. And um, Mr. Grunson, you can go ahead and step down. Playing now, People's 56. Doctor and all that other chunk.
Should we call her? Yeah. I'm just kidding. One second. Hello. Hello. What's up? Uh huh. The dip got back in the doctor. What for? Really? Yeah. I've already told you this, but I have a period now. Five weeks treat me. Okay. I had to go. Was that you uh, messaging me this morning from another number? I don't know. Just blame me for whatever. No, I'm just asking. I, that way I know for sure. Huh? I don't know. I don't know, Albert. I don't know. Just blame me for whatever. Oh, it's not. No, we're not playing the blame game. I just wanted to know because there may have been some. Uh, details that I wanted to talk about because it was obviously relevant to what the things we've been talking about over the past couple of days, so. Yeah, you you know what my mind's on. My mind's on Gannon, okay? And I told you I'd stand by you if we got to the truth. So, I mean, that's what my mind's on. My mind's on the truth about Gannon. I've given you the truth. I've given it to you, and then I've given you fifteen different things that were not true. Just to prove a point. Call it what you want. Call it crazy or making a point or lying or whatever you want to call it. Then go text people and. I'm a horrible person I am, and I'm just lying, and you're back in the corner. So that when you say to people, I hope you know they're posting yourself online. When I say something to who? Anybody. Unless it's probably like legitimately people that you are born related to, or they send it to anybody, or anyone who's doing things, they send it to their best friends at kindergarten, they're posting it online. Well, I mean, I haven't said nothing to nobody, so I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, I'm just telling you, that's probably, you would say something about people calling you or something. That's probably how they got your number. But your number's online everywhere. I know it is, and I, I mean... People are posting messages that you supposedly sent people. I'm just saying, so, I mean... But, you know... Whoever you be talking junk to, or whatever to, people are putting it out there. Well, good for them. I mean, I'm just telling you that to let you know that not to talk bad to you and talk about you or nothing. I'm just telling you that. Trust me, I spent the entire night getting cheers of you or mics, messages made up on me with you with mics, all kinds of stuff. Like anything, you, you can know that. I'm just telling you that. These people are nut jobs. Yo. So, back to what you said a second ago, you told me that you made up all these stories to prove a point. Why would you tell me all these different stories? That doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, what point is there to prove other than the point of finding Gannon? Because I cannot give you, no matter what I give you of how Gannon is missing, I can't give you the answer of how to get to him. Why? But cause, no, but you told me. If you guys are there to question me, the check all the day by a girlfriend. I just want to know why you told me all these different stories, but you told me you told me to 
you're telling me that you've given me the truth so many times, but then you say it's a bunch of different stories. So I don't understand what you're trying to say. I mean, the only, the only thing I... Okay, go ahead. I'm not walking you through any more stories or truths. I'm not doing that. Because it does nothing for me. But it makes me unhealthy, make me stressed. And I'm not in the position because I'm not eating to be like this. I'm just not. I'm healthy. And, 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 and then if you guys think that you're going to get me to kill myself or admit to something I did to, you guys are all wrong. So, the point behind that is, if you're going to call me, call me not to stand by my side, not to make any kind of statement to, to say that these people need to stop threatening your life. If you're not going to call me to do any of that in your family, then of course I'm just going to sit there and play into your game. If you're treating me like crap, which you've done, why would I treat you with any... I didn't hear what you said. You broke up. Why would you? Why would you treat me with what? I said if you're not treating me with compassion, with love, 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 but, uh, but I've offered that. I've offered that to you. Okay, I've offered that to you. I said I'll stand by you once we get the truth. Okay, that's what I've said the whole time, and I've told you that you can you can survive and you can get through this. Okay, it just all it all comes down to the truth. That's the that's the important point. To get through something, for y'all to think that I'm gonna make up something to and, and charge with something that I didn't even do. I'm not doing that. If you just think that. I mean, I... I, I you know, I'll be with things like, oh, you're a teacher. You can never even say a kind word to me about anything like that. Do you think that I didn't think that was all a played up thing? You can... I, I, listen, you're welcome to think whatever you want. I mean, you said you've loved me numerous times over the past couple of days, and I've replied with the same and thing. I, Yes. If you called you to say that to me, if you called me, I woke up in the morning and said, be kind to me, I love you, I miss nothing. Have you said anything to me? I have. And, and, but the problem is what you're telling me is finding Gannon is conditional on no. what you <laughs> want and what you need. That is what you're saying. The truth is conditional for that. It's not. Do you not think if I need for a second, I'll get Gannon, it would not be it. Well, I don't know. I don't know the truth on that because I know what you've said that an accident happened and that you panicked. And, and when you panic and bad things and things get out of control or whatever you said, they go downhill. Well, Gary, you didn't accept the accident about jumping on the bed. You didn't accept it. I accepted that there was an accident that happened. You're absolutely right. I accepted that an accident happened. And you panicked. <laughs> Not what you did. That's not what you accepted. You told you the truth. You asked me about the bedroom, and I've already told you this. But but okay. Let's, 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 okay, let's accept. Let's say, okay. Let's accept that accident happened. Okay, for a moment. Okay, but you keep putting somebody else into the picture. Okay, and that is absolutely bad for you. In the context of an accident or in the context of anything, if somebody else comes into the picture and you keep going down that road, I, I, if I'm sitting here and poking holes in it, okay, which I don't want to do, but I, I, it just doesn't jive with me, what do you think law enforcement's going to do? Okay, because... I don't think about what law enforcement is going to do. Because Home Day 5 is going to whistle this road. I'm not worried about that. Well, I'm, not, I'm not worried about law enforcement because I didn't do anything wrong. Right, because it was an accident. We've established that. So why would how they, why would Jose Baez have to rip anybody apart if you just if you were involved in an accident? That is, I never told you 
that anything was an accident other than what you asked me about the work. And I'm going to keep telling you that 14 times, and then you're going to get mad. You don't need to scream at me, hang up the phone. It's not a good enough answer. But you did tell me there was an accident. You told me there was a fire, there was burns, there was a candle spill. You told me he accidentally stepped on a piece of wood. You already knew all of it. Right, but you, those are the accidents that you said happened, that he got injured somehow from these accidents. That's what you said. I'm not putting words in your mouth. I've already told you about them. He had a hard time getting out of being basically a boy, barefooted. Yeah, I know it, and he freaked out. I got it. He freaked out after the accidents happened. There was a couple different accidents that happened. He freaked out, got overwhelmed. Then what happened? He never had that many accidents. I agree, okay? I agree. That's a lot in like 12 hours. That's a lot of accidents in 12 hours on one little field. Yeah. Okay, whatever. I'm just using that as an as a random guess. Okay, I don't know the exact time frame. Uh, me explaining anything to you, if your people don't know I'm your husband. I'm not, I'm not the sheriff. I'm your husband, and it's my son that's missing. Yes, he does. A father does. A father does. Okay. And and once again, I'm feeling. I'm trying to do this because I'm feeling the guilt of not being there to help him through all these accidents. Okay. So I'm trying to do what I can outside of the law enforcement. Okay. Because you don't freaking trust them anyways, and they've screwed a lot of this up. So I'm sitting here trying. Do I trust him? Not based on what I've seen. So that's why I'm going straight to you. Straight to the last person that saw him. I'm not. If I would be the last person that saw him, then I would be the, be the person that has him. So who's the, then who was the last person that saw him? That's, this is... No! No! Okay. I don't know. So you don't know who it was? Anything. I just told you. I, I don't know anything because I've been emotionally beat down. By who? Emotionally beat down. By who? What? By who? Who, who who's emotionally beat you down? Hello? Albert? I understand. As a parent, you know that a hundred percent of your mind is focused on someone that you that God gave you the ability to bring into this world. Okay. If, if anybody knows that I understand that. Well but you but you're you're contradicting yourself because you told me okay. no Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't have anything to say. I couldn't even finish the second part. I finished it without you attacking me. Okay. I also know that you should be, under no circumstances, being warned with me. Because that's what God intended you to be. Be warned. And that's what?
Can I talk now? Sure. Huh? Sure, thank you. Alright, so I'm I'm gonna I know you don't wanna hear this, but I'm gonna walk you back through where I'm at and then I'm gonna let you know how I feel, okay? Alright. I fully believe that something happened, and it was an accident, and that you panicked. Okay. And that you keep putting somebody else into it, and as long as you do that, it just doesn't doesn't look good for you. I'm trying to be by your side when I say that, okay? And I and I've said this over and over again that you can get through this, and if you give me the truth, okay, I'll stand by you, okay? But here's where I'm at. Here's my feelings on it, okay? I'm just gonna you just need to hear me out, please, okay? All right. I know that you did something. I know that you're responsible. Okay, and I hope there was a good reason for it. But the problem is, the problem is, it's clear to me that I can't get get him back through you. Okay, I had I had serious hope that you know we could stand by each other through this. But you know what? I'm I'm past that point now. After all these lies, and you just admitted that you lied to me for a reason to prove a point. I don't have hope for us. And you know what? I'm worried to death about. 
that I'm going to have to testify eventually about this, and I don't know what I should say. I have no clue what to say about this. Because now I'm, now I'm put in the position of the truth of my wife. And I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say when I get called up there to testify eventually. What you just put your conversation to I did I absolutely said that. And I, I want you to know what you think I should say when I get to have to testify. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get called up there. What? To testify in this situation. I, I don't know. I'm hoping it doesn't come down to murder. I haven't seen my son in three weeks. And nobody can find him. Okay. Or maybe it was an accident and somebody just panicked. But I don't have it. I'm no. Cl I'm farther away from the truth than I was when I started talking to you after two weeks. You were the last one to see him, and I, I just don't know what I'm going to say when I, when I have to sit on that stand and freaking cry in front of the world about my son. I don't know what the hell I'm going to say, other than that you freaking lied over and over and over and over and then never told me any element of the truth. So what, what should I say? I mean... Hello? I guess I lost you. Alright, you're saying, so basically now you're saying someone's getting proven. No, I said that could be the worst case. I don't know for sure because there's no body, there's no evidence, there's no nothing. I mean, what else do you want me to think in this case? Okay, you're freaking. You're the last one to see him. You're the last one to hear him talk. You're the last one anything of Gannon on this earth, to my knowledge, okay? No one else. I mean, what, what else are you... I mean, what do you want me to say, Tisha? What do you want me to think? I, and I'm, I'm as freaking serious and freaked out as I've been this whole time. All these freaking injuries in that short time period, accident or not, you had something to do with it, okay? I mean, I mean, how else, all that put together, how, how else am I supposed to look at it? Just like you're always putting me on the stand and questioning me for stuff you think I do that adds up. Okay, well, that's what I'm doing here. There's no other way for me to look at this other than you're involved to some level, if not ultimately responsible. So you tell me what I'm supposed to say and what I'm supposed to think. You can say no, no, all you want to, but you have, all you've done is lie to me and make up fake people that are in Mexico right now. Tell me. Tell me the truth, yeah. Tisha. Tell me what I'm supposed to say. How, tell me how to stand by you. you. You've already said what you think is in your mind and what people have put in your mind. Yeah, it's not about what I think, though. Okay, I'm asking you how I can stand by you, what the truth is, so I can stand by you through this. I'm just going to put that in the case of my own husband had just said I would ignore someone. This is what you said. That's not what I said. Okay, you said that, not me. I said you're responsible. You're responsible to some degree. That's what I said. We're just worried about you testifying, is what you said. Yeah, absolutely. Testifying for someone, what you said. Because I, because I got to get up there, I got to get up, I'm going to have to get up there on the stand and look you in the eye and tell them that you, you lied to me and told me 15 stories and that, and when they ask me what I think, I'm going to tell them I think you're responsible. I want to know what you think I should say. That's what I, that's where I'm at right now. I told you that. If that's, if that's what you feel in your heart. Think that's what I no, Dusta, I'm asking you. I'm asking you to convince me. Can tell me otherwise, Tisha. No. Convince me otherwise. I'm begging you. I'm on my knees begging you to prove me wrong again. Okay, prove me wrong. No. Tell me right now. Prove me wrong. Give me what I need. Give me the facts of the matter that prove that you had nothing to do with this, or that was an accident. You freaked out, or something. 
I'm here theorizing all these different what? stories. I got the original as an accident, and then you still think I just murdered someone as an accident? No, no, that's not what I said. If it was an accident, that explains it. You killed him, that explains it. I mean, that's, it's pretty simple. Okay, it was an accident. Okay, an accident. I have nothing to do with that. I'm asking you a question. I'm uh -huh. not yelling at me. I said, if you, if you just said that she was doing basically on the fan, it's what you told me. No. We're gonna, no, you said if they ask me what I think, that's the situation. Okay, so you're telling me that you're going to speculate what you think happened, and you just told me there's no this, there's no evidence, there's no other. No, all right, you're right, you're right. Back, back off of that, back off of that. What I will tell them is this, I will tell them this, that my wife had the opportunity to tell me the truth, but she chose to lie to me repeatedly. Make up fake people, Uncle Matt, Eduardo, uh, freaking Quincy Jones or whatever his name was in Mexico, okay? She told me all these stories to get me going in 17 different directions that I still don't know the truth and that sh I know for a fact she was the last one to see him in our home. I'm going to let you just be like, I'm gonna let you decide that opinion because that's No, 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 stop. No, that's not an opinion, okay? That's a I stated all the facts, I dropped the mic and I'm out, okay? That's what that is. I got nothing else to say about it other than you lied to me and you're the last one to hear my little boy cry and little boy say I'm bleeding and and, and to see him live live and well. Oh my god, thank goodness for that video. You're an idiot. No, that video like that. Oh my god. Okay, then tell me tell me something that's truth. You didn't you didn't deny you didn't deny Okay, fine. I'm sorry I said that. Okay, maybe it is edited, but you didn't flip out when I said you're the last one to see him alive. Okay, you flipped out when I said he said that he was bleeding. So explain that to me, Tisha. As far as I know, he was alive. I'm not going to say any differently because I'm not going to be a parent. Okay, you still didn't answer the question. Now you're telling me your opinion. You told me not to give opinion. Now you're giving me opinion. Okay? I said you're the last one to see him alive and or in the house. Okay? Because you are. So now fill in the blank. Fill in the no, that's not what I think. That's the truth. And you haven't denied that one time. You think that I'm not going to say anything because what? Well, you you jump you freaking jump on me when I when I say he's in the video. He said he was bleeding. You said they edited that. So which you can't have it both ways. Are you gonna deny it? You're not gonna die because you're denying stuff you think is not true. I've already denied you what you just said. That you're the last one to see him. That I am not the last one to see him. That you're the last one to see him. Then who is? Who is it? Yeah, you told me Quincy Brown. We proved him false. Okay. That was that was easy. All I had to do was call a reporter. Okay, I didn't have to have any evidence. I just called a reporter, and she said, "Yep, he ain't been around for a while. He's been gone a minute." Okay. Okay. So who was it? You've already said that it was no one else. So why does it matter? But you just said it was. So I'm asking who it was. I am not listening. See, here you go again. You can't spin me, teacher. You can spin Facebook. You can spin the media, but you can't spin me. All right. Facebook. If you want. So many my thing, but they're on there. Yeah, I mean, fine, but you can't spin me. I'm telling you, you should know that by now. I'm not trying to spin you. What about, hey, you know what? What about the blood in the corner? Okay. What about that that came from a, that came from Gannon knocking his uh, nose. That. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the corner of his bedroom where you push the beds together. What about the blood? Oh, God. You are, you, you are just, you, you're grasping. I'm not. I saw blood, okay? You That's not grasping. I saw it. Oh, hold on a minute. Tell me, tell me again you saw it. Saw what? Tell me what you saw. Are you, are you recording me now? Go ahead, just tell me. I'll say no. I saw it. Blood in the corner of his room. Record me. I don't give a fuck, Tisha.
That's my son. That's my son's blood, and I saw it. Okay, you you proved that a that you saw it. B, you proved an identical blood. So how to get there, Tisha? You proved that. You 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 just said you're going on back. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get this straight. You're going on back. Yep, I. I saw it. You tell me whose blood it was. You were there. So there we go. You were there. What? You were part of the crime. So you tell me. No, I was not. There was eighteen people in that house. Oh, oh there was eighteen people when Gannon uh, got hurt and no. all these accidents happened, and then he. Okay. All right. Now, see, I told you you, you yeah. can't spin me, Tisha. But go ahead. I'll, I'll listen to you spin. Go ahead, spin it around. I'm not trying to spin you. I'm not trying to spin you at all. I'm saying what you, I'm, I'm just trying to get the facts from you what you're saying. One, you told me that all you and whoever else was in the middle of a supposed crime. No, what you're doing, no, 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 hold on, no, stop for a second. What you're doing is you're not focusing on the crime, you're focusing on all the people here helping to find Gannon, okay? Like that's going to fly. No, you're going to go up there and say, no, you're, it's I'm bullshit, he should. How they're gonna rip you guys this theory apart because it's a lie. Okay. And you contaminated the crime scene supposedly what you said. Okay, so, so whatever. That's what you said. But you, what you said was it was Gannon's blood. So I'm going based off the facts that you told me. You, you said, I never said that. Yeah, you did. No, no. You said it was yours and Gannon's blood. Okay? That's what you no. said. That's exactly what you said. That's what you said. You could find Gannon's blood on any car. You are lying. I never told you about any concrete. Okay. Uh, you're lying. Who said you saw it? That's going to be noted. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm writing down notes right now. You're lying. Tisha lies again. Down. Tisha admitted at the beginning of the conversation she lied 15 times. As long as you and whoever else you had in this home were in the home in the middle of a supposed crime scene. Y'all so why would you even say that if it's not a crime scene? You told me it was an accident. So is it a crime or an accident? You said it was. You told me it was the scene of an accident. So is it an accident or a crime scene? Let me, let me ask you this question then. Okay. If this was Telling me it's a crime scene. You told me it was. You told me it was an accident, and now you're telling me it's a crime scene. So that question. Real question. How in the hell? Our home. A supposed crime scene. When you guys have done nothing but betray the world. Hey, do you want me to tell you what I think or what I know? You can tell you what I think or what I know. I am. Do you want the, the what I think or what I feel or what I know for sure? Okay. Whatever you want to give me. Okay, what I think is that you did it. What I feel is that you're involved. Excuse me. I think and feel is that you did it. What I know is that you're involved somehow. Okay, that's that's the bare bones where I'm at right now. I have nothing else. You're involved to some extent. Again, and get hurt, whether it's an accident or not. There's blood all over the place down in his room. However... I saw it. Who gives a crap at this point? Because the boy's out there hurt. Okay, what I feel like and what I think is that you did it and you're trying to hide it. And you dumped his body somewhere. That's what I think. I dumped his body. Yep. In your theory that you are saying, your theory, okay, you are telling me that supposedly you think that there was some accident that someone got hurt really bad yep. inside of in the room. Here's the car, okay? I didn't say I didn't say you killed him in his room, okay? 
Why Why would, I mean, th th I already told you, and you told me I was stupid for saying this, I think an accident happened that you're involved with, and then we have made, I made the assessment, and everybody who saw the video online made the assessment, Gannon was walking kind of sluggish to the truck, and you told me I was a fucking idiot for saying that. Okay, but it makes sense if he had got hurt, okay, lightheaded, crazy, I don't know, whatever, and now he's having to walk to the truck so you can take him somewhere. Okay? Okay, this we're taking someone to do what? You tell me. No, you, you, you said you were going on your theory, so I want to hear your theory. Okay, you want to hear my theory? Okay, you took him somewhere. Okay, yeah, I'm going to tell you what I think. You took, you went around town acting all normal, left your phone at the fucking Petco on purpose, okay, and took him out somewhere God knows where and left him there. And maybe whacked him over the head with a 2 left or something. I don't know. Took him out by somewhere you said whacked somebody in the head. So I did I committed a murder. What's your thing? No, because he could have just been knocked out. Okay. Could what? He could. You could have knocked him out with a two by four, not killed him. I mean, he, if he died, I guess that is murder. I don't know. You're the legal expert here. So well, actually, let's back up a second because here's where I'm at. You're lying. Okay. Are you lying to cover yourself? Are you lying to cover for Harley? Which one is it? Harley? Yeah. Which one is it? I've already been through, first of all, since I've been at work during all y'all's episodes. So you're lying for yourself? I'm not lying for anyone. Okay. I'm not lying for a soul. But you have this whole time. The, you the first thing you said this morning to me, one of the first things was, I've lied to you repeatedly. I lied over and over and over again. And I had a point to do it. I had a reason. So what's your reason for lying now? I'm not lying. But you've been lying the whole time, so how do I know that? Everybody exactly what happened from the beginning. Yeah, but you just said they were lies. You said all that was a lie. Now it's the truth. So like it didn't like it, so therefore... Just, just make up all your stories. So now you got this theory of some food I No, that's just... Okay, but see, you're, you're not, you're still not telling the truth because you said you told everybody from the beginning. The first story from the beginning was Gannon ran away. Okay? Immediately proven false. Second story, you got raped in Gannon's room. So proven false. So you've been lying from the beginning, not telling the truth. And you're still lying. So, so I mean, what's the next lie, Tisha? I, I have a lie. You, but you, so now you're lying about saying you were lying? What, I mean, in the beginning is what I'm talking about. You just are never going to believe it. I know. You, he not, run away. Why not just, okay, then if that's what you, if that's what you want to believe, then you have to believe that you were lying the whole time. Okay, so you lied the I probably will need to get some after this. You're right. My son's out there missing. My wife just admitted to me today that she's lied to me for three weeks now. Okay, and you did. And you did lie from the, You lied to me from the beginning. All these stories you said you had a point. Okay, you still haven't told me what the point is. So now you're lying again, and we've narrowed we've narrowed it down to the other person. Either you by yourself, you and Harley, or Harley had some involvement. Who are you lying for? Really? Yeah, yeah really. That's what you think. You think that that's what you were going to do when somebody was at work? Look at you. So you're, you're defending your 17-year-old, and all I'm trying to do is defend and find my 11-year-old. Please. Oh, don't even start with me on that, because I begged you to let me adopt that child for five years, so you can you can shove that one up your ass right now, okay? You can go ahead and shove that one wherever you want to shove it, but you're just disrespecting me. Why, why don't you just why don't you just respect me and tell me what happened to Gannon? He's a freaking eleven year old child out there all by himself somewhere. He's with somebody that he don't need to be with, and you're the only one that has the truth. You. And you can and you admittedly, yes, you did. You said you lied over and over and over again. With somebody you don't need to be with. You just said that, but then you told me that. No one else was involved.
So which one is it? You tell me. You keep. You keep. You. Do you think that I have an involvement in killing? That's what you think? Yeah, absolutely, because you were there. Gannon's missing. We can't find him. Okay? Nobody would nobody would stick to the the plan this long after the whole world's looking for him. Okay? So it's you. You're the only one sticking to the plan. You're the only one in the spinning machine. You're the only one lying. Everybody else is trying to find the truth. Everybody, Tisha. Even Landon, the one that you think I'm hooking up with. She's just trying to find the truth about her baby boy. Okay? I'm glad the rest of your life with Nancy. Yes, I mean, whatever. I mean, if you think that, that's fine. Right. Like you tell me, you're entitled to a, your opinion, but there's a fact here that you were the last one to see him. I wasn't there, so I don't know anything. You know everything, and you're lying repeatedly over and over again. You didn't get raped. Gannon didn't run away. There's no Quincy Brown, Eduardo, Uncle Matt. There's no high fives. There's no Gannon jumping in his back, okay? What there is, is there is blood in his room. Okay, and he's gone, and we can't find him. That's what. And, and you were left with him and didn't come home with him, okay? And you still haven't filled any of the blanks. We, I mean, there's facts out there, okay? There's facts out there, and you won't even tell me the truth. You keep lying to me, making up some bike bullshit, okay? Gannon fell off his bike and busted his head and needed 911. Are you serious? And then as soon as I say that, we go back to the house. I mean, I don't even want to do this, okay? You're just going to continue to lie to me. Why am I even wasting my time? So when I testify on the stand, that's what I'm going to say. My wife had all the information. She chose to lie about it. I have nothing else to say. Okay? That's where I'm at. All right. Have a good day. Yeah, we're good for a break. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our afternoon break. Uh, if I can have everyone back in the jury room at, say, 325, we should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. With that, all rise for the jury, please. Thank you may all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Uh, what's the plan for when we come back? Uh, continuing with this, Judge, we still have three more phone calls potentially. Okay. All right. All right. Court will be in recess. Thank you. All right.
Fort Wheel Recall 20 CR 1358, uh, uh, People versus Letitia Stout, Director Trigger Tech, the jury have returned to the court, or is not present in the courtroom. Um, do we need Mr. Grunsing? He's here, Judge. He's in the back. Um, one thing I would just wanted to give the court an update on. We've got three of these phone calls left. I'd like to get these done before the end of today. Okay. And so I'm not going to necessarily call Mr. Grusing back up to the stand okay. um, between each phone call. Uh, the next one is 22 minutes. Then we've got a 58 minutes. And then we got a 29 minutes, which should be about right. It'll be pretty close. It's, it'll be really close. Um, but then that will allow us to jump into his interview of the defendant uh, on Friday morning. And uh, again, yeah, about five hours, that one. That one is, yeah. Okay. Yep. Is this, uh, what, uh, 58, 59? So 57, 58, and 59 are the last three. Okay. And they've already been admitted, so you can go ahead and play them. They right have been, the yeah. If you want. Yep. Um, and then do all your questioning in one chunk. Exactly. Okay. Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Um, let's go ahead and bring the jury in then. <laughs> And I'll just make a brief record of the dates and how long to call it. That's fine. I think if Shane knew about 31,000, he would. I think it would terribly absent like that. Yeah, let's keep that. Yes, it is. <laughs> let's keep that between us. Wow. <laughs> oh, I can take it anymore. Maybe he's one of them. Yes, it will. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> not, not K, for sure. I don't know about shit. Oh, is WebEx on, Your Honor? Uh, yes. Okay. I was wondering <laughs> if he was going to come in wearing a Hawaiian flower shirt today under his robe. <laughs> All right, over the jury, please. With, with, it. <laughs> with TC. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, the old guys like us. Thank you. May all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stout. Record to reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Um, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Arnold. <clears throat> Good news is we have uh, more phone calls to listen to. Bad news is only three left. Okay. <laughs> uh, so at this particular point, Judge, uh, we'd like to publish People's Exhibit 57, right. which is a recorded phone call February 17, 2020 at 2.24 p.m., previously admitted during Al Stouck's testimony. All right. And can we let the jury know how long that one is? It is 22 minutes and 18 seconds. Thank you. Uh, podium again? Yes. Hello? I didn't hear anything question mark. Oh, I said, did you want to talk about, like, did you set up an appointment for this? How much is it going to cost? No. My, here's my personal. My approach is, if you don't, in my opinion, and this is how I want it to be, so there's no, like, you know, question or anything. If you don't control the aspect of it as far as validity, checking out, but, like, I feel like you will try to take it and say that it's not what you do, or I just don't, I want the proof 100% to you. Because I know you're hurt, I know you're fit, but those things are not true what you said. They're just not true. And I don't care about a court of law because you know why? They're going to, my jury will shred it apart. I'm worried about my husband knowing 
that I did not do such a thing. All right, well. I, I care about you, and I feel like if you know that that's the truth, that I did not, then everything could be okay. Yeah, I... I, I mean, right? I mean, if you know for 100% that I did not hurt a child, kill a child, kill a two by four, whatever you might say, would it not make you feel a lot different right now? Yeah, I told you I'd stand by you with the truth, you know. Um, and I, so I, I pulled up that link, and uh, I mean, it got five stars, so that it looks legit on the surface. Um, and yeah, I mean, you hit a good, you hit a great point there about you know I, you know I am about validating things and looking into things. Um, part of that process would be you know getting some questions answered that I want answered, right? I think you can assume that, right? Okay. All right. So that being said, um, I got I, as as I was waiting on you to get back, I wrote down basically three or four questions, and I want to pose them to you now, so that way I'm not surprised when I go in there. Okay? Are you willing to do that with me? And then then we'll. You said you're, you said you're not surprised, or you need one of us, so you know the questions and I know the questions. Oh, okay. Okay, I get what you said. Yep. Yeah. So I'll ask him. You just give me. Yes, sir. It's just a simple yes or no questions, okay? Um, and then, so you're not, once again, trying to be fair to you and fair to myself that these are some of the questions that I want to answer. Um, number one, do you know where Gannon is? Yes or no? Yeah. I mean, this, but this is the questions I'm going to prove to you, too, right? Yeah. You understand? Right. You, okay. you, you can answer them now, but then you can answer them then as well. Okay. You should know. Okay, who was Gannon last with? They're, they don't ask you questions like that. Oh, you, you're right. I'm sorry. It's yes or no. Um, Do you know who Gannon was with last? Okay, so here's what I want you to be careful with. Um, do you know who Gannon was being with last? Because, right. okay, let me explain. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Have you're cool. More specific approach in that because you need to say, do you know a description or a have a picture in your mind of who Gannon was with last. Okay. Think of that. All right. How about how about th how about it this way? Were you the last person Gannon was with? Okay. Well, that 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 leads into you to ask the question of someone else. Right. Me. Right. Yeah, I know, I, and and I'm not gonna. Probably be the one phrasing the questions. I'm just telling you questions that I want answered. So, so you answered the question. Was were you the last person Gannon was with? And you said yeah. no. Okay. And I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to go take that down a rabbit trail. Okay. Did you accidentally hurt Gannon? No. Did you murder Gannon? No. Okay. Well. So I mean, that's kind of. It's just some of the questions I'm going to want to answer. So, when uh, when when are you going to be able to do this? I want to get this done as soon as possible. I'm ready to do it tomorrow. I think it, because of the publicity of this case, they'll they'll squeeze you in and make an appointment for you tomorrow. If we go up there and um, you know call them and say, hey, listen, this is the Gannon Stout case. We need a polygraph ASAP. Let's do it. Um, I, I don't know when is the earliest you can do it. I'll just take money out of the bank account and I'll pay for it. So, can you get me a, um, just like two or three times or days and times that they have available? Send them to me and I'll give you exactly which one will work best. No, no, Tisha. Tisha, this is. Talking, I have to, I don't have a way around. Okay. okay. I'm going to help people out so that I can have food and a place to stay. Okay. In pocket, but. And I the one said to do this. But I'll get, I'll, I'll even come and get you tomorrow morning. I want to do it like eight or nine o'clock in the morning. I'll come and get you at Michelle's house, okay? And I'll bring you to this place. It's Michelle, right? I'm not at Michelle's house. Okay, where are you at now? I'm staying with random people. People that reach out online, people that are following the case. Okay, well, send me your location through your phone, or send me an address or a a ten digit grid coordinate from Google Earth. I got the time, and you're telling me to. You're gonna. Yeah. yeah, because they'll, I guarantee you they will squeeze you in tomorrow. Because this this will this will be a, another star in their cap, you know, a feather in their cap. 
publicity for free? No, not for me. I want the truth. And you know what? Every minute, every second we sit here and talk about this is another minute that Gannon is in danger. I told you I would do this. And Gannon is person. All right. Well, tomorrow's the day. Okay. If not, then you're not serious about it. That's just, and I'm. I've already told you, yes. I've already said, okay. yes, yes. Uh, all right, then I, I'll set the appointment. If it needs to be the afternoon, fine, whatever. But we'll do it, okay? Tomorrow. I've already, like, I don't know why you keep saying that. You think I'm changing. I've already said yes. I also want to know what I need to be, because I saw where somewhere online it says something about eating and drinking. Oh my God. So. All right, I'll. I'll answer that for you, but I mean, why don't you plan on like a six hour window or something? Okay. And then it, I, I'm just going based off generalizations, Tisha. Come on now. I don't know the answer to that. You can Google it just like I can. I'll call them and I'll find out. And I'm I'm just saying, plan on if, if you think you're not supposed to eat for a while, then don't eat for a while. I mean, it's not a big deal. But um, I'll call them and I'll set it up for tomorrow, you know, afternoon, whatever. You just let me know where to come get you or let me know, you know, just just be there if you don't want to come get you. Okay, so now you had your questions that you wanted. And so now I have questions. So now I'm taking a polygraph? No, you're not taking a polygraph. No, okay. I'm asking you four questions. All right, go ahead with them. When you get the results that say I have passed this polygraph test, Okay. What is your course of action? Uh, these are yes or no questions, please. Okay. Is your course of action to be with your wife in marriage and your daughter and the rest of our family back to normal and figuring out who has Gannon? No. But that's not your. That's not your. That's not your approach. You said once you answer some polygraph questions, once we find Gannon. Okay. We, no. Okay. All right. All right. No. I didn't. All right. Yes or no questions. I didn't do this to you. I took your yes or no questions. What the polygraph test comes back and shows you that I am telling the truth to the questions that I had nothing to do with Gannon in any kind of way, being hurt, murdered, taken, whatever. Are you going to be with your wife? Nope. Really? So why? Yes or no questions, please. I don't want to do it. I just want you to tell me why. Because the key, the key to standing by you is the truth and Gannon. So. Um, I just told you if I passed a polygraph test, and you know I didn't have anything to do with it. I I'm trying to understand here. What? Why would you say no to being with your wife? If I, if I, if it's coming on the test that I didn't have anything to do with it, I just want to know the truth on that. I'm still going to do it so it can clear my name. I just want to know the truth from you. I'm waiting for the next yes or no questions. Come on, man. Just, just be rude with me. This is not a time to play. Games. I'm not, Tisha. You got to understand. There's two. Listen, listen. There's a lot of repair. The truth. I am. I'm trying to. I'm going to bend here again. G is the most important thing, but there's a lot of emotions. There's a lot of damage, okay, from this situation. And, and I don't, I'm not here to argue with you, okay? But there's a lot of damage from all the lies that have been told that it's going to take some time to work through, okay? I said I'll stand by the truth, and I'll stand by you with the truth. Gannon's the priority. All right, what's your next yes or no question? Do you have any intention of being back with your wife and family? No. And it's the same answer, same response as I gave you last time. Gannon is the priority right now. All right, here, here's what we're going to do. I, I respected you and answered you. No. Yeah, hold on. I respected you. I didn't put you through the Inquisition. I gave you four yes or no questions and I left it at that. You're not respecting me in that way. So I'm going to go back to question two. 
You said you were not the last person Gannon was with, so who was? Okay. I answered your questions. No, you got two or three. All right. Okay. Well, see, this is why I don't believe you. I'm going to be straight up with you. I want to do this polygraph thing. I'm willing to do it, and we're going to take it at face value. But you're not respecting me. If we're expecting respect in return. You're expecting to stay by, play by the rules. We are not playing by the rules. You're wise? No, I said there's damage. The truth? I said there's damage and we got to repair it. That's all I said. I haven't said anything about anybody to anyone in the media, social media, nothing. And if you got something else, then it's false. So. Okay, the next question. Have you filed for divorce? Nope. Let's see, here you go again, not playing by the rules. You said yes or no, that's what I said. Yeah, but you got to in put me through the Inquisition, but you're not answering my question. Who was the last person Gannon was with if it wasn't you? Because these are going to be the questions you're going to have to answer. I mean, I'm just going to be straight up with you, whether you answer them to me or not. Yeah. Well, Mr. Mr. Hotshot Baez will, okay, if you don't. So, I mean, we might, as well, we might as well do this peacefully between me and you and figure out where Gannon's at. I've already agreed to this. If, 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 if I'm agreeing to this, then I am going to have to do it. And I have no idea where Gannon's at. Why are you still being adamant that? you? That's my point. I said if you control it. Because you're still flapping down. No, if... But listen... No, but I, I this is pre-polygraph. Polygraph, I won't even be in the room. Probably not even in the building. I'll be somewhere else so you're not under any pressure. Okay? That's how those things go. It's all you and the guy asking the questions. That's you want to either, either because they didn't interview you, interview me. Myself. Right, that's what I'm saying. I won't be there. Okay? I'll pick you up, take you, drop you off, pay for it, but then I'll bounce. Okay? But you need to answer me this. As your husband... And as the father of the missing child, you had no intention of being my husband. But I still am, am I not? Okay. Point is, who was the last person that had Gannon? You said you weren't, so who was? Hello? I'm going to tell that to the person. Let's rephrase that in a yes or no question. Because I'm going to because no matter what I say to you, you're going to yell and scream at me, hang up, act crazy. He legit told me all in one day, I'm a partner killer, told me Harley had involvement, then told me this, told me that, then told me you don't have to attention. When you find a trick that your wife is not involved to be with her. Okay. She bought in one day. Okay, but did you murder Gannon? Your mind is hey, did you murder Gannon? What? Did you kill Gannon? No. Okay, then it went back to what we said. It had to be an accident. That, I mean, so you accidentally hurt him. That's, I mean, there's just, it's either or. You said that already. What did you ask? That's one of your questions, ain't it? Right. I, one of your questions? Well, no, that's two questions, but it's. Here's where I have the problem. Okay. I will pass it. And then you're going to come back to part one and still accuse me. Because you're going to say this damage and all this, you're going to accuse me of somehow still being involved. That's what you're going to do. Because you, right now, you can't accept. You have the nerve to say to me, I am not going to my wife and family at all. Regardless. If Cannon showed up on the doorstep Today, you're still gonna say that to me. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. But you know what? I'm because you're so fucking pissed. No, I'm not pissed. I'm hurt. My son's missing. I'm hurt because my son's missing, and he's hurt. Okay, because I saw his blood, and I know that if you thought I knew who took Harley, and she was missing and hurt and raped and all these things that have been alleged, okay. You, if you thought I knew that, you'd want me to tell you too. Okay, you admitted you were not the last person that Gannon was with, so that means you know at least a description, at least a name or something, and you're not telling me. 
And you need to put yourself. Okay, but that description was Quincy Brown and 15 different stories. And you already told me. You already told me. Yeah, it was Eduardo, the Mexican guy, right? Our, our Uncle Matt. Here we go again. Why don't you ask me about legit answers? Right. Legit answers right. For Did you kill Gannon? That's a legit question. No. Okay. Did you accidentally hurt Gannon? You want to keep asking me like 15 times. Like, like. So you can go ahead and get this out of your system because I'm a. Well, okay, fine, fine, fine. So you're going to be like, wow, pass this test. Yeah. Okay. You, but, but the bottom line is, the bottom line is. Yeah, let's call her. I mean, let's call Mario Povich, too. He'll, he'll help. Call him. Wait, wait, you've already said tomorrow, or whenever you're calling this thing, you've already said that. You said you wanted to do it between me and you because this is for you. No, you said that. But, but. But the truth is, the truth is, you won't tell me who because there is no who, and the who is you. Why? Okay, so here you go again. You are not even trusted, and that's why I said you control who it was because you're not even trusted in a lie detector. No, you no, you you sent me a link, and you said no to the FBI, which if I had a choice, it'd be the FBI. The like. Join the police department. Okay, please. then I don't have control. Then I don't have control. I don't have a say so. That's see, this is where we always get to our relationship. Somebody in Colorado Springs. I did. There's FBI in Colorado Springs, and you got a number. You just told me you were going to call the other people. I'm not doing the FBI because they're police. I'm doing a life. Okay. So listen. No. Listen, if the, if, the, if the who the Gator was last with, if the who is not you, then who is it? Because you, you never answer it. You never answer it. If you already made it clear that, that I'm not your wife. You already made that clear. No, actually, I, I actually, and I quote, I said, you are still my wife. I just said, we don't have a relationship right now because of all this. That's what I said. To be clear, but you're telling me, you're telling me, I mean, absolutely nothing to you. I'm a piece of crap. That's what you're telling me. Hey, yeah. hey guess what? So this whole, uh, back to this whole lie detector test bullshit. If, if you're going to pass it, who gives a fuck who gives you the lie detector test? I don't want the police involved. Because the police are already involved. What are you talking about? But go ahead. I'm sorry. Picking anybody else besides a police because I want someone who has no reason at all, at all, to be involved or anything, so that the validity of the test is complete. Yeah. Okay. You think the police care about you or me or anything? All these, all they care about, whether they're whether they're doing right or wrong, to do it, all they care about is doing it. I'm agreeing. Like, I'm going to do it and say, yes, okay, wait. Yeah, fine. Let's do it. And I told you to let me pick you up. You won't tell me where you are. I told I told you all these different things. I tried to I tried to do one tomorrow. You said two, three days from now. 9, eight, 9 a.m. Three different times before I said. 9, 9.30 and 10. 9, 9.30 and 10. That's what I'm going to tell them, Okay. I'm you call me back and tell me what at time they have there. Hey, all right. Know. All right, so Thank listen, you. when I call you back, while you're waiting on me to call you back, I want you to think about this, all right? Are you ready? Are you ready sure. for this? What happens if you fail this polygraph test? Then what? Okay, but you need to think about what if you fail. I need to think about that. There's no doubt in my mind. Trust me. Okay. I want to be adamant to you, telling you, calling you back after you said those things to me. Do you think I'd be wasting my time to try to prove to a man who was fucking just treating me like this? Hey, you were also adamant about Quincy Brown, remember? Until the news, until the news reporter, not the polygraph, the news reporter shot, shot that full of shit. To the person that I care about, the person that I love, with something in me. You care about Gannon? He knows that. You care about Gannon, or am I the only one you care about? Of course, I can. Well, I 
care about you first in order to care about our children. Okay, so if you truly care about me, okay, if you truly care about me and all this stuff, all, no, listen to me. If you truly care about me and want all this stuff that you tell me every day that you want and send me all these pictures, if all that really means anything to you, first of all, you sent me a picture without your ring on the other day, so that's bullshit. I'm calling bullshit on that. Second of all, yeah, then you told me... You told me you were wearing them, and then you sent me a picture without them. So, anyways, so. I said I've been wearing my ring. Oh, okay. I said, but, but the police have confiscated them, and you won't help me get any of them back because they in the car that's in your name that you probably already have back. Yeah, I wish. Um, I'm still paying on it, by the way. I don't have it. So, just so you know. Um, I'm totally glad to pay on it, her car. And not have it? Right, okay. Um, Anyways, if you if you really cared about me, if you really cared about, uh, uh, let's cut this shit off because this is ridiculous. If you really cared about me, you would have lied to me fifteen times, and you wouldn't be lying to me now, okay? And that's it. Okay, that's good, Crystal. Your, uh, Your Honor, the next one is People's Exhibit 58, which is February 19th, 2020 at 12.11 p.m. This was previously admitted during Al Stock's testimony, and it's 58 minutes and 41 seconds. All right. Yeah. And you know, I wanted to just give the jury just a brief snippet of that. The first six minutes is that same sort of, you can't really tell what's happening. So I'm just going to move it forward to the point where you can hear it. Is there any objection from the defense? Okay. He worded it to know personally because, like, basically, it was just saying, you know, if I know someone personally, then that means I'm coming to the station. So, so I don't understand what you mean by that. You, you had him reworded or he reworded it? No, you're right. When you're in there talking to someone, that was the question I said. Like you, one of the questions that you wanted. Yeah. I said to you that I would have to say, you know, certain things. So then he worded it as, you know, personally, he's involved with your stepson's disappearance. Right. And I said no. And I was telling the truth. So what do you mean by that? Albert, there's nothing I mean by that. What I mean by that is I can come to y'all, which I'm, I'm totally fine with, you know, having an attorney, you know, showing this to law enforcement, whatever. But at this point, I'm just going to show it, get it verified, the public see, not see it, but hear it. And and that's what I, that's all I can do for now because anything else I've done, I've been turned in to be a sober person. So nothing else I can do can help because I'm just not a valid source or person that anyone wants to care about help information. That can help. And that's been proven. Yeah. What do you what do you mean by that's been proven? I thought you gave them information that they're using in the search. Okay, I did. However, so that makes that makes you be valid if you, if you gave them information and they're using this. Yes. Yeah, no matter what information that I give them, they would not be searching places they are based on that information. Keep the normal law enforcement agencies, like the like the little girl in South Carolina. She, they took those steps immediately. They shut off the neighborhood. They shut off any crossing sections. 
they even went as far as because it was an easy section of crossing over. They shut off the they shut off the state box. Okay, but where did you say for them to look if they're not looking where you said? They don't care what I say, Albert. I care. They want to hate me. I care what you say because I don't. I don't want to hang anybody. I just want Gannon back, so I absolutely care what you said. Yeah. It's been a hard, hard month for everybody, right? Right. Right. I mean, yeah. this time I, last month, we were getting ready to get off a girl's road. Proud of the time of our lives, right? Right, but... But yes, and Tisha, I know that we were we were on a cruise and we had a good time. But that you totally skipped past my question. Like, what did you say? Where did you say for them to look? They, they didn't ask me anywhere specific to look. I'm telling you that the law enforcement in in South Carolina took those approaches based on what was told to me. But what did they, you tell them? You're 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 telling me what they didn't do. Tell me what you did. I don't care about them. Ernie told on for with the state. I'm not going to go through this again with you. The You're father. not going to tell me? The father of the child? He knew, and it wasn't good enough for you. No, I did not know. You've never told me. Okay. Oh, my God. No. You told me nobody else was involved. You told me I was making up stuff. So I'm not going down that route. No, I, I'm not. I talk about any of that. None of that matters. The, the other person, none of that stuff matters right now. I want to know where you told them to look that they're not looking. I, I, I never said I told them to look where they're not looking. But you said, that. yes, you did. You said you gave them information that they're not using. Albert, based upon my statement, they would have took the same methods that the police department took in South Carolina in that situation. They would have immediately stepped in and shut off everyone. They found a good time for one person. And look where we're at. We're at Wednesday, February 19th. Wednesday, February 19th. You're telling me, yes, it's it's 23 days now. You're right. It's 23 days. Where, but where did you tell them? What information did you give them that they're not paying attention to, like in South Carolina? That's not what I said. There yes, you go again. But that is exactly what you said. You said you gave them information that they're barking up the wrong tree and they're not doing like they did in South Carolina. That's exactly what you said. Yes, they're not doing like they did in South Carolina. But what does that mean? They want. They should have shut the neighborhood down. Why? They want. Why? Okay, see? Never no, but that's what you're telling me what should have happened, but not the information. Giving it yeah. to you, and you haven't supported me. You've told everybody the complete opposite. All I have to do, I like how you're sticking by me. I can't. I can't hear you. What? What? Why should they have shut the neighborhood down? What's in the neighborhood that matters? Nothing. Then why should they have shut it down? That's that's that's, that's just the process that they should have done. What about all this stuff they keep finding and asking me about it from the house? What stuff? Like this, 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 all this random bullshit. I mean, I don't know. I mean, tell you keep saying you keep saying the same thing. You keep saying random bullshit, but you won't tell me. Yeah, but but you know what? Ask me a question. I'll tell you if I know what it is. How do I know somebody's not taping you right now? Because, yeah, because I they, I just, I've seen all these pictures and all these things that they're asking me, is this Gannon's, is this from the house? And that, if that gets out, then, I, I mean, we might never find Gannon. Albert, I never spoke equal. All right. I can't hear you. Albert, I never spoke equal. Albert, I never spoke equal. Albert, I never spoke equal. Albert, I never spoke and they're probably going to get in trouble for obstruction. But the lady that Amy Bowman has been talking to has already been on this and got one person doing it. Oh, and they're they going to come after a lot more. So I haven't went and posted any of this stuff. Well, listen, I'll tell you one, listen, I'll tell you one thing that I've seen that is, is 
Well, almost absolutely from my house. Remember that, remember that board that I was making those foot or those shoe uh, compartments out of? Board? Yeah, that particle board, that big, big sheets of it that I was going to make that thing for Harley for her shoes, remember? That I made the one and painted gray. You know what board I'm talking about? You know that big sheet of board? Like, yeah. yeah, so they got a piece of that from the house they found somewhere. Piece of particle board? I mean, what does that mean? That yeah, I, that you. I, that's what I'm asking you. What that means? Why a piece of wood from my house is found out in the middle of nowhere, and I see a picture. And I, in the middle of and I see a picture of it. Okay, I. I mean, they didn't tell me where they found it. They just said, "Does this look like it's from your house? Does this look like it might be Gannon's?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it looks like it's from my house. I got all kinds of stuff like that at my house." How could I have it even been there? So I don't know anything about any wood. Tisha, you know all the wood at, at the house, all that stuff. I understand. I know the wood. But you guys watched me leave. I didn't leave with any wood. Well, there was wood in the back of the truck. The whole pile of wood in the back of the truck. But was there a big particle board that you were talking about? No, it wasn't a sheet. It was a piece of it that they showed me a picture of. Just a piece. Then, I mean, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get rid of any of your any of your board or anything like that. Well, what did you get rid of anything? No, I didn't get rid of anything. Nothing. If someone has took something from your house that you've been there, then someone took it when all those people were there. I haven't even been there, touched board, nothing. So, okay, if you didn't take anything like that board, wood, anything, and get rid of it in that area, why were you in that area? In what area? The area where the truck was seen at, the area where you were searching. I don't, I mean, I, I'm guessing, I'm assuming this picture that you showed me came from that area. That they're searching? Right, the area you talked about, that bike accident or whatever, that area that you went to, and you told me you went to, and you also told me you told them you went to. Are you talking about County Line Road? Uh, yes, County Line Road and wh wherever they're searching at. I don't know the exact areas. County Line Road. Yes, why were you there? What 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 purpose did you have to go to Petco and then to go to County Line Road and then back to Petco? Because I was going to go. Janet was asking about the castles. Because remember the time we went riding and there was castles and he gave me his grandma who had just left was talking about the castles? Castles? Remember that, like, we took the back road when she was with us one time, and it was, like, these old little castles. No, Grandma, Mom, my mom was never with us when we did that. Well, you, never. you said something about Grandma would like these or something like that. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's what we were talking about. I said I was taking the back road because you could take that road and drop off because if you go back and look at the traffic cameras, 25 was pretty busy. So I took that road on that back road. I said something. I was like, hey, I was like, remember we one day? He's like, oh, yeah, about the castles. And I couldn't find the road. I couldn't find the castles. Okay, I mean, so you went to look at castles, then what? I drove up towards going to Castle Rock. Like that back road, I think it turns into like, I don't know, what is that, like 105 or something. And I couldn't figure out how to get back to 25 from there, which wasted a lot of my time. Why couldn't you figure out to get back to 25? I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to get back to 25. You didn't have GPS? I didn't have my phone. Right, right. I forgot. I'm sorry. I have my watch. Okay. But the problem with getting it on my watch is that you can't get it at the start. You can't hardly really keep up the words and where you're going. It'll work if you do it on your phone. Right. They should know this because my watch is good. People are making this big deal about freaking phone or not. The watch is going to be the same way a phone does. So get the, I want to tell them, get the fuck out of here, dumb. Yeah. 
Right, right, you're right. I mean, that's not, I'm not stupid. Like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm going to have one phone, but I got a fucking watch with me. I'm not stupid. I didn't have anything too high. So you just went out there to ride randomly to look at castles? That is not what I did. I was going to go to Castle Rock real quick. Okay. I've already said that. So if anybody put any kind of boards or something out there, whatever the hell it was, maybe it was somebody who was house everything. So somebody was in the house and they took the board and took it out there where you were at? Because Unless someone did that, I didn't take any boards unless something fell off the truck. Okay. Why would something fall off the truck if it was all down in the truck? I'm just, I'm just saying to you. I'm just saying to you. I mean, I don't know. So did y'all make it to Castle Rock? No, I just told you that I didn't know how to get back to 25. Okay, but you had to at some point, right? Some point I did. Yeah, I don't remember when because it's been freaking how many weeks. Right. Okay, so, so, no, 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 hold on, hold on, one more question. No, you're right, I'm not, I'm not. I just want to know where again and got out the truck. Because, where did he get out the truck? Yeah, was not at the house, so don't say that. So where did he get out the truck? Can I tell you something? Yeah, tell me. If you think, he got out of the truck, wherever you think over there. Y'all are over there doing all your searches. Okay. All right. You're you're right. You're right. So you're saying he never got out the truck. So I need to call them back and tell them to look for him in the truck. Again, what do you mean look for him in the truck? Well, you said he never got out the truck. Gannon was laying down playing the switch in the truck. So I mean, I, I don't know what the question is. I haven't done anything to throw out that board or how that you said it may have flew out. Did Gannon throw it out, you think? Now, if there was a board or something, it could have been I, I don't remember to be honest. You don't remember how it got out of the truck? The board, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it got thrown out. I don't know. I really don't remember. Okay. Well, I don't remember. I don't understand what is the board not doing anything. Well, I don't know. I don't think they would show me a board if it wasn't relevant. I don't know. Then you just said they showed you a board. Did this come from your house? So this is where I don't. You talk about you don't. No, I'm recording you or something you said or listening, whatever. Supposedly, this is what blows my mind. How would police know if, if if it's relevant or if it's my wood or if it's my Gannon's sock or or whatever? They gotta ask questions. You're okay. So they have to the socks. Now now the sock been thrown out. I mean, yeah. So how does how did the sock get thrown out? That's another question. Okay. Well, I mean, how do you know it's Gannon's sock? I mean, socks are socks. I mean, you know, I don't know. Unless they got DNA off of it. Okay. Then if they got this, they should say to you that this is getting a sock unless they do work. Hundred percent it's a sock. What about if what about maybe or maybe not I saw a picture of carpet from the house? 
Yeah. Carpet. Yeah, the same. Carpet. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I didn't see. No, I saw a picture of it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't say it's in the woods. I'm just saying maybe I saw a picture of the same carpet that's from the house. So. I didn't say in the woods. I said I saw a picture that look maybe maybe not is the carpet from our house. Okay. So what, what was it? Was it like a big piece of carpet? What? I mean, I don't know. I mean, come on. I mean, I saw a picture. I mean, I didn't. There wasn't a ruler next to it or anything. Okay. I mean, I've seen twenty to thirty pictures. I mean, I'm just maybe even more. I just remember. I mean, I remember a board. I feel like I may have seen it, but the carpet's been all over the, the story anyway. So, I mean, it's, no. I, I could be put, like you said, what? Do you talk about the carpet piece that was taken out of the garage? Is that the carpet you're talking about? I'm, I don't know. I, I, That's the only carpet that would have been taken out of the garage and got blood on from his foot. And I already told you this. Oh, did he, and you said he cut his foot on the wood, or uh, your Facebook also said he cut his foot on a, a tool. I don't know. I, I don't know if it was a tool or wood block. He was looking, but you're looking for that daggone thing that you have. What thing? The thing that has the little uh, holes in it or whatever, and you can like uh, slice stuff. You were looking for something to slice stuff? What do you, what do you mean by that? Cut the wood with stuff with something that has holes in it. You jump. Is that what? Like bridges. Bridges. Like to, to make the wood smooth? It has a handle on it. We were looking for that because we thought that that has a little handle on it or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? I, I think so. That. Cause, you know, the dogs eat the piece of carpet, eat the piece of wood on the side of the thing. Yeah. Like shave that down so we were looking for that thing. Oh yeah, the, the, the little, like hand plane or whatever that you, I make the wood smooth with. The dogs are beating the side in the kitchen, so I was trying to refuse the tea. I asked him to eat over these tools around. We're both trying to figure out, and we were trying to get the Yeti down. Yeah, that's what we're trying to figure out. Yeah, we're both trying to figure out. Did you ever find it? The piece. The wood, I mean, not the wood, the um, the plane, the thing with the handle on it. No. But I thought you just said that's what he cut his foot on. I did not. I said he was going to get that and stepped on something in there. I don't know what he stepped on while he was helping it because I was trying to get a head. We were unloading stuff out of the car. I was going to go sell stuff online. I already said this. I was going to sell the Yeti online because we never use it. I was going to finish selling more clothes and stuff online. I mean, did you? So, are you going to send me the results of this poly or not? I'm not going to send them to anyone. I would like to meet you to let you see them. You'll meet me to let me see them? I would like to let you go. So, when I have this thing with uh, uh, Nancy Grace, because they're going to be verifying the validity of it, they are going to have all that ready so that the public can hear it. So I tried to talk to you first about it. He didn't want to talk to me. He didn't want to say anything. And then, whatever, I get it. Angry, hurt, got all this going on. I get it. Okay. So then I took that in front of him. Fine then. I'll do it this way. Fine then. Be then. It goes from there. But then I get on the phone with you, and now it's like the socks and this and, and, and that, and who knows what. Right. That, now you know. Now you know how I feel. There's all these things, right? All these things, and it's like, okay, well, I mean, what did I do? What did I do wrong? I, I, I didn't never say you did anything wrong. I, the only thing I've ever come to the conclusion was that it was an accident. But, but. All the way blatantly the other day. No, I, I, 
I asked you. I asked you. Listen, you guys are filled with feelings for the wrong person. Still don't tell And they're not going to find me putting the beginning somewhere for what you guys think. But where's the first thing? You're not going to find that because I didn't do that. Well, what did you do? Hello? What? I mean, if you didn't do that, you, what did you do? Or, I mean, who is the person that did something? That's the, that's the missing link here to Gannon. Y'all didn't want to listen the first time. You're so I'm li I'm, listen, I'm all ears now. I'm sitting here in Starbucks making a fool of myself. Okay? Yourself. Because, because I'm sitting here trying to hide in the corner so nobody's looking at me. Okay? I'm listening now. Tell me what happened. What did you do, or who, or who has Gannon? I mean, if you love me like you say, you'll you'll make you'll help me stop having to look at all these pictures and hear all the stories and watch the news every night. Okay, that's love. Love is also when I tell you that you. Listen, instead of just being like, oh, yeah, that really happened. Okay, I'm okay. I'm listening right now. No. You got my attention right now. You might not start cursing me out. No, I won't. I'm not in Starbucks. I'm not doing this. I'm 95. <laughs> everybody that takes a lie to take her test who lies fails. Only people who are like schizophrenia and things like that. Have problems with it. Okay. I get it. I clearly is a victory. And again, I know you said I haven't seen this, but you're about to because it, it, this grace, okay, is having someone verify so that it can be Okay. So it's so, so coming. All right. I get the best with it if it was fucking close to you. Okay. All right, so that being said, the questions were asked. I, am I going to tell the truth? Yes, the truth. Did I accidentally hurt him in any physical way? Told the truth. Told the truth. I mean, did you inflict any harm on him in any way? No, told the truth. So, did they ask you if this was an accident? If what, did you accidentally? That was the first thing I just said to you. Hurt him in any physical way. Did they ask you, did he accidentally hurt himself? Oh, no, because they only give you a certain control group. But then it was then you got to go into that and being like, are you involved in your stepson's disability? Did they ask you, was he injured? They, not if you did it, but it, was he injured? Did they ask you that? Okay, so here, this is why you're going to always have a problem. With no, I'm just asking you the questions because you won't show me the, the results. If you I begged you. I begged you. I beg you to meet me. I begged you to just spend one night with your wife and you could never see everything. I begged you. You're dirty like I'm a piece of crap. Listen, tell me now. I'm listening, okay? Just tell me now. Just tell me everything. You're talking about Nancy Grace and lie detector test. All that is doesn't matter to me, okay? You came up with the idea for lie detector test, and I said, yes, do it, okay? But now you won't show me the results, but you said it was for me. So, so listen. No, you did. You did. You said it was for me. You won't you. Hey, you lied to me and told me you were going to meet me. And then I get dressed and everything, and then you ignore my emails that night. You think it's not hard on me that I got to know my husband is fucking another bitch? You think that's hard? You think it's not hard for a father not to know where his son is? I mean... I know it's hard.
but you didn't deny that one, did you? No, I, there's no reason to deny it. It's just not true. I'm not playing that game. But there is a truth here that you're ignoring that Gannon's missing, and you have information. And I'm listening. I'm listening. You said you did. To you guys. I'm giving it to you. I'm sick. And listen, I'm sick and tired of being alone. And the way for me to get past that is for me to get the information I need, and I know you have. And I'm listening. And I'm not going to judge you. I just want the information. I don't care what happens. I want my son. Okay, I really don't care. If you're if you're not guilty of anything, then then you're not guilty of anything. I I that's not what I'm worried about. I really don't care. I don't care who did what. I just want my son home with me now. That's what matters to me. And, and I've even offered to help you, to stand by you, if you just tell me. I can't hear you. I didn't say you did it. I just said, tell me the information. I covered it up. So no accident, you covered it up. So you didn't do anything. And there was no accident. So but I can't hear you. Double accident I can't hear you. Albert. I can't hear you. Hear me. I cannot hear you. I hear you in the background. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. He said, there's no accident. Do you think, in your mind, that I'm going to tell you an accident happened and I panicked, didn't know what to do, and just threw him side the road? Okay, if that's not the case, then... So, so it's kind of two options here. Either something happened on accident or something happened on purpose. Okay? Either he hurt himself or you hurt him. I mean, you kind of got to paint the picture for me here. Either you killed him or it was an accident how he got hurt i mean those are the things that you got to decide and how you approach this okay either of those do you see what i'm saying but some but the the part then then fill in the blank he he obviously got hurt you told me that okay he got hurt somehow but you won't you won't tell me anything else albert i've already told you this is what's gonna happen i'm gonna tell you again do you know what you're gonna do you're going to tell me a lie. This is a stupid fucked up story, and we're back to blaming it on someone else again. That's what you're going to tell me. No, listen, listen. I, I, I honestly, let me back up. Let me start over. I really don't care if you tell me the truth or not. I'm, I'm past that point. I just want to know how I can get Gannon home. How do I know how you can get Gannon home if someone else is involved? How do I know that? This is where you, you, this is where you have this disconnect with me. Tisha, you gotta understand. Until, until you can stand there, and you need to be at the. You should be telling this to Why? Why not do this? Listen to her. I've told them that. Okay, I've told them that. I've told them that you're, you're a school teacher. You've been babysitter. You, I mean, why would all these people trust you with their kids, and then you do something like this? But the problem, the disconnect is, you know something, if not who, and I don't really care who. Okay. I just want to know where Gannon's at and how we can find him. So you can tell me any, you can, you can throw out any random name, Johnny Tremaine, if you want to, whatever kind of name you want to. I just want to point to where Gannon's at. I mean, okay. the truth so, is, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. The truth is so far beyond me right now. The only truth I care about is where Gannon is. I, I don't know where Gannon is. So no matter what I say to you, you're still going to get the same answer in the end. I don't know where he is. Okay, so how do we get to who took him? Well, you know, we should have been doing this like three weeks ago. I've been a week now talking to you, and you still won't tell me this. You see? Albert? I, I don't want to. Sorry. I told you. I went that way. I already told you, I, I told the people I went that way. Me. Innocent people don't tell people where they went. They just don't. Listen, just give me something. Just give me a guess. Like I said, the truth is, the only truth that matters is bringing Gannon home and where he's at. Just... Yes, Albert, 
Yes, absolutely. Shigana is not in Colorado. Your guess is that he's not in Colorado. Correct. Okay. Why? What makes you guess that? Because Tisha did hurt him. Okay. Didn't dispose of him. Okay. Anything like that. Okay. So Tisha was in Colorado with nothing. And you guys have ran up all these places where y'all think I've been or whatever. And you haven't found Gannon. So where's the connect to put those two together? So if you had a guess, where would he be at? Like if you you said you guessed he's not in Colorado, I I don't disagree with that because they've looked and searched for three weeks and not found a damn thing other than some random pictures of some bullshit. Okay, they haven't found Gannon. So if you had to guess where he's at, where do you think he's at? Okay. Hello. Yes. Answer my question. If you if if you had to guess where he's at, you said he's not in Colorado, or you guess he's not. Where would you guess he's at? Your best guess. Probably somewhere. I mean, scary as it sounds, probably not even in the United States. What What makes you guess that? I I don't know. That's my guess. I don't have a reason for my guess. That's why it's a guess. I just don't. That doesn't make any sense, especially because no, no, I'm no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself, really. I mean, if that's your guess, then that's your guess. I mean, do you think Landon took him to Mexico? Because you keep saying, or out of the United States, do you? Because you keep saying she's involved. It's perfect. I'm not going to ever say anything. No, no. Not your wife anymore. Oh, listen, she's not my wife, so you're my wife. So I hope you're not talking bad about yourself. Yeah. I mean, you can yeah me all you want. That's the truth. But I mean, it just you you guess that he's not in the United States, but you keep saying she's involved. How could she get him out of the United States? Hello. She. I don't care what you can tell. Until I'm blue in the face. She's a, in my opinion. She's involved in my opinion. Okay. And her deal went wrong. And now she is losing her mind and wanting to do everything she can to keep the finger pointed at me. That is what I feel. Because she wanted a plan to get the kids back, for Gannon to come back. Oh, you're not being safe by letting them stay home alone. That was that was probably going to be the first thing. You had them at home. You had them home alone or whatever. That's exactly what happened. And I'm against the world trying to prove it because I don't even have my husband on my side for it. Oh. But I've told y'all along. I'll work with you. I'll stand beside you. Yeah, it is. It's working together to find Gannon. That's the only thing that matters right here. Well, you've worked with her. Yeah. And I mean, Aren't you staying in the same hotel with her? Nope. There are pictures to have your foot shoes all in them. Well, good. Because I'm there with my daughter to put my daughter to bed doesn't mean anything. I told you the whole time I was in a separate hotel room. You. Well, no, that's her daughter, too. So we split time. And I don't have to justify myself to you about that. It's her daughter. It's my daughter, and we're splitting time. We're helping take care of because guess what? Guess what's going on with Lena? Her brother's missing. Have you thought about that? Lena? Yeah, and Lena Lena's brother's missing. And she she gave her statement that said, I love you, Bubba, and I miss you. Come home. Okay. Yeah. And it, I mean, and I could go, I could take that down a rabbit trail, but I don't really want to do that right now because I don't want to piss you off. Take so, it down a rabbit trail. Yeah, you want me to? Really? Why would you take what a child said down a rabbit trail? 
No, not what she said, what another child said about it. But I, I don't even want to go there because I'm not trying to do that. And look, okay, told you that. Because you know why? You've already, you picked, your biological children mean the most to you. And obviously so do yours. Like, so do yours. That's just life. Okay? That's just life. Okay? So there's no beating these kids up over this. Yeah, okay. I did not want Carly to stay there with you with Landon being there. Oh, yeah. I, I would have so that she could have stayed in her home, yeah. operated, stayed at work, everything. Yeah, okay. As long as I was able to know she was okay every day, but I was not doing it with Landon. Yeah, okay. I, that, like I said, that's a rabbit trail I don't want to go on because I don't want to bring an innocent child into this, you know, like somebody else did. So. Well, well, that's the truth. well, there's a there's a lot of truths involved in that that we're not going to get into right now. But you know what? Something that that's been bothering me from the day Gannon went missing. Okay, that text that you that that was sent to me from his phone was complete bullshit. Okay, text. the text he sent to me about you know bath salts and all this shit. It sounds like a great story to me, but it's not Gannon. Okay, yeah. Okay, so my question is. What? Now you're going to get Mike's theory. Oh, here comes Mike's theory. Go ahead. Mike's theory? What is Mike's theory? Let me hear it. Uh, Mike's right. theory is that I gave a, a, a Gannon bath sauce. No, no, that's, I was never even going there. My, my, my question here is that absolutely wasn't Gannon sending those texts. I know. Okay. So my question is this. Did you send them or did somebody like force you to send them or somebody else was involved and they sent them? I mean, tell me about the bath salts because that's not Gannon. Okay. That's just not Gannon. And I didn't send them either. Okay. So who did? I don't know. Was, did somebody force you to send them? I don't know, Albert. She just said you didn't send them. Then I asked if somebody forced you to send them. You said you don't know. Okay. Yes. Until you, until you are yes. on my team. Okay. I'm trying to be, but you're not working with me. It's not like this is not like every single other situation in our marriage. Okay, where it's like I give in 100, percent and then you give me a little bit here and there, just like with the money. Remember, I had to tell you how much I loved you and put your picture on Facebook for you to tell me about the money that you took. Not Facebook, but Instagram. Remember that eight, that eight or nine thousand dollars that you took. I mean, but it's the same thing you're trying to do here. Picture on Facebook? No, Instagram. I said Facebook, but Instagram. You're the only one. When you when you took the money, it was like, oh, you don't love me. You're not. You're hiding me. But the, the point is here, you're trying to get me to go all into you without anything from you. And that's just not how this works. Okay. It's just not how it works. So in this situation, it's not money, it's not clothes, it's not an item, it's not a picture, it's a person, okay? So that's the buy-in. The buy-in is the person. You give me what I need to find Gannon, and you you got a little bit of buy-in from me. I already passed by the and you, you already told me you still didn't want nothing to do with me. So no, 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 you didn't. You told me you told me you did, but I haven't seen it. You won't see you'll show it you'll show it to Nancy Grace, but you won't show it to Al Stout. You asked you to meet. You wouldn't. I've asked you to meet, I've asked you to show up. I mean, did, did you wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Did you like it? Please spend time with your wife is what I said. That's all I said. And like you went on this thing, like, and you know that it bothers me because I'm like, I know that you are sitting over here getting. This is exactly how Landon wanted it. All no, I, no, hold on. Let me tell you, the, the buy-in here is also that the 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 poly. That's bullshit. You didn't come to Denver and do a poly. <laughs> okay. Oh. I set it up, and my card never got charged. Yeah, you told me you couldn't give them the name, so I scheduled my own. Oh, okay. So now the story's changing. Oh, yeah. Changed. I paid five hundred dollars. Okay, send me the credit card receipt. Please, yeah. God, you did it. Give me the results and give me the credit card receipt showing that you did it. So, it's, it's, it's cool. I will see. I will meet. Listen, Nancy Grace might believe it, but I don't believe it. Okay. Okay. Fine then. 
fine. But if Nancy Grace don't believe it and she and her crew don't verify it, and she's been hurt, so, so now you're saying she's a liar? It's like, okay. Is she a liar? Is she a liar? I don't know nothing about no Nancy Grace. I don't even know how that's even relevant. Okay. Okay, here, right here. I, I'm I'm gonna send it to you. Let me ask you this. Uh, While you're sending that to me, you want a future with me? Yes. What is our future going to look like without Gannon? Yeah. Answer that for me. And think before you give me some bullshit, think long and hard about what our future looks like without Gannon. Well, I don't have any involvement in Vienna, and I feel like that proving it with the polygraphs, answering questions and trying to get people on the right track of looking, I, the future should be together. And it definitely takes a lot, a lot, a lot of help from Jesus Christ. And praying that every single day, as hard as it may be, that it will be one of those things where people come home or whatever. But he can't, you say come home. He's not a right. runaway. He's Somebody's got him is what you said. Okay, that meaning that plenty of times that people have done this and something happens to someone, they take them and tie them up in basements and all this stuff. And then there are good stories to this. There are. You, you're not convincing. I asked you what our future looks like without Gannon and you just went on some tangent about you didn't do anything. I said that means we're supportive and we work together to keep every effort in finding Gannon. If it means we have to join organizations together to help other people find their children while we're searching for Gannon. If it means that everything we do from building stuff or, or setting up uh, monuments or things like that for people to come and be like, hey, can you help? Like, we have help. Okay, all right. All right. That's our future because that's a greater plan that God could have. Okay, so, okay, fair enough. So, our together starts now. It doesn't start when Gannon doesn't come home, okay? Our together starts now. So, start with the bath salts. That was bullshit, wasn't it? No. It wasn't? So, Gannon sent that to me about bath salts. Okay, so. Because no, but I want you to I, I want you to understand why I ask you that because we know the friend was bullshit because he didn't leave to go to a friend's house, okay? And the bath salts were directly involved with the friend because the friend asked him about the bath salts. So if there is no friend, then okay. there is no bath salts. There is, and here's why. So there is a friend, or there is bath salts. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm listening. I'm sorry. The bath salts. Yours off in the spot. When I talked to Gannon, Gannon clearly said that they had talked to him about basketball at school during his, uh, like, doing that drug thing, right? The one that happened uh, weeks before he went missing? Right. Okay. He said he, already, he, said he already knew about basketball during this time. He already knew. He knew what they could do dangers, and things like that. However, someone did tell him that if they could bring bath salts, because it was part of this challenge, that he would get to play with them. He didn't. Gannon didn't want to do anything with bath salts. In fact, I even showed Gannon how bath salts can be good. Meaning, I said, 
when you went and did your bath bomb, if you would have put bath sauce in there, it kind of helps you breathe a little. It helps you relax. Anna didn't have any intentions to go eat or snort or whatever bath salts. Or at least not from my opinion, I don't think he did. I think he just sincerely wanted to play with whoever this was. So why? So this was when did he when did they ask him about this? About the bath salts. When, when did the thing come up with the friend? Because Another thing about Gannon is he, you know, like say the puberty class, as soon as he hears something, he comes home typically that night and talks about it. So he waited two, three days to talk about it. He came in and talked about the puberty. Came in and what? He came in and talked about the I can't hear you. He came in immediately and talked about Friday. Immediately. To you? When he came in. Okay, but and you didn't mention it to me Friday? But he said when he was talking that they're not good for you. Right. There was no, he didn't say anything like, hey, I'm about to go get but, the sauce. Right. Oh, no. But, but you're, okay, but you're, you're a good mom. Why would a, why would a good mom not tell, you know, her husband, you know, the father of the child that day, hey, Gannon asked about bath salts. We probably need to address this because you usually do that. So you wait. So you, like I didn't think about so it. You waited till he was missing to text me about bath salts. No, I sent you. What are you talking about? I sent you to. You sent me the message about bath salts. And I said to you, I said yes. He came in last night. Go read your messages. Okay. I said, okay, but that. But last night from that message, the message was Monday. Okay, so you just said last night being Sunday. But then a second ago, you told me Friday. So did he? It's Friday talking about it. Okay. Yes. But you said he asked you Sunday. You just said he asked you Sunday. Sunday, did we have any? Come on. Having any are different. Come on, Tisha. So even, 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 so Friday, so Friday, he comes in and asks you about it, and they're bad. And you, we all know how he is about bad stuff, okay? He hates it. His mommy does bad stuff, he thinks. Mike does bad stuff, okay? So Friday, he tells you, you guys have the conversation of bad stuff, bath salts. And he still comes back Sunday and asks you, do you have any? The bad stuff was not just bath salts. It was in general. But you just, you just said it was... He was telling me about the things that people were talking about, because apparently his class is a halfway decent class, like good kids. Okay, but when they go outside, in which one of the moms, I know who she is, and if I could show you a picture, her little boy is in the opposite class that Ann is in, and he's just a nightmare. Okay, so I guess on recess or outside, they have conversations about this. And all he was talking about is the people that were talking about bad things. That's it. He didn't have any, he didn't say to me, hey, I'm going to whatever. I'm telling you, someone peer pressured him that they could hang out and play. Just a thing. Peer pressure. Gannon had no intentions of doing nothing but playing at somebody's house. Whose house? I've made that clear to you. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But that's all that's not like Gannon. that's not like Gannon either. So do not tell us. Well, that is the truth. Okay. Because you can sit here and say some things are not like Ian, but we've caught him doing certain things, okay? Like what? When? He will catch children, do some things, and we have to be like, can't always say in our life, that's not like them. We need to be instilled in them and hope that they make the best decisions when they are crossed with these things. But the past sauce has completely nothing Nothing to do with what Anna was going to do. Anna was not going to go to anything bad with bath salts. But hey, listen, I, I don't, my battery's getting low, so I just want you to know that if, if my battery cuts off, I'm not changing my, my theme here that together, one of the first things together is you give me these polygraph results, okay? And I agree that you can speak when I need this. No, you send it to me and then I'll meet you. I have not 
sending it to you. Okay, then we're not together. We're not we're not together in this. I am not sending a copy. Tisha, I need you to send me a copy of the of the, the polygraph results or you don't it's not clear to me that we're together in this. Cut my phone off. That's the end of that one, obviously. Um, the next one is 29 minutes. I think it's up to you. I mean, we can start it or, or do it. Friday. We can do it on Friday. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Third. We might have more votes if we asked other people. <laughs> All right. Um, with that, again, ladies and gentlemen, we will have uh, our uh, evening break, uh, and I'll see you on Friday morning. Again, don't discuss case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Don't do your own independent research about any aspect of this case. Um, stay offline uh, regarding this case. You can still go do your Amazon shopping. Just don't start looking for anything about this case. Let people help you avoid any exposure of opinions or anything like that. Uh, and we will see you back on Friday morning at 9 o'clock. All right, to the jury, please. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Uh, is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? What's your courtroom um, going to be like tomorrow? Can we leave stuff in here or do you have folks coming in? Well, people coming in first. Most of it is uh, I mean, probably the first phase. No, the afternoon. Oh, the afternoon. We have, um, I have suppression hearings on a homicide tomorrow afternoon. So there will be people here. They may or may not have other evidence for that suppression hearing. I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll get um, stuff out of the way then. Yeah, I think if you push it more to one side, I um, think it'll be okay. Okay. We're going to put all of ours on that back That's table. Fine. You think that'll be fine? Yeah, it should be. Okay. It's it's the Haas case. Yeah, it's Haas. I don't know if you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if um, it just move all of our stuff up. Yeah. 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 It's somebody from your office, so. Something happens to your stuff, you'll know who. Know who to go after. That's right. There you go. Um, so, uh, and let's see, it's everybody else's, let's see the. Yeah, it's just WebEx. Everybody else's WebEx. Yeah. So it's just people from your office. Okay. Okay. So everybody on uh, Friday morning. Yeah, I'm sorry. All rise.